Jason Mercier, he went with his instinct, he made the call. There's the professional level, and there's the Ivy League. Double! Sebastian Pauli coming to terms with what he has just achieved. Nicky Corrin has done it! Two main event titles! Sebastian Mallets has gone from poker fanboy to poker champion. This is why people love the EDT. Hello once again, welcome to Monaco and the PokerStars European Poker Tour presented by Monte Carlo Casino. It's the final day of the series, it is the final table of the main event. Six players competing for a first prize of 890,000 euros and a place in poker history. It's James Hartigan alongside Joe Stapleton. Hello, my babies. And Maria Ho. Hi, friends. Here we go, an exciting day of poker ahead. Of course, we do have one player at this final table looking to become the third live EPT two-time champion, Mike Watson. So Watts, the Canadian high roller, going for his second trophy in this event in Monaco. Please get in touch over the course of the day. You have the live chat on Twitch, the live chat on YouTube. You can use the hashtag PokestarsTV on Twitter. And of course, do stay across what's happening on the PokeStars Facebook and Instagram pages. Hope you've enjoyed the coverage so far. If you missed the penultimate day, here's what happened. 13 players returned for day five. With those super short stacks, it's looking likely to take the full day to reach the final six. Nicola Greico was the first to hit the rail, followed shortly after by one-time chip leader, Kanan Taylor. Ori Hassan. Oleg Vasilchenko and Maduka Marigal were the next players to depart to get us to the official final table. Arunas Sabnovichas couldn't lay down his ace king. He hit the rail in eighth. And Jason Wiener was the last to depart. Leaving us with six players by that trophy. Inside the most beautiful poker room in the world, the Sal Desertoile. And these are the six players returning for the final day. It is Leo Lees from the UK who has the slight chip lead over Mike Watson. Those guys are the two big stacks. Joachim Haraldstadt from Norway playing around 50 big blinds, just below average. Leonard Mauer with 43 bigs. The two French players, Sami Bougemala and Arno Ensemble, 36, 34 big blinds respectively. No short stacks at this FT. Blind still 5,100 with a 100K big blind ante. And now we are down to six. Everyone is guaranteed a significant sum of money. Next player out 180K, nearly a quarter of a million for fifth, more than 300K for fourth, nearly 400K for third, more than half a million for the runner up, and a top prize in this year's Monte Carlo main event of 890,000 euros. Of course, deal negotiations, always a prospect, but those are the advertised payouts as we start the action at the six-handed final table. The players are in their seats. We are almost ready to go. Let's introduce the players in seat order. We start with one of the two French players, who is Sami Bougemelar. 
a player who has been grinding online for almost 10 years, qualified for this EPT via a live satellite, and actually knows his fellow finalist Arno Ensemble pretty well. Mike Watson plays the biggest games in the world, won the PCA main event in 2016, has seven scoops and three W cubes to his name as well. Leo Lees is the man in a van. That's right, he's on the road traveling for poker. Originally from Brighton. That's more than 500k in live caches. Leonard Mauer is from Germany, now lives in Vienna, plays online as Grozorg. Picking up his first EPT main event cash in this event. How big will that cash be? Arno Ensemble from Bordeaux now lives in Malta. So plays on the global site. Used to be a high-level sports sailor. And Joachim Haraldstadt plays online PLO, is a professional poker player. He's the father of two boys. They're watching at home with his wife, Christian. Hello, Joachim's family. And looks like we're ready to get the action started. So Jason Wheeler went out in seventh place last night with 35 minutes left on the clock. So we're going to play out the 50,000, 100,000 blind level and then roll straight into level 30 <coughs> where the blinds go to 60, 120. Cards are in the air. The first hand of the EPT Monte Carlo main event final table. And should highlight there is only a big blind in this hand. Jason Wheeler no longer present to post the small blind. Uh, I guess that's the silver lining. Leo Lees, the chip leader, has opened with queen 10. Round two, that big blind. Sammy Bouchemala with queen seven of hearts. Bujmala with this suited combination does feel like it's good enough to defend. So we go heads up to the flop on the first hand of the day, which is Jack 8 3 with the one heart. And I guess no reason for Leo not to continue, Maria. I guess the question is whether Bujmala continues in the hand. Yeah, it's interesting because having. The backdoor flush draw, the backdoor straight possibility, that one over card. Sometimes that is good enough to find a continue in some form or fashion. But again, ICM handcuffs ever present at these final tables. What if you're just bad at making draws? So basically you. Yes. You can fold, right? Folding is not a big mistake. Certainly that is something that most players, I think, would do. But... If you find a way to continue, uh, there are a lot of good things that could happen on the turn. So Leo Lees wins the first hand of the day, extends his chip lead. He's up to 8.4 million now. Sorry, 8.6 million. Um, insight from Tobias Lechness, Senkel92. <clears throat> he says, Harold Stat is one of the most feared PLO players online, and he will be dangerous in the upcoming Scoop High Roller PLO tournaments. But here, he doesn't know what the hell he's doing. Where are my other two cards? <laughs> I can use four from the board? Can you imagine if it was today that he discovered that? <clears throat> that would be pretty wild. You would have to not tell anyone until the tournament was over, right? And number two, action starts with Leo Lees, who has ace four offsuit. He folds. I was going to say this, <laughs> that would have been a good spot to kind of <laughs> check how Lees wants to proceed with the chip lead. Good timing, though. In the proverbial vacuum, yes. In a situation where Leonard Mauer has ace king, no, he's raised to 230,000. <clears throat> Mike Watson, queen five offsuit in the big blind. By the way, can I just say, loving Sir Watts' final table look. 
I don't know. I think that might mess with the cameras a little bit. Tight patterns. I don't know. I think the pattern's <laughs> that tight. I think it's TV appropriate. Jack Trey Deuce. You don't think it looks a little like pajamas? No. Okay. That is a quality shirt, Joe Stapleton. Mal has not connected with this board, but still <coughs> probably feeling pretty good about Ace King. Continues into a pot of 610,000 for 165K, unless it's a very quick fold from Mike Watson, who sits in second in chips right now, 7.7 .7 million. Supermod, Ed Kilworth, whose birthday it is today, says, is this going to be the Mawa Hour? Nice. And happy birthday, Ed. Happy birthday, buddy. I didn't know, by the way, coming into today that it was Ed's birthday, but I kind of feel I've given him the best birthday present possible, <coughs> by vetoing Chat Pro Saturday. Your idea of the best birthday present possible isn't the same as mine, but I will call it a birthday present. I'm going to have two of the cupcakes in the lunch bag for Ed today. Anytime I'm empowering Tom and Raksha to use their hammers and Ed to use his spanner, they're happy. So this has been folded to Mike Watson in the small blind. 7-6 offsuit. Let's talk about positions here and the seat draw, which of course happened, Maria, when they got down to nine players. Not ideal for Mike to have the other big stack. The guy's got slightly more than him on his direct left. No, it would obviously be a better scenario if they were a little bit further apart or Mike was to his direct left. But again, I don't think that we'll see them get too tangled up unnecessarily. And also, least must have a lot of respect for Watson and his game and when that happens even when you do have the slight chip lead over him and position you're not necessarily going to go out of your way to target him either so a bet of a hundred thousand from Mike on this 994 board three still the best hand And Lise is going to raise. But this is just equity denial to a lot of stabs that Watson would be betting here. You know, even a hand like 7-6, right? That's two overs to nines and threes right now. So might as well get that protection if you can get a fold right now. Obviously, that's a very, very nice defensive way to play your hand when you believe it's best right now. Watson definitely finds the continue probably because of that backdoor straight and flush possibility. And <laughs> he doesn't know it for sure yet, <laughs> but turning a pair is also going to be good. Yeah, and pairing his six sees Mike Watson become a 94% favorite in this hand. And this is nice for Watson because now he's beating nines and fours, of course. And if we see Lee raising threes, why wouldn't he raise nines and fours on the flop for protection as well? So pretty interesting spot for Watson, whether or not he wants to bluff catch now or try to get value from a 4X type hand. Going to value bet the river. This is how good Mike Watson is. 175 into 850. That's how good he is that a, a six is his gin card. And he just bops it on the turn. We're not saying Mike isn't good, but I think he would even admit that he's 
probably run pretty well. I have heard him tournament. say that actually. Well, not just this tournament in general. He's like, yeah, I run good. <laughs> so Leo Lise folds the threes. Well, I can tell you that we spoke to some of the finalists before the start of play today, including Sir Watts. And we asked him about the penultimate day of the tournament. We asked him about his day five. I, I just really ran really hot in terms of just getting, you know, playing little starting hands. Um, it seemed like I wasn't really r running into other hands much either. It was just a lot of races getting through uh, small pots for the most part. And, uh, you know, I'd love more of that today. Obviously, that's kind of the dream, just being able to accumulate some chips without too much risk. But uh, I don't imagine it will be uh, easy sailing at all the rest of the way. Yeah, I mean, I obviously love traveling with my wife on these trips. Um, you know, it's tough. We play these long days. I'm in the tournament for 16 days in a row or whatever. Um, but just having somebody there to, you know, support you and uh, you know, hang out with talk to at the end of the day is, is huge. And uh, obviously, yeah, I have a great group of friends in poker that tend to travel with, play a lot of the same tournaments. So, uh, yeah, it's nice, you know, being on these, these trips. The poker's amazing and, like, seeing your friends and getting to hang out and catch up with people is great, too. So, uh, yeah, obviously, just love doing this, you know. Mike Watson and Leo Lees currently tied for the chip lead. 80 big blinds each. And with that hand, Mike Watson will now have the advantage. 85 big blinds. It was raise and take it pre-flop. I like that Mike, you know, says that things went well for him yesterday, not just completely taking credit for it. But some of that is earned, right? Isn't some of his raises getting through and things like that? Isn't that earned over the years of people maybe not wanting to tangle with you as much or giving you credit in certain situations? Absolutely. And it's a lot about putting yourself in positions to capitalize on running good or to get lucky, right? You're not going to always have the best of it. You might not always get it in with the best of it, but if you are putting your opponents to the test and putting a lot of pressure on them, then that is obviously right. the skill coming through as well. Under the gun raise here from Harold Stat with King Queen and Leo Lease has tens on the button. I was reminded this morning that Mike Watson was actually at the first ever EPT that I attended as a live stream commentator. It was Barcelona 2007, and the World Cup of Poker took place at that event, and Mike Watson was part of Team Canada. So Mike Watson, obviously, I don't think it's too early now to talk about him being a two-time EPT champion, obviously, right? We're down to the final six. Yeah. Is it just me, or will this be, if it happens, it'll be the th third? Are we counting fourth? It's the third live champion. Yeah. Of course, we did have EPT online for a couple of years during lockdown, and that does count as an official EPT win. And even though it only ran twice, the same player won it both times. Right. So he would be the fourth ever two-time EPT champion. Yes. And none of the second time that anyone won will have been televised. That is true. That is true. And just to be clear, you're saying that there would be a TV show made out yes. of it rather than it just being a live stream. Yes, of course. Because we streamed Vicky's second win. We streamed Pabal's second win. We streamed both EPT Online tournaments, but there was no TV show. Of yeah. So checked to showdown and tens are good. Well, let's hear from Leo Lees. We keep talking about him as the man with the van. Let's find out about this van. Last year, about August, uh, Ju July, August last year, I bought a van, uh, Renault Master, high, high roof, long wheelbase van. I always wanted a camper van. I always wanted to do it myself. So last year I bought one and uh, I've been kitting out since then, you know, like did the whole conversion. Um, it's almost finished, but it's good enough to be using at the moment. So I've been using it for a few stops. And yeah, I drove here uh, the last six months. So I started using it in November last year and I went to Blackpool GUKPT. That was the first stop I did. And I chopped the high roller there for 30K and I was absolutely buzzing. That was like one of my best scores, but one of, but it was definitely the thing I was the most proud of because it was a very tough tournament. And then since then, I've just been going around to GUKPTs and stuff and I've, it's been going well. Yeah, I've had a few like deep runs, nothing massive, but like lots of very close ones. And one particular was like close to being big, very big, like the same as third here or fourth here or something. And 
and I was quite disappointed, but, you know, kept going. And the van has definitely bought me, like, a lot of run good, though, I have to say. But it's not run good, you know? It's, like, it's the freedom and the, like, the improvement in my, in my quality of life that's, that's bought me the confidence to play better you know it's like the reduction in expenses as well as like being on the road all the time being able to go where i want all the time just having that freedom not constantly booking hotels not constantly being in the airport like none of that every time i go home it's the same bed every time i go home all my stuff's there i got the same routine you know i absolutely love it so it's just like flipped my whole world around to be honest yeah it's been really cool that is the best advert for mobile tiny house living that i've ever heard I love that. That's pretty cool. And I think it's great that the uh, the top one percent has convinced people that they want to live in vans. <laughs> Fantastic. I will never the, own a home anyway. I, I love the fact that he genuinely believes there is such a thing as van run good as well. <laughs> Not to mention, ten percent of his payout is definitely earmarked to trick out the van even more. What else can you do to it? What are you going to add? Projection screen. So that is my Watson's wife, Sarah, watching on the rail. Like I said, she's a, she's a PR expert, public re relations manager. So if I end up interviewing Mike for his second time win, it better be good. She will be approving all the questions before <laughs> Um, Didn't Lisa have tens a moment ago? He did so far off to a pretty good start in terms of card distribution as the chip leader. Bujmalar has come to the final table without his shell. He's unable to zip up today. That hand raise and take it for Lise. He's closing in on the 9 million mark. <laughs> That's nearly 90 big blinds. Blinds will be going up, by the way, 19 minutes. I saw, I obviously looked at one first and I was like, oh, that's a shame, I would have got 10s. <laughs> <laughs> if Lease were to win, is there some way where he could integrate the EPT trophy into his van? Hood ornament. You know, obviously, some people have, like, soft toys strapped to, like, the grill plate at the front. Sure. Put the EPT trophy on right, there. Right there. I say maybe make a replica and put it on there. We don't, we don't really want it to get stolen. It's more baller to do it with the real thing. Mm -hmm. We'll just win another one. So, folded to the blinds, king four of hearts for Sami Bujmala in the small. Supreme terrific, as I personally think the EPT trophy would make for a great stick shift. You're going to slice your fingers on it. That thing is sharp. Ace four for Mike Watson in the big blind. A domination situation. Bujmala has completed. Watson checks his option, and we go to the flop. Maybe you could use it for like slicing deli meats on the road, like a like a hard salami. It is king queen five domination rotation. The name of the game here, when you have someone like Mike Watson in the big blind with a big stack, is just to really be able to balance finding some value for your hands, but also not loading the pot. I do feel like Watson might want to look him up with ace four. Makes the call. Turn card is the three of hearts. Life just gets better for Bujmalar. Top pair and the flush draw. Nearly a nine to one favorite. Interesting he opted to not go for the zip-up hoodie today when he seemed so intent on using it yesterday. I mean, he could zip and unzip this top, but I'm not sure it would have the same impact. Fires again. 
325 into 500. And certainly looking to get value from, of course, queen X's, five X's. It'll be interesting to see what Watson wants to do after turning this gut shot and still some showdown value with ace high, but you do expect that Bujmala won't be bluffing too much here as a double barrel. You know, maybe a stab on the flop, sure, but to bet again on the turn after getting called. Okay, so Bujmala improves to two pair. Mike catches a piece as well. <laughs> Yeah, and with some different runouts, obviously, Bujmala might have just had a two street hand, but here, rivering two pair. Pretty decent amount in the pot already. bet the flop, he bet the turn, he's bet 725,000 on the river. Boy, getting a call here would be a miracle. Uh, maybe it's like a twinkle in Watson's eye, but... Okay, I was gonna say, could he? He does have ace deuce block. <laughs> There's just so much more pressure on Mike Watson in that situation too, because it's it's like not only does he get paid off there, but Mike Watson pays him off. So you might remember one of the guys on Bushmala's rail, that is Virgil Tershi, who spent a brief amount of time on the feature table on one of the earlier days of this event. He is Bushmala's coach. He's been coaching him for three months and is very much encouraged Sammy to play this EPT. He qualified in a live satellite the day before day 1B. Cool. And he's been close to the top. He's been one of the chip leaders pretty much every day since day 1. He says that he and Arno Ensemble were playing 3 Euro tournaments online together 10 years ago and now here they are both at the final table of an EPT. We love those stories. Even if you're a player that doesn't have a lot of experience playing these big main events, what you can learn from being in this type of tournament with this kind of structure for six days straight is so amazing. That experience you can't buy and there's nothing like it. You will learn infinite amount from just taking the shot and being like, you know what, I'm gonna play this one. Yeah, for sure. Opening raise to 225,000. Ace, king of spades for Sir Watts in the small blind. Re-raises to 650,000. Leo Lees has folded the big blind. An argument for flatting with Jack-10 here, playing the flop in position? Yeah, especially against a pretty reasonable three-bet sizing Definitely not what is considered on the bigger side, considering Watson three bet out of position as well. Bounce that does call. And we go heads up to the flop. Ace, six, deuce. Just the one spade. Mike Watson, 97% equity. This is a spot that, of course, Watson could have some light three bets, trying to put a lot of pressure on a middling stack, such as Harold Stads. But it just doesn't feel like 
Gerald's dad can continue, obviously, if the board was a little bit different, you know, without the ace there, giving Harold's dad something like two overs and some back doors. That might be more of a natural continue. And still in a situation where Watson and Lease are tied at the top, 85 big blinds each. And a decent advantage over the rest of the table. Mauer, 42 bigs. Harold Stapp, 40 bigs. And then Bougemelat and Ensemble hovering around the 35 big blind mark. 11 minutes on the clock. And then we will roll straight into level 30. That's right, the blinds will go up. Johnny D giving out gift subs in Twitch chat. Thanks, John. Ace Deuce. Leo Lease. With the glasses, it just feels like Lease can just take his van to Woodstock right now. Just snap his fingers, do some poetry. <laughs> Two hundred and twenty five thousand called by Mauer in the big blinds. And we have a King Queen eight flop. Actually three hundred and twenty five thousand. So a pot of seven hundred and fifty K. What is this? It's two pair versus the nut flush draw. This is just mean. Never easy in poker. <laughs> Lease continues. 225,000. And is there an argument for raising with two pair here, Maria? Yeah, it feels like so much more of a setup, too, especially when you're up against the small blind in a BVB situation where the small blind happens to be the chip leader and they're opening. You just imagine that, of course, they're going to have a wide range of hands here. Oh, oh wow. boy. So Lisa's flush draw is now dead. The full house on the turn for Mauer. Who obviously chose to just call rather than raise the flop. Mao just covers so much of the board. And if you, again, think that the chip leader is going to be opening from the small blind with a pretty wide range of hands, you can't really expect them to have a strong enough hand to call a bet on the turn and a bet on the river. How much do you want to bet here is the question in terms of getting called by the nut flush draw. 350,000. And of course, I know our audience well enough to know they really want to see a club on the river. I'm just thinking about all the times that I've missed flush draws, and maybe this happened. Maybe there was a couple I wanted to miss. Lee's does miss. Yes! Has ace high. <laughs> Certainly was getting the right price to call with the flush draw on the turn, and just completely bricks. Checks it. Can Mauer size a value bet here that gets paid off by ace high? By the way, I, I admire anyone who can riffle time bank chips because they are significantly bigger than normal chips. Isn't bigger easier? I mean, I assume there's a certain point, like if they're a pancake size, maybe. Sure. But. The problem is that, you know, even a hand like Jack-10 gets there now on the river, so Lise not going to be able to find too many hands that I think Mal is willing to play this way.
that ace high can be. And you see the quick fold. Yeah. So Leonard Maurer chipping up over the 5 million mark, now playing 52 bigs. Originally from Germany, now lives in Vienna. Has more than $2 million in live caches. Did win the 25K high roller in EPT Barcelona last year, but this is his first ever main event cache. But it's going to have to be a win to eclipse that result in Barcelona last year. Sammy Bujmala folding 9-4 of clubs. Mike Watson passes. Leo Lees on the button with Jax. From missing a flush to the most hated hand in all of poker. <laughs> Queen 9 for Arno Ensemble in the big blind. I know we're only 11 hands into this final table, but am I right in saying that Ensemble hasn't played a hand yet? I think that'd be correct, James. It's, you know, just a tough situation, especially when you look at how all of the stacks are really bunched up towards the bottom. You've got to be very selective about your starting hand selection. Queen nine defending the big blind against the button seems fairly standard. Yeah, definitely not a criticism, just an observation. And obviously the first hand he plays flops top pair, so life's good. <coughs> On some facing a continuation bet of 150,000. I would tear these jacks since it's 700 little pieces right now. I've said it before and I've said it again. These cards are not cheap. <laughs> I would bring a separate deck with me, find those two specific jacks, take them out of the deck, and rip them to shreds. Yeah, you definitely want the cheap ones from WH Smith, which are very easily they, terrible they tear because they're yeah. made from the worst kind of cardboard, yeah. The kind of cards that you get one riffle out of them, one hand of poker, and you're like, well, these are done. So having check called the flop, Ensemble now leads the turn for 200,000. Yeah, pretty interesting here. A lot of times you might see them Played the top pair a bit defensively, especially because of ICM. And Lise might be a little interested, not just because of the sizing, but because of the type of hands that Ensemble should have here. If we don't think that he's going to be defending the big blind with the offsuit combos, right? Of five deuce, five three, queen deuce, queen five. Yeah, I mean. I mean, he's just recoiling because we can see that he's losing here. Is this a, a bad raise without knowing the cards? No, I wouldn't say it's a bad raise because, as I was mentioning, because Maria Lise doesn't say have, I'm sorry, Ensemble doesn't have a lot of two pair combos, right? He's not going to be defending the big blind with queen deuce offsuit, five deuce offsuit, five three offsuit, um, you know, probably not queen five offsuit either. So this lead, especially with that sizing, feels a little weak. Well, Ensemble calls the raise. We now have a pot of 1.85 million. Seven of diamonds on the river does not change the outcome of this hand. A lot of the times, you know, Ensemble will just lead there on the turn with maybe a pair and a straight draw, which, especially given the sizing of Lisa's raise, it actually makes it look like Lisa was raising for value almost, targeting a lot of those hands, which doesn't get there wow, he's, on the river. He's just going to bet river too. Yeah, a hand like, you know, 5-4 or something like that doesn't get there on the river. And again, with the small sizing, definitely a bit confusing for Lise. So confusing. I, and I can see everything. I just don't think that Lise 
will find a fold for this amount. It's really just about. Yeah. He's <laughs> thrown out a few time bank chips. It's really just about why would somebody play a queen like this if I just call? Of course, I'm going to be losing to a queen X type hand. I mean, the sizing is just so small that. Feels very defensive on on Psalm's part. This is a cycle spot, right? You, know, you can't fold jacks. Yeah, you might just feel a little weird, though, for raising the turn. Makes the call. <laughs> and on Psalm, it will win a decent pot to the delight of his rail. I think there's a lot of crossover between the Sammy Bougemelar rail and the Arno Ensemble rail. Clearly a little French poker fans who just want to see someone French win this. And Ensemble has actually chipped up to 4.7 million. Now sits in fourth place. Putting some distance between himself and Harold Stanton Bougemelar. And Mike Watson now has a decent lead over Leo Lees. And I think this is going to be the last hand of the blind level, and then we will raise the blinds to 6120. You would definitely hate jacks even more if your opponent played their hand the way that Ensemble played is when you have jacks. You'd be like, what is happening? Correct. What are you doing, Benjamin? But also, to be fair, I just try to get it in pre with Jax. I don't need all that flop, turn, river. Uh, <laughs> uh, who has the energy? You're like, you know what? If, if you got me, you got me. Yeah. But um, I'd ra I feel much better about just not having any post-flop decision <laughs> with Jax. Psalm and Watson go to this flop, two tens, and Watson, again, top pair. I want to be like Mike. Watson was the pre-flop raiser. Does not continue. Well, this obviously gives Ensemble a straight draw. Yeah, Watson exercising just a little bit of pot control while protecting his check back range. When Ensemble calls the raise from the small blind, he can certainly have aces with a better kicker. You know, again, because of ICM, you're not even going to find three bets necessarily when you're being covered by the original raiser with strong ace X hands. And you're also going to have a lot of these Broadway combinations that can make two pair and straights right now. This is quite interesting because this bet from Ensemble with the Broadway straight blockers feels like they're turning their hand into a bluff. I don't think that this would make sense as a value bet. And that's going to work. A rare. Rare Mike Watson folding the best hand. So Arno Ensemble has $1.2 million in live earnings, has a World Series of Poker circuit ring, a World Series of Poker online bracelet, looking to win oh, the EPT yes. trophy. Yes, talking of EPTs, the mini EPT Monte Carlo main event is today. So it's the last day of this low buy-in tournament series running on stars, and at 8.15 this evening, it's the mini main event. $5.50 to play. Scoop tickets added to the prize pool, a Barcelona package added as well. Make the final table, you get a 1K Scoop main event ticket. Win it, you get the Barcelona package, and you will be at the next EPT in Spain in the summer. That's so cool. Of course, there are tournaments before that, one at 3.15, which is a 3.30 deep stack, and one at 6.15, which is a 2.20 hyper turbo. 
but it's all about the mini main today. Good luck to everyone who is playing. So this is the first hand of the new blind level, 60,000, with a 120K big blind ante. That means still an hour and a half to go before the first break of the day. Pretty nice spot for Ansem. In terms of, you know, talking about seat draws, James, now when you have both players in the blinds covered and the chip leaders folded before you, it certainly opens up your button opening range, makes you feel a lot more comfortable. Queen three of diamonds opening on the button. Harold Stat will call. All three back from the small blind. I'm sorry, re-raising with the King-10. Yeah, fair play with this type of combination. It's always nice, of course, to block the best King-X hands. And just recognizing that Ensemble will be opening wide here. Just because, again, when we talk about <coughs> seat configuration, would Ensemble be willing to open light more often from the button if they had someone covered in the big blind or if it was Mike Watson in the big blind. And so from the small blind, actually nice to find some three bets when you know that the button's opening range is going to be wider. So with the blinds going up, everyone a little bit shallower. Sami Bujmala, the shortest stack right now with 28 bigs, but that's a comfortable stack size as we begin hand 14 of the final table. Suha, who is saying, sad it's only one EPT package, this online satellite. This is not a satellite. This is a regular low buy-in tournament, one one thousandth the price of the actual main event here in Monte Carlo where there's an EPT Barcelona package added to it in additional value. And it's also, not coming from the prize pool. Also, the scoop tickets that are added, that's an additional 9K, right? Because the nine yeah. finalists get a scoop medium main event ticket. Not a satellite. I just want to make sure we're clear on that. Oh, there's a, there's a cash real money prize pool. Don't worry. Bujmala in the small blind completes with Jack Nine of Hearts. The Dolly Parton for Mike Watson. You see Watson taking just the weakest part of his range here as a raise against the shortest stack at this final table. But Jack-9 suited the type of hand, you know, middling cards, connected, suited. If you're going to limp, you're very likely wanting to see three and not going to just fold to this raise. Six, six, four on the flop. Ethan May, watching on YouTube, says if Mike wins, he'll be the sixth repeat champ in EPT main event history. Ethan, I have a challenge for you. Name the other five. Two hundred twenty-five thousand. The bet from Sir Watts Bujmala with the flush draw. Calls. Double pair board now. And I wonder if another bet from Sir Watts might work. Chasing flushes and double pair boards not optimal. Yeah, it's interesting because 
If you don't think the small blind should have a lot of 6 X's and 4 X's when they limp call the raise preflop, then it probably makes you feel pretty good that you're not going to be up against boats very often. If Watson had, you know, a real, let's quote, <laughs> air quotes, real hand, you know, when he opened from the big blind, like an ace X type hand, of course, they would be checking back that turn a lot of the time. So actually, really good river card for Watson, I think, to be able to find a way to get Bujmala to, to fold. <laughs> Interesting. Bujmala going to go for a bet here on a river card that some people would say favors Watson's range a little bit more. <coughs> you know, this just looks a little more like a 6X type hand or a 4X type hand that Bujmala is trying to represent because sometimes there's a chance even if he did have Ace X, he might just go the check call route even. My Watson folds to the delight of Team Bujmala. So, Ethan, you had the opportunity to name three genuine two-time winners and make up a couple. Instead, you've given me one real one and four fakes. <laughs> Lucky has a request to you, Joe. Okay. You should block these commercials from this channel. I'm here just for poker. Commercials? You banned. Oh, wait a second. No, I'm actually here for a paycheck. I can't block the commercials. Bushmar with ace queen on the button. Bujmala definitely with the worst seat, in my opinion, having two big stacks to his direct left. And even when you're on the button, which should give you a bit more power in terms of position, you are opening into the two big stacks as the blinds. Raise and take it. Yeah, definitely happy about that. My favorite is when you have the rail that goes bananas when, like, someone folds pre-flop and you had aces. <laughs> so Sammy Bouchemala from Marseille, qualified in a live satellite, looking to add to his $330,000 in live earnings, is guaranteed at least 180,900 euros. That's what the next player out will get. Up top, 890K, going to the winner of this year's EPC Monte Carlo main event. Yeah, definitely the hardest part about railing is that you don't know what you're rooting for. Like if your friend ends up bombing the river and you're like, well, I don't know. Are we rooting for a call? Are we rooting for a fold? I don't know. I guess we'll just wait and see. Zachary Marsh on YouTube says, Maria Ho, I guarantee you win a bracelet this year. Oh. <gasps> Well, if you guarantee it, what happens if I don't then? Uh, just to be clear, Zachary is saying, I guarantee you when a oh, bracelet. Oh, when a bracelet. You win a bracelet. Oh. Yeah. Okay, I well. guarantee you smile when a bracelet is given <laughs> to the 5K PLO champion. It was a very carefully worded comment that on the <laughs> surface looks like he thinks you're going to win, but actually is meaningless. <laughs> That's a good question, Fresh 8119, and I have no idea what the answer is. Which dealer has dealt the most on final tables in the last five years? Well, obviously, we take away... When you say the last five years, should we talk about the last five active years? Because we're not going to count 2020 and 2021, Yeah, right? it's, it's, it's a fluid... There will be a there will be an answer, but I've no idea what it is. 
Maybe we can ask uh, our man Richard in the truck. He might know, or at least have a theory. Uh-oh. Lease went for the limp re-raise here from the small blind with this Ace X. Mal with the better Ace high, but oh, it feels tough. It's like, wow, did I? What did I do here? Am I really about to play a really big pot against somebody that has me covered? My guess, by the way, would be Daniela. Solid guess. One of the best. Absolutely. Just feels so gross in this spot because you're kind of in. 1.9 million. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What is happening? Mao is an animal. One minute. Animal. Everyone's animal. playing super tight because they're worried about ICM. They're thinking about the payout jumps. The next minute. Let's get into a 2011 era pre-flop raising war with two moderate aces. Yeah, it's pretty sick, right? Because I think Mal just decided if he were to call the three bet pre, he would kind of be in no man's land in terms of if he doesn't connect with the board meaningfully, you know what, he's just going to be putting all those chips in pre-flop, not knowing where he's at. But this way, trying to take control of the hand, obviously having the ace blocker is nice, representing so much strength. Feels a little sus to lease, though, just because they also have an ace blocker. You would imagine a hand like ace king will probably just shove pre, right? They're not going to mess around with this four bet. What does it say on my shirt? Big Boys Poker Club. Sorry, what did it say on my shirt yesterday? Blockers aren't real. Blockers aren't real. So Leonard Mauer moves up to second place now. With a 52 big blind stack, Lee drops down to third, playing just over 40 bigs. It is getting very punched up. Mike Watson still with the chip lead. So we consulted our man in the gallery, Richard Nielsen, who hashtag fun fact dealt the winning hands to both Mikolai Pabal and Vicky Corrin on their second EPT wins. Richard snap called when we asked the question, Daniela. Wow. So they could go two each? In fact, Daniela's dealing now. That's what I mean. She could add another one. Yeah. There's so many coincidences in the world that they can't be coincidences, don't you think? Give me an example. This is really out there. I don't know. So I think that whatever higher power there is just loves drama, loves collisions, loves for things to happen, neither good nor bad, but just for things to bounce off each other and to see what happens. Because there are just way too many coincidences in this universe for it all to be totally random. This sounds like the prologue of Magnolia. Kind of, a, a little bit. It's like, I kind of picture them more like the Greeks, like the Greek gods and goddesses, and they're just up there watching a TV show, and they go, here we go, we're just gonna roll these two balls in this direction and watch them bounce off each other. It's our little, little, little deep for a poker broadcast. I was gonna say, the inner workings of uh, state's mind. Like McNuggets versus a Big Mac, one of these two things has a slight mathematical advantage. We can get back to that if you want. Well, ace high still ahead, but Ensemble does have decent equity here. Seven of spades on the turn. Now are now better than a four to one favorite. Two, three, four, six. Oh. A limp pot pre, so certainly seeing why 
This range is so wide here from Ensemble. Mal, though, has some showdown value with Ace High. Also blocking 5-4. 400. Quick shout out to Stewie, who chopped a $2 mini EPT yesterday. Biggest win to date, wants to thank us. Congrats, Stewie. Good job, sir. Now going for a second barrel here. Does put... Second bar? <sighs> second bar. Yeah, it does put the four deuce in, in the fold category, in my opinion. And I've got to say, Mao just really making things happen, you know, coming in as a middle stack, but clearly finding some really good spots. Is he making things happen, or is it the puppet masters that Joe is referring <laughs> no, no, to? No, no, no. They're not actually making things happen. They just set things in motion. Right. So they're the ones deciding the cards. Uh, they're not deciding the cards. They're just, I don't know, they sprinkle some magic on it that just sort of makes things <laughs> attract to each other, if that makes sense. Uh, we talked a bit about the fact that in the Irish Open at the beginning of April, I got to play. And for the first four levels, I was at the feature table. I properly felt I was at the feature table when Daniela came to deal. It's kind of like, okay, now this is big time. Now this is a big deal. <laughs> it feels real. Yes. No disrespect to the other dealers, by the way, who are all excellent. But it's kind of like, okay, now I'm on a TV table. Actually, there was one guy who sucked. Oh, there was, really? <laughs> oh, just doing a bit. <laughs> you pick four, Miguel? Four. Yeah, I run the low four. Yeah. Mm. Harold, Stat, and Bushman are both playing 35 big blinds. On some with 37 bigs, Lee's yeah, with 43. Bad. So, <laughs> yeah, that's going to limit the play. Only took, what, 55 minutes before somebody at the table started talking to someone. <laughs> it's been uh, fairly quiet. I get it. Big stakes, big spot. But I know I'm not saying you need to talk to enjoy the experience more. I'm just saying, you know, this is definitely a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Yes. Why not make sure that you are going to have a good time regardless of the results? Jack Felice, who's open to 250,000. Ace nine of diamonds for Mauer, who flats in position. Hold is the blinds. Harold Stat out. Bouchemala in the big with Jack Deuce of diamonds. And we are going to go heads up to the flop. Queen, five, five with two diamonds. Nice looking flop for Mala with some showdown value with the ace high as well. And a Mao. And Mao are now tied for the chip lead with Mike Watson. In fact, Mike still has a slight advantage over Mao, but just over 7 million each, 60 big blinds each. This guy on the ascent right now. Meanwhile, Leo Lees has dropped down to 40 bigs. <coughs> Being chip leader or not chip leader, it's not something you can really think about that much, right? And like let it get in your head, like, oh, now I'm not chip leader anymore. And no, and you have to be constantly adjusting how you're approaching the game and the strategy and the the flow of what's happening.
based on your stack size. So you can't live in the past of being like, oh, I came in as the chip leader um, and I need to keep playing like I am the chip leader even when I'm not. Um, now you, you just have to realize, okay, I, I've lost some chips early on. Um, how do I want to navigate it now that I am a middling stack mm -hmm. instead of lamenting about not having you have to be aware stack. of yeah. where you are, but it's not necessarily like, oh, I'm like three big blinds below chip leader. No, I have to get those back. At least Maria used to be a competitive poker player, unlike these blokes. I feel like he managed to insult all of us <laughs> in one sentence. That's it's pretty like when good. Nick Walsh called me a wreck. He's know? like, Maria, so have you ever thought of taking up professional poker? Um, Vasta, <laughs> well, uh, at least you used, used to be in chat. I was going to say, yeah, the man. great thing is, chat pro Saturday, not a thing. Therefore, we don't have to tolerate this nonsense. Yeah, you, you, you bam. Thank you for your, for your comment. Stat with the advantage here. And now has a lock on it. He raised the button pre. Went check, check on the flop and on the turn. Last chance for value. Yeah, just going to try to bluff catch should Watson try to bet here. Oh, a cheeky little attempt by Sir Watts, 200,000. And the tricky thing is, is, you know, we see people now attacking small sizings and raising for value and, you know, finding some thin value raises. Um, but again, with ICM, you just can't really do that because it opens yourself back up to perhaps getting a bluffed, outplayed, a, a host of things that you don't want to happen. Well, we spoke to Harold Stad before the start of play. Asked him about his family watching from home. Uh, so it's only been a passion for me. Um, and uh, in the first years, it was uh, always an, a nice hobby, a passion. And in the last few years, it has been uh, escalated a bit. and. Uh, been more of a professional view on it. I have a lot of support from my family. That's really nice. And it's also nice to uh, get some results uh, on uh, a live event uh, like EPT, so I can show uh, my family and parents uh, and mother-in-law and everybody that uh, I'm really running good. Uh, and uh, yeah, I got a lot of support, a lot of messages, and uh, that's, that's really nice to get, yeah. I wonder if his son Harold is at home watching. Again, we say hello to his boys, Evan and Silas. What? And their mother, Christiane. They've been watching the live stream, following the action. You tell me Harold's dad does not have a kid named Harold. Correct. <laughs> Harold! False advertising. More like Harold Zad anyway, right? Am I right, Maria? <laughs> a little zaddy the action there. <laughs> So Bujmala opening the button with King-10. Mike Watson, ace-8 in the small. Scavo, if you're interested in the 25K, live updates on Poker News. We're covering the main event here. Yes, you can have updates. Thank you for your question. Mike has three bets to 700,000. Action back on Bujmala. King 10 offsuit, not necessarily a great hand that you're going to be able to find to continue off of that That's stack.
So an hour to run on this blind level. One more hour of play before we have the first break of the day. Still wearing green though, still turtling. Just leaving free outside the shell today. Snowman's num num. So what are his opponents gonna have? Sixes? <laughs> King, queen, and a 10 high flop? Yeah, I mean, so far, things are going the way that Watson was hoping for, right? He said. I just hope to be able to win some small pots, you know, accumulate without having to risk too much. So far, so good. Seems standard for uh, his opponents only have one over card exactly. here. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, no problem. Oh, wow. And it's I mean, how far off was I? Eight on the flop. If anything, I undersold it. Can you imagine if that had been a king instead of an eight? <laughs> Ace, rather. Yeah, either way, though, I'd still imagine Mal going to take one off because it's Mike Watson opening from the button with the chip lead. The man doesn't need an ace here. King High will not be good at showdown. What's the less than 1%? Running Kings? Good luck. Now it calls the 180K. Now he is drawing dead. Drawing to a fifth eight. Or getting more coordinated. Definitely want to be charging. The pair and the straight draws, the flush draws, etc. Want to be able to get some value from Ace X type holdings as well. Size up. One million and ninety thousand in the pot. This second bar is 875,000. <laughs> and gets a fold from Maurer. So, Mike Watson <coughs> back up to 8 million. Chip leader with six players remaining in the EPT Monte Carlo main event. That might have been the end of the Maurer power hour. That was so dirty, I needed to go take a shower. <laughs> Still no player with fewer than 33 big blinds. He tells you you are flush. I thought it was fun, but uh, maybe it's not fun for you. <laughs> What's the pot? I mean, at least I want him to be coming. Because he used to. Oh, Herman asks, how much profit did tur in tournaments did Sir Watts win? And says, I'm sorry for my English. I'm from Argentina. Hernan. It's hard to say how much profit someone has. That is very true. No knock to anyone out there <clears throat> because he doesn't exactly come and tell us when he plays and busts a 5K. He doesn't exactly come and tell us when he enters a 1K and min cash. Well, we do know about the min cash, but we don't have any. So Mike Watson's lifetime live earnings are around $18 million. $19, $19 million. Now, profit, hard to say. Is that still very impressive? And is Mike Watson still probably a very profitable poker player? Yes. Is it 19 million? Unlikely. We, yeah. we have, of course, highlighted that he won the PCA in 2016. Among the other things that Mike Watson has won, uh, a 50K event at the World Series of Poker Europe, a WPT crown from the 2008 Bellagio Cup, online seven scoop titles and three W oh cube my titles. God. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I bear in mind he competes in all the big buying events on every yeah. tour. I think it's fair to say he is definitely the most experienced and accomplished player at this final table. 
Yeah, and, and going back to the point about profit, that's not even yes. taking into account, you know, swaps or, you know, people buying pieces. That's true. You know, when you play 100Ks on the regular, you're certainly not going to have 100% of your action. I don't care how much money you've won playing poker. Um, I'm so. a, I know there's no perfect way, Maria, to measure how much money a poker player has won. Live earnings is really all we've got as the metric. I was thinking this, Maria. Me and you and James, we do a, a three-way invitational $50 million buy-in tournament. But then we chop it, and now we've each got $50 million in lifetime earnings. Ooh. Okay. You down? Here's the problem. The 1% <laughs> rake is still going to be quite high. <laughs> How about this? How yeah. about this? Zero reg fee. Yep. And will self deal so there doesn't have to be any dealer fee. Perfect. Yeah. I don't. Who wants to give up three percent of that? Actually, we should still probably tip the dealers. Us. Is five dollars an acceptable tip? You're gonna be cheap with the tip, even with yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so we get to the river. And Bujmal are still ahead with the pair of aces. Just a whole lot of pot control being exercised hand after hand, especially when it's the player that is covered in this situation, even with a hand like aces and threes. You don't necessarily want to be firing multiple bullets when you're not sure how often you're going to get called by worse. Now, you know, you're chopping with some other ace X's and once it's been checked to you for the third time, it feels like a pretty safe scenario. Go, Sammy. Psycho Socks asks, who's the commentator that sounds like machine? <laughs> like Machine Gun Kelly or uh, Bert Kreischer, <laughs> who also goes by the nickname Machine? I don't, I, I do not, mm, I don't know. I'm a love machine, if that's what you guys are talking about. I don't know if those, is that really apparent in my cadence? I love the fact that someone has asked a question and we literally have no idea who they're referring to. Oh, Machine is a commentator from the Counter-Strike Global Offensive community? Oh. So would that be Griffin? <laughs> no, but it's like somebody now, so it's got to be you or James. Well, very simply, what nationality is this guy? If he's British, it's me. If he's American, it's you. Oh, uh, hello. <laughs> what a great spot to find kings. Apparently, he's a UK commentator. That'll be me then. I am the machine of poker. <laughs> Mike opening to 225 with the ace eight, flattered by Lee's with Jack Ten of Strawberries, and now we get the three bet with Kings. Insta fold from Harold Stat with the fives. And looks like the other players have passed as well. Do you think someone goes into that Counter Strike chat and is like, who's the guy that sounds like Hardigan? I wonder if people think he sounds like John Oliver. People thinking you sound like John Oliver is the same as people thinking anyone with a beard looks like me. Yeah. It's like the broadest of comparisons. That guy sounds reasonably intelligent and has an English accent. John Oliver! That's a fat bearded walrus.
Still no eliminations from this final table. Still six-handed. There is just this really nice, quiet confidence in Mao's table presence that I think, you know, it's not just because he's been finding some good spots. It's really just there's there's this calculation that you see him making in his head every hand about, you know, what's the best way to play this hand? How do I want to proceed? And it's really showing. Do you know that for a long time, I thought I had to act quickly in poker because if people saw me thinking about what to do, they would think that I didn't know no. what to yeah. do. And this is something that I only stopped doing in the last year. Yeah, I find it far more intimidating when somebody is very calculated in their yeah. thought process. Well, we've reached hand 26 of the final table. Still more than half of level 30 to play. Blind still 61.20 for another 50 minutes. And Leo Lees first to act here. He's passed and Mauer is out. 9-3 for Ensemble. Faults. 10-5 suited for Haraldstad. So blind v blind. Bougemont in the small with ace queen. Bujmala finding a limp here with the ace queen and Watson with sixes in the big blind. I'd imagine, you know, there's going to be some scenarios where if Bujmala had opened with a raise here, yeah. gets more chips in the pot here, just two pretty strong hands, but not a great flop for the sixes. More importantly, we've got a sweat here. Arno Onsoma has just run away to the toilet. Will he be back at the table in time for the start of hand 27? I think so. The room's pretty empty these days. I mean, but I don't think he's going to have enough time to wash his hands, so... By the way, there like are some that. events starting later this afternoon and this evening. I would imagine by the time we get to this evening, the room's going to be full again. There's a lot on the schedule today. Good, because some people out there still owe me money. Mike Watson calling this bet of 125,000. And the board is looking good for Bujmala. 97% favorite now. Yeah, Watson trying to catch some stabs from Bujmala on that flop. But again, not a great run out at this point, especially against the second barrel. Remember, if he's not in his seat by the time the second card hits the button, his hand is dead. Also, why would he wash his hands? He's not performing surgery. Ew. <laughs> Did he make it? Is he back? <laughs> Seems like it. This is why I, I'm not going to share food with you. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. He, it sounds like he just reappeared. Yeah. He made it. Yeah. Wow, good job. He's not going to be out of breath for the next door bit, but... <laughs> <laughs> he's wiping his hands on his pants, so that means they're probably wet. No, he's trying to make us believe that he washed his hands. <laughs> I spend way more effort faking washing my hands than I do actually washing my hands. It would be so much easier. Yeah, you're the kind of guy that turns the water on, mm -hmm. but doesn't put his hands Correct. underneath. Before COVID, I would definitely do that a lot. And I used to do a bit about it. My act, literally, 
I did a, a, a stand-up set like three days before lockdown happened. And the whole thing was about, oh, now I got to stop pretending to wash my hands. Round to Bujmala on the button. Has anybody also noticed that Lise is now the shortest stack after coming in as the chip leader? Wow. I hadn't noticed, but that's a great observation. He was number one on the leaderboard at the start of play and is officially now number six with 35 big blinds. Well, he's in the big blind here, and Mike Watson has just completed in the small. Leo's going to check his option, and we are going to see a flop. Jack six versus king something. And it's a 10-8-7 flop with two hearts. Six, seven... Eight. Six is not really a who cares. It's the jack. A bet from Mike and a fold from Leo. So I'm sure you guys are aware of the partnership between PokerStars and Oracle Red Bull Racing. I am thrilled to tell you about an exciting collaboration called Between the Lines. It is a four episode series coming soon and we can present an exclusive look at that series. During a race, you don't have time for nerves. It's really at moments like this where the best players separate themselves. The high-risk strategy calls, we live on them all the time. You can lose your whole stack in one hand. The race literally goes by in a heartbeat. It's totally engrossing. Red Bull, find a way to the front. This isn't just one man, one machine. This is about everybody working behind the scenes to get a race win. This is crucial. The first of the front runners to come into the pit. I try to be always the boss on the table. I got it. And then Sand shoves on him. You gotta be perfect. You cannot make any mistake. You have to work under a lot of pressure all the time. I have no words, James. I saw some come back, but I don't remember a story like this. Mr. Steppen wins the Belgian Grand Prix from 14th on the grid. One of the most dominant races we've ever had in Formula 1. This is going to be such a sweet victory. Yes, the first episode of Between the Lines drops on the 23rd of May. Four episodes exploring parallels between winning strategies at iconic EPT final tables and tactical decisions used in Formula One races, featuring poker players, featuring people from the world of Formula One, Hussein Ensan, Giuliano Bendinelli, you saw them in the trailer, Steve O'Dwyer and Michelle Dettani from the world of Formula One, Sergio Perez, the Red Bull dra racing driver, and team principal Christian Horner as well. Exciting stuff coming your way later this month. That was really cool. It's my favorite crossover. I'm a big F1 person ever since the docu-series dropped. He made a new fan out of me. So back to the action at this final table. Bujmala has opened with an ace. Mauer defending the big blind with ace eight. And on this queen seven four two club flop, Bujmala has continued for 165,000. There was a version of that trailer that had me going vroom, vroom, and they cut me out of it. <laughs> Unbelievable. Five on the turn. Well, without knowing Bujmala's other card, hard to say who's ahead here. We know that Mauer has ace high and a gut shot. Bujmala opened from the cutoff, so definitely a little bit stronger of an ace X type holding, I would imagine, than if he opened from the button, let's say 
quite likely that well, he can obviously have a hand like ace queen, of course, but you know, ace jack, ace 10, a lot of, you know, perhaps ace x suited combinations in there as well. Definitely, if Bujmala continues here on the turn against this lead from Mao, it will clear up, I think, his actual holding a little bit more for us. But with that fold, clearly not going to be ace-queen. Probably, probably not. More chips for Leonard the Animawa. And he is back up to seven and a half million, almost tied with Mike Watson for the chip lead. Look how bunched together Harold Stat, Ensemble, Lise, and Bougemelar are right now. And with the pay jumps, really restricting the amount of action we are seeing. Yeah, it's interesting because so far, Everybody has kind of had a chance to win a pot or two, chip up a little bit here and there. Um, we haven't really seen just one player not able to get involved whatsoever or you know, one player not raking in any chips. And so there's just a lot of trading places, especially towards the bottom of the chip stacks. Rounds the blinds. No Mao with ace no jack in the small. I like how you call him the Animal. And then you said he's got this quiet confidence looming. And his first name is also a Leo. So I think we know what kind of animal he is. A tiger. A turkey. <laughs> <laughs> we can't have two lions at the final table. And there is a genuine Leo. And he is quite Leonine. I know, I know. At one point, there will only be one Leo left, though. Also, I don't know a lot of lions that live in vans. Well, on circuses used to transport <laughs> All them. All right, <laughs> OK. You always find a loophole. Absolutely. So Mao wins this one. He's coming. We got the mad dog. We got Bougemelin, who basically had his shells. He's the kind of tortoise mm -hmm. of the yeah, final sure. table. So we need to find spirit animals for Arno Ensemble and Joachim Haraldstad. He's a cool cat. <laughs> okay. I could get behind that one. He's That's a not cool too much of a stretch. Cat. By the way, the players have my sympathies. Playing two and a bit hours straight with no break, I, I, I can't do it either. I, I would have done at least two bathroom breaks by now. Fenner 36, I appreciate all the questions you're asking about movies. I don't really think that this is the forum. <laughs> I would encourage you, however, there's a great opportunity for a bit of cross-promotion, to listen to and maybe even subscribe to the podcast that Joe and I record most weeks called Poker in the Ears, the official Poker Stars podcast, because we have more time, we have more scope there, and we will always devote a decent amount of time, if not every episode, then every other episode, to discussing the movies and TV shows that we've seen. There's a lot of pop culture in there. Yes. 
some weeks there's too much going on in poker and we don't get to it but like I'd say three out of every four weeks there is like a good 10 15 minutes devoted to pop culture and uh, certainly what you were just asking about the Batman movie anytime there is a comic book movie that we go see it gets talked about on the podcast also sometimes the two things combine and we will do a poker movie Monday that's right we will do either a new film that features poker or a classic film that features poker I was thrilled this morning when <laughs> Joe revealed to me that there is a Steven Seagal poker movie. As far as bad poker movies go, I cannot believe there is one worse than this. And I haven't even seen it yet. Got to thank Mayor Pete for putting that on my radar. And um, it's called Gut Shot Straight. <laughs> Mike Watson has opened under the gun with Jack Nine of Diamonds. Harold Statt with eights, with the snowman's, flats in the small. I guess that's a better title than, than calling a belly buster straight. Then they, you really know that it's an awful movie. But that kind of feels more Seagal, right? Because he would bust people's bellies. No, or at his, least his own his, belly. Get his, <laughs> <laughs> or at least get his stunt double to do it these days because he can't get out of a chair. We have got a King 4-3 flop. Oh, Mike Watson runs so bad. Can you believe how hard he whiffed here? Actually, some would say he runs good because this almost feels like a very great <laughs> flop for the under-the-gun opener. Oh, right. Sure. He would run bad if he whiffed this with Jack-9 and the board was 7-6-5. Oh, running straight. Sorry. Yep. By the way, before we get to the terrible Seagal poker movie, yeah. there is the small matter of Michael Flatley's Blackbird to deal with. Michael Flatley's Blackbird, and I think we're still going to have on the guest that I proposed months ago, right? Yes, so on that we episode. will be revisiting Lucky You. Barry Greenstein makes an appearance but does not change the outcome of this hand. You know how Matt Savage has always taken swipes at me for uh, the card counter? I didn't really notice that, but okay. Yeah. So, and he's always touting how amazing Lucky You is, which I think is a bit. I think I'm it not is sure. A bit. Uh, that part I am familiar with. Okay, I, I, I can't believe for one second that Matt genuinely thinks it's a good movie. But I'm excited to talk to him about what it's like, what it was like being a poker consultant on that movie, having done it myself. So we're going to talk to Matt about Lucky You and cover Blackbird in one of our summer specials coming up, what, in like a month or so, I'd say. Watson recognizing that he's not going to be able to win at showdown because he's likely up against these type of middling pairs and does finally go for the bet on the river when the ace shows up. Another super well-played hand by Mike. Sorry I talked over, over that hand, Michael. That was pretty good poker. He doesn't mind. So 18.6 million. Mike Watson's live earnings. We rounded it to 19 earlier. He is number five on the Canadian all-time money list. And yes, back in 2016, the PCA, despite taking place in the Bahamas, was considered part of the EPT. So he does have an EPT title to his name. He's going for his second here in Monte Carlo. Yaga says, better put Twitch on mute till these two guys go away. Please stop talking BS. Hate to break it to you, we're not going anywhere, but you are, you banned. Aren't you glad that chat process day was declined? I, by the way, look, I was actually gonna fight you on that until it wasn't until today that I realized it was the final table. You just you can't do chat pro Saturday on the final table. It's like unfair. Agreed. To these players. Harold Stout with six five of hearts. We have got thirty minutes until the first break of the day. I can tell you now I'm not going to make it. I'm going to have to do a bouge mala. I'm going to have to do an ensemble. I'll be running to the bathroom at some point soon. At least these days, we've got Maria in the booth, right? I don't have to worry about leaving you by yourself. Terrific ass. Am I a noob if I don't know what Chat Pro Saturday is? No, you're great. 
<laughs> yeah, we like you. Stick around. Don't don't ever learn. This is one of those rare occasions where I do believe ignorance is bliss. <laughs> And apparently Guardian Angel has ya banned as his SMS message sound. <laughs> that's great. Uh, even I don't love myself that much, and that's I mean that's tough to <laughs> tough to beat. Also I didn't know you could do that. Can someone show me how? Yeah, while I'm at it, I'll uh, make me and Kim your screensaver again. Your wallpaper. King nine of the Bushmala opens on the button. Yeah, and a couple times opening on the button certainly got punished from Mike Watson. This time, though, Watson's just going to give up the Jack 10. Okay, it's Lee's turn to abuse Bujmala's button open. And it just feels like Bujmala is not going to be able to play back with the King-9 offsuit. But maybe he's over it. Maybe he's like, you know what? I've been so patient I'm tired. I'm tired of being pushed around. Oh! <laughs> oh! <sighs> He's gonna fall back. Wow. And before Christina can even verify the size of the bat, Leo Lee's has folded. It's, it's moments like that. Now, if people were three and four batting light constantly, that wouldn't be as exciting. But the fact that everyone is just like so in line and then it happens is like, man. And start of day chip leader, Leo Lease has now dropped below the 30 big blind mark. 27 bigs for Lease with 29 minutes to run on this level. And it's tough, right? Because sometimes people will go into the final table as a chip leader and as an outsider, as somebody watching the final table go down, there's this expectation almost like, oh, how could you possibly be the shortest stack all of a sudden? And watching Lee's play, he just really hasn't made any huge mistakes. There's not really one hand that we can sit here and point to and been like, oh, well, no. he's giving it away. And that's why, no, sometimes these things just happen. And sometimes you just get the second best, best hand against the best hand, sometimes your timing isn't great. Doesn't mean that you've made a lot of mistakes to find yourself at this point. It's just really about how well you're able to recover from that idea mentally of coming in as the chip leader and having high expectations for how the final is going to go down. King Queen of Strawberries versus King Queen of Broccoli, Watson v. Mauer. Mike's raised the button, made it 275,000. Mauer defends, and we go to a flop. Obviously, significant chance of a chop here. Oh, Mauer is free rolling. I'm trying to think, have I had a chance to sing the song with you fine gentlemen yet? I think once this week. It must not have been that good or else I would have remembered. Mike betting 180,000. You naturally expect to get a lot of folds from this board texture against the big blind defend, but of course, not with Mao's particular holding.
Jack of Hearts on the turn. So 78% of the time, this will be a split. 22% of the time, Mao will get there and hit the club on the river. There's a diamond on the river, so if this goes to showdown. That's interesting because, of course, King-Queen does have some showdown value, especially when the turn was checked back. But let's say Watson has a hand like deuces even, right? Or a small pair. Are you going to be upset that you didn't try to bluff those hands off? But... Both players just going to elect to take showdown. So this will be a chop pot. And you know what they say. Everyone, Everyone loves, loves a chop pot. pot. Solid work, Maria. Solid Thank work. You. What's weird is that, okay. So, oh, I'm sorry. Do you, you're going to take issue with no, this? No, no, it was. It ended up being what fine. It was fine. It was fine. But when, How, when how we're we about to do it, you? we look at each other, right? We, get, we, get, we look at each other to make sure we sync up, right? We're using facial cues and physical and then right before we start you like looked off somewhere in the distance you weren't even here i need you here <laughs> looking at me i'm sorry i see a lot of tens in chat so i think i don't need to be there i think where i was is perfectly fine thank you raksha see some people just finally acknowledging that all along stapes you have been gaslighting me oh, about the oh, chop oh, pot look, song. I see Raksha. Uh, her nose, it turns out, has go disappeared completely up your butt. <laughs> You're watching EBT Monte Carlo. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, James walks away for one second. I don't, I, I don't get any different all right maybe a little <gasps> yeah Mash cheer for says, your boy let's go on some tribute on some j mash said that was the best one i've ever heard somebody else said maria's the only one that does harmony no, you know you. it's all those years in college being a part of my college acapella group did you have a stupid acapella pun nickname like um i don't know the go, just say what it what, what was the name of your group it, it was a little lame. It, uh -huh. We were called the Dots. Uh, it, hold on. It was Which, an acapella group. It is by definition no, quite lame. It's called the Dots, and it's it stands for Daughters of Triton because <laughs> our, <laughs> our um, mascot at UC San Diego is Triton. Triton is a bit of a zaddy. I'll give you that. <laughs> Ooh, Nos Kicker. That is right. Maria was channeling her sister's singing voice. Very true. My sister does have an amazing voice. Have we just had two walks in a row? I'm walking here. That last one. What Kim Harold start the beneficiary of. He sits. One off the bottom of the leaderboard with 34 big blinds. Leo Lee's still the shortest stack at the table. Maria, what was your big banger? The dots. What was your like big closer to bring the we house down? We did a Lauren Hill medley um, okay. with songs from the sure. Miseducation of Lauren Hill, one of the best albums of all time. Um, and I got to do a nice little rap. Did you leave out the bad words? <laughs> Always. Did you replace them with other words like fudge? <laughs> Does that mean, Joe, you may be the only person in this commentary booth who's not performed a rap? Oh. Ooh. That's a good question. Yeah, I guess. King seven versus king eight, blind v blind. Harold's stat is completed. 
I think when I was in high school, I like rewrote a Midsummer Night's Dream as a rap. But I don't think I performed it. But I did get pulled up in front of the principal for it. <laughs> <laughs> Power of sevens, because it is always coming seven, and it's domination rotation in favor of Harold Studd. Moon Thunder says, why we see no Maria? Two words, Mike Watson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, blame Mike. 125,000 is the bet. And a fold from Bujmala. I will say it's kind of gotten to the point where I'm not sure if Mike knows that I'm joking. If there was a bit of an awkward exchange today at breakfast with me and Sarah, where I was like, good luck to Mike. And she kind of chuckled. Like, I'm not sure if she thought I was being genuine. She just threw a glass of orange juice in your face <laughs> and walked away. So when he started playing poker, Joachim Haraldstadt was working 12 hour shifts, patrolling the streets of Christiansand, which is his hometown. Wow. You guys can have observe and report. But then realized that poker was going pretty well, decided to become a pro, got his wife on board, quit his job as a security guard, and now here he is, grinding those online PLO games and occasionally coming to live events, and here looking to win an EPT title. I feel like security, there's always a security guard in every game I play, and they're like, hey, you're blind. Yeah, you got a dirty stack over there. <laughs> No, 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 button move, button move. Timothy Hans says, I wonder if the commentators are in Monte Carlo or is the booth in Las Vegas? <laughs> I mean, it's a fair question about whether the commentators are on site, but WTF would we be in Las Vegas? Hold on a sec. Yep, stratosphere right outside. Lee's really looking for a win right now. Just been a bit of a downhill slide. Would be really happy to rake in some chips. Katai, former EPT champion, was at the final table of this event a few years ago. <laughs> Eric in <coughs> chat says, the coronation is moving faster than the chips here. The chips are actually moving, as we've established. Leo Lise has gone from first to worst, but it's just no huge pots and obviously no double ups or eliminations yet. No, none of the commentators live in Vegas. That's why it's a really random place to suggest that we'd be commenting from. Pocket tens for Haraldstadt. Yeah, and I think another reason why we haven't seen a lot of big pots is just because nobody came in today so short where, you know, they're going to have to be getting it in and it's going to be a natural call off, you know, against a 10 big blind effective stack for one of the big stacks. It's just hasn't gone that way yet. But if Watson keeps his foot on the pedal, maybe. with a very nice hand in the big blind, especially if you think Watson's going to get out of line with his three bets. Oh. oh, wow. 
And this actually puts Harold's dad in a very difficult position. It'd be different if Lisa's just shoving over Harold's dad's open. Yeah. But with Watson being this. the three better and yet to act after Harold's dad, can he find a way? Weasel says 10-10 might fold. Um, I think more than might. Yeah, and Mike Watson's going to have to fold the ace nine as well. Strong move from Leo Lease, which sees him move from sixth to third. Wow. That is how bunched up these four players are right now. Very little. In fact, three big blinds in total separate Lease, Bougemelar, Ensemble, and Haraldstad. I missed that young lady's name before. Holly. On the rail for Leo. That is Leo's girlfriend. I wonder how she feels about sleeping in a van. She's like, oh, no, no, I've got a hotel room. <laughs> yeah. The van's his deal. Mostly. Remember living it when uh, living in a van down by the river meant that your life had turned out poorly? These Gen Z people, you know, they're really bringing it back. Yeah, that's what they're doing. 15 minutes on the level. Mike Watson opening on the button with ace nine, and Leo Lee says ace king in the small. Pretty nice to go from light four bet shove to a real hand, getting all the chips in the middle. The C asks, I wonder if the commentators like being in Vegas. I love being in Vegas. Maria? Yeah, me too. It's especially nice, you know, on breaks from commentary, just go out and play a couple hands of blackjack, make a couple extra hundred. Whenever I'm there, I have a great time. James, do you like being in Vegas? Love going to Vegas. There yeah, when go. James goes to Vegas, he wins awards. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I thank you for your question. Woopef in chat says, why is it the same people as yesterday? <laughs> <laughs> Do you mean us or the players? <laughs> I mean, both? I, I love the idea, though, that you could basically say, you six, right? Get this done. Finished. If you don't, we're going to replace you with six different players tomorrow. And you get nothing. Watson, again, not letting up, though. But also, you know, just not necessarily out of line. Just getting the right type of hands to open with these suited... King X combos, obviously very nice. Just very quickly, Maria, I love the fact that even though these guys are playing for really huge sums of money, and we've referenced several times the jumps in that prize money, Leo Lee genuinely seems to be enjoying himself. He looks like he's having a good time at this final table. Yeah, I appreciate that also. I mean, just listening to him talk about kind of his mindset and how his lifestyle has changed since driving his van to poker stops and this, that, and the other. It just shows that I think he's he's really present, you know, and I think that's helpful in these situations. It's just not to get caught up in, as you mentioned, what you could win or, you know, the, the pressure that's mounting. Tobias asks, what day is this? Saturday. Thank you for your question. So Mal with top pair. Let's check the action to Mike Watson. Who checks it back and pairs his king on the turn. Nice life. <laughs> yeah, definitely recognizing that that flop favors the small blind calling range, but able to 
hit his overcard on the turn. And if you think your opponent's going to have quite a few of these queen jack, jack 10 suited, you know, even ace jack sometimes with the ICM considerations, at some point, will you be able to find a little bit of value out of top pair? I mean, not the best river card, though. Of course, queen 10 getting there. Queen 10 being the type of hand that would also call out of the small blind. Mike Watson's full of the best hand once today, which is way uh, over the line of 0.5. Yeah. <laughs> He's pretty good. And a little flip-flop there for those two. Yeah, again, still pretty much tied at the top. Around 60, 65 big blinds for Mike Watson and Leonard Maurer. And then you've got everyone else bunched up between the 35, 40 big blind mark. Lines going up in 10 minutes. Well, that should be the 20 minute break first and then the blinds will go up. Sure. Most of the players at the final table have a healthy balance of time back chips. I've got to say, I've already gotten faked out by one of those things um, in the tournament that I Ooh, played. Oh, interesting. Where I was bluffing in the high roller. I, I was bluffing on the river, and my opponent threw in a time bank chip, and I thought that, I almost thought that I got called. And I kind of wish now that I did, like, because I was going to turn over my hand no matter what. It wasn't like I was going to muck, even though I was bluffing. But I think they caught kind of something in my eye or from, like, my peripheral vision of looking to see if I got called. And they ended up making the call. Yeah. And I was like, huh, I wonder if I gave something away somehow. But if I did the whole, like, reach for my cards really quick as if I'm ready to turn it over, he might have just thought that... I had a real value hand and then folded, so who knows? I wonder, obviously, after an EPT has taken place, there is generally a player survey that goes out to participants, and I wonder what the feedback is going to be on these chips, whether there are other people who feel that they've been kind of, like, fooled, as it were, by these chips. Well, actually, at my table, uh, Sam Grafton and Kehan Mockery were both there, and they were talking about it, and they definitely did not like the idea of it being a chip versus a card. Yeah, I was surprised, but we'll see what we have in place by the time we get to Barcelona. That is a really good thing about stars and the events that they hold is that survey and them really listening to player feedback has really created a, a really nice two-way conversation between the players and and the people running the tournament. And I think that they always end up getting it right because of that. We get the five of hearts on the turn. Ensemble picks up the flush draw. I don't start still ahead right now with a pair of threes. You're not allowed to wear headphones at the final table, right? He's not like m listening to music and just bobbing his head. It's just kind of a... That's his thing. That's his He's thing. Been doing it throughout. I would have plenty of nervous energy. I would likely be doing something like that myself. Going for a semi bluff with a draw. Bottom pair, pretty weak here, but again, blind versus blind. Ensemble now playing four and a half million, just shy of 40 big blinds. Seven minutes on the clock now. 
this is a fair point from T-Rath, who's watching on Twitch. From watching these final tables, I'm learning that poker isn't just a strategy game, but also an endurance game. Sure. And we talk frequently about the physical and mental toll that these games take, especially when you reach day six of a multi-day tournament. Yeah, anytime I've gone really deep into these multi-day events, uh, my brain is mush and physically, I just feel incredibly spent and it's hard to shut off your brain at the end of the night. It, you, you actually have a lot of sleepless nights when you go this deep and it, it's kind of hard to believe that uh, everything that you do, every decision that you make, there's so much money on the line, but you're not even able to think clearly half of the time at this point. Yeah. Maria, I know that you'll play a, a, a game, like a video game from time to time. Mm -hmm. It's a lot like, like a temple run. <laughs> a game where you're just like at break, one mistake, mm -hmm. one mistake, that's it. It's game over and you ruin your entire progress. Now, sometimes you can recover from mistakes in this game, but just that constant, constant thinking, maneuvering, and just knowing that at any you, it's relentless. You can't let down your guard at any moment. Yes, you can fold and maybe have like a second to breathe, but even still, you should be thinking and watching and uh, paying attention to other people's chip stack stack sizes, their tendencies, uh, watching the uh, payouts to see what money jumps are. Mm -hmm. It is really quite relentless. And people wonder why some of the older legends of the game just don't play tournaments anymore. You know, it's just because it's hard enough to keep up with it when you're a young player. Oh, God. What happened now? Uh, Temple Run is like 30 seconds, lol. These tournaments are hundreds of hours. Not sure about that one, Joe. You're banned. Harris on YouTube is not a fan of the commentary. The commentary is cringy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Harris, you can go too. It's all right. Thank you, though. A7 versus Queen7. Small blind versus big blind. Unraised pre. We go to the flop, which is Ace King Jack. So top pair for Bujmala, the gut shot straight draw for Mike Watson. Backdoor spades working for him as well. Just thought I'd mention it. Yeah, I think it's smart, James, to mention all the ways that Mike Watson could win this pot because he usually does end <laughs> up winning the pot. <laughs> Calls the 125,000. Deuce of diamonds on the turn. So it's going to have to be the 10 on the river if Mike Watson is going to win this pot. Unless, of course, he can somehow push Bujdala off this ace. Bujdala, get out of here. Yeah, and it's not the best board for top pair, obviously. Very coordinated. It's not the type of board that you're going to be able to get three streets of value from. So... I imagine that Bujmala is going to bet this turn, but going to check a lot of rivers, but just happy to not have to contend with Watson calling again in position and wondering what he's going to have to fade. By the way, guys, I'm not a huge fan of the whole Twitch versus YouTube thing. I like the fact that we're available on multiple platforms and people can watch where they choose. But just to kind of keep the Twitch audience in check here, YouTube is currently outnumbering you by nearly a two to one ratio. Uh oh. So um, you are in the minority.
two minute warning on the level. Pocket tens. Deece, Deece. Also, this hand is Deece. Well, Salma has opened with the tens. Mike Watson has Jacks in the small. And you, you got to think, man, Watson's had a pretty high three betting frequency out of the small blind today. Yeah. And every other player at this table has noticed that. And sometimes Watson has had it. You know, we saw him have ace king in the small blind before. And, you know, here he has jacks. But sometimes he hasn't. And so how will Ensemble respond? Wait, what just happened? Did they say... There was some sort of chat. I'm not sure if Mike intended to raise. Oh. Yeah, that's what it seemed like. And accidentally just called. But we are going to go heads up to the flop. And it is a domination situation. Well. And that is a dangerous flop for Arno Ensemble. Oh, Two man. overs to the board. But Mike Watson still with the better hand. And a 9-1 to one favorite here. He's checked it. Yeah, regardless of, you know, what happened there pre-flop or what Watson's intention was in terms of calling versus three betting, <laughs> there's not a whole lot for Ensemble to feel scared about with this board. Looks like he wasn't trying to three bet. People have noticed he just didn't quite put out enough okay, for the call. But okay. even still, this is headed for disaster for Ensemble. This is the last hand of the level. We've ticked into the break. The question is, will this be Arno Ensemble's last hand at the final table? It is going to be hard to get away since, again, I think for sure you would imagine Watson would have found a three bet with Queens plus you know, having Ensemble covered, Ensemble starting this hand with about 37 bigs or so pre-flop. Even though Watson didn't put out enough chips to make the three bet pre, Ensemble knows that his intention was to re-raise. No, I don't think he was trying to re-raise. I think he just didn't put out enough for a call. Well, he's going to check raise this flop. 375,000 has become 875,000. Yeah, and, you know, again, if we just go off the premise that Ensemble doesn't think Watson was trying to three bet pre, then tens are performing pretty well. Of course, Watson could have nines here, sixes here, threes here, could have all the sets. There's also a couple of draws possible. You know, 8-7 suited could potentially call from the small blind. Mm. Beating, you know, ace-9 suited. That would call from the small blind. And perhaps check raise here with top pair, top kicker to deny equity to two overs. A lot for Ensemble to think about facing this raise. On some shoves. And Mike Watson. Yeah, Watson doesn't love this because On some could have all of the bigger pairs that have Jack's beat. But could also have some nut flush draws as well. You know, a lot of the ace x of diamonds here mike watson makes the call and is in a great spot here yeah. a nine to one favorite to eliminate arno ensemble wow 90 percent ensemble is gonna need to spike a 10. i guess there are some running straight possibilities of course diamonds don't work for him Played 
More than two hours without losing a player. Are we going to bust Arno Ensemble on the last hand of this session? The turn card is the king of hearts. Leaving Arno Ensemble with two outs and the one time has been invoked. How many lives does the cool cat have? Needs a 10 on the river, or we're down to five. It's a six. Arno Ensemble is eliminated in sixth place. Such disappointment, but nonetheless, a cash of 180,900 euros. Meanwhile, Mike Watson, 12 million chips, pulling ahead of the rest of this final table. Mike Watson's going to have 80 bigs at the new blind level. And how crushed, how devastated is Arno Ensemble right now? I mean, you can hear it in the room. Just silence. The rail that made so much noise every time you won a hand, deathly silent. Ensemble will collect his cash of nearly 181k. That's very sweet. Bittersweet, I guess. The money is one thing, but the win means so much to these players. Make no mistake about it, they want that title, they want that trophy. And to come this close and yet fall so far could be devastating. But what a spot for Mike Watson now. So many chips, nearly a two to one advantage over Leonard Maurer, who sits in second place on the leaderboard. I mean, it went from everybody being kind of even to Mike kind of running away with this. He'll have 80 bigs at the new blind level. Leonard Maurer with 50 bigs. Lise and Bouchemalar tied around 30. And Joachim Haraldstadt now the shortest stack with 25 bigs. 20 minute break, and then we return with five players competing for an 890k top prize here at the Pokestars EPT, presented by Monte Carlo Casino. McAllister back in the action, folded to him on the button. He opens to 225,000 with Jack-8. Chip leader Mike Watson has Jack-5 in the big. He's going to defend this. You are correct. The flop gives Mike Watson top pair. Two pair for McAllister. Some chips are very likely to go in the middle. McAllister continues for 190,000. They both have enough chips to play this hand pretty straightforward. And Mike Watson's rail's been joined by Toodles from Hook. Look it up. Mike calls. The turn card is a seven. Well, that gives Watson a straight draw to go with top pair, but he's still a nine to one dog. He checks for a second time. Herper's gonna derp and better's gonna bet. Callister firing again, 380,000. I think there's only one way for Mike to play this. My guess is call now. Maybe he's able to make a soul read and fold the river. Once again, he calls. The river's a five. No way Watson folds now. That's a horrible card for him. Rivering a worse two pair. Yeah, that's really bad. How much value can Philip McAllister extract here? Well, there is a four card straight out there, but I think both these hands are too strong to not go bet call. Well, that's 730,000. And Watson calls. Top two. Phil McAllister running hotter than a pizza when you're really hungry. 
He adds another 1.6 million to his stack and he takes the chip lead. Mike under the gun here. Blinds now 61-20. And Watson has queens. He raises. Ace Jack for Vladimir Troinovsky. Man, I said it before and I'll say it again. If Vlad spoke better English, he'd be a superstar in the Western world. Troinovsky has re-raised a three bet to 575,000. Folded around to the blinds. McAllister's out. As is Toby Lewis. Back on Mike Watson. Even though I know it's not true, it feels like Queens is a flip against Ace Jack. I can see Mike doing anything but folding. Watson elects to call. Hey. The flop. Is Jack 8 4. That's top pair for Vlad. Watson's still ahead with his over pair. Action's been checked to the pre flop aggressor. I see no reason why Vlad wouldn't bet this. I mean, other than that he's up against Queens. 1.43 million in the middle. Vlad makes it 525,000. Now, if Mike knew what Vlad had, he would definitely raise. But he doesn't know, so he just calls. Correct. He doesn't want Vlad to run away. Turn card is the Ten of Clubs. The board gets straightier and flushier. Pretty bad card for both players. Watson checks. Their hands are actually very similar. Vlad checks behind. Six of diamonds on the river. Very safe river for Mike. Sure, some of the time he's going to be up against aces or kings and he'll get value cut. But not often enough to not take this spot. Roughly half pot, 1.25 million. And Vlad beats plenty of value bets and all bluffs, so a call here would be pretty reasonable. Troinovsky calls. Nice one, Mad Dog. Uh, pretty unlucky run out for Vlad. Troinovsky lost nearly 2.3 million in that hand. Not an insignificant percentage of his stack. I think he needs a minute. So Toby Lewis just limped in the small with nines. Look at you, Toby Lewis, slow playing those nines, you little devil, you. Mike Watson checks his option with 9-7 and flops top pair. This could get a little bit messy. Top pair against an over pair. It's what just happened to Vlad. It's a pretty sweet flop for nines. Well, Toby Lewis continues to play it slow. He is checked. Mike Watson bets 200,000. Pretty good spot for a check raise. Noah Valancourt and Chris Mormon know what I'm talking about. There's the raise, 750,000. Fairly easy call for Mike. Toby didn't raise pre-flop, so he's generally going to be semi-bluffing here or have a bad two-pair. Mike calls. Turn card. Three of spades. Lewis shoves. Hey. Told you he knew what I was talking about. Looks like an easy fold to us, but Mike's still beating all semi bluffs, blocking other top pairs. It's hard for Toby to have an over pair. And after the check raise, he's getting some pretty good pot odds. He calls. Has to be nines, even, right? Jesus. Couple of coolers for Mike Watson. This one with a much different result. Good job. Fraser McIntyre and Ludovic Gylik railing Toby Lewis, who only has to fade a seven on the river to survive. Maximum sweat. Maximum effort. Home and drive. Yes! Come on! Toby's girlfriend, Brooke English. My son. Thank you. Significant blow to Mike Watson as Toby Lewis gets the full double up. Toby played those nines a little tricky, and it worked out well for him. Bill at McAllister with nine six of hearts on the button. Limps. 
More button limping being employed. King nine of spades for Toby Lewis. Hola. He shoves. Mike Watson has ace jack. I think Mike's got a reshove with this dynamic. Ace jack could easily be and is the best hand. All in. There's the reshove. McAllister folds. Toby Lewis at risk and behind. Toby's such a boy's name. You'd never have a prime minister, Toby. Poor guy lost the last one, and he was better off pre-flop then. Yeah, he's nearly a two-to-one underdog here. 10-6-3 flop. Ace high holding. Five immediate outs for Toby Lewis. Still, all it takes is one pair for Toby to win this hand. Ah, <sighs> damn. It's fun and games, isn't it? The turn card. It's a king! I mean, I said a pair, but I may have spoken too soon. Watson can always re-get there. And Toby is set to double up, just has to fade a queen or an ace on the river. See how close I can get to it. The river is a queen is straight for Watson. Ouch. Toby Lewis eliminated. Good luck. I really feel bad about saying all he needed was a pair to win. I should not have said that. But seriously, where that puppy at? <sighs> Toby's fourth place finish worth $267,000. And after that hand, Mike Watson has a commanding chip lead. A7 for Philip McAllister. He raises from the button. Mike Watson has King Queen suited in the small blind. Love a good three bet with Queen suited. Re raises to 1.2 million. Tony Gregg folds. So back on McAllister. Oh, yeah, Grip said, get at that popcorn. Leave no kernel unmouthed. Did he just regurgitate into the packet? Yeah, I don't know what's happening back there. What's McAllister thinking about here? I think there's an argument for calling and for folding. And then there's also this. He's pulling back his original bet. And putting out a four bet to just over two million. Mike's got a hand that's pretty impossible to fold in this situation. He is usually gonna have way too much equity. It's suited and it makes a pretty good top pair. McAllister has effectively bet the third of his stack. He's got four million behind. All, in. All you can eat. And McAllister folds. So about four bet folding with a 30 or chips in the pot, don't do that. Mike Watson's rail getting very excited. An action on Tony Gregg on the button. McAllister in the small blind. Has jacks. He completes. Phil McAllister more like Trappy McTrappy. 8-7 suited for Mike Watson. Will Mike Watson fall in? All in. Yes, he will. Cool. Got him. McAllister, roughly an 80% favorite for a double up here. The good news for Mike is that 7-8 suited is a decent cracker hand. I love the way you're trying to put a positive spin on it. <laughs> but they're suited. So a great spot for McAllister. Oh, hang on a moment. Watson's flopped a pair and a flush draw. Yeah, I think the dealer just put a positive spin on it. He's now a slight statistical favorite. And that'll do it for McAllister. Good game, man. Nice playing with you. He's out in third. Nice yeah. playing with you, bro. Good luck. Phil McAllister was a pretty interesting dude. Love to see more of him on the tour. Tony Gregg raising the button with sevens. 
Mike Watson with King Seven in the bag. He defends. Just the one over card for Mike Watson. And Mike hits his one live card to make top pair. Are you serious? Yes. Action checks to Tony Gregg, who continues to 350,000. Tony's batting into a bad board for a few reasons. He can protect against getting bluffed later. Maybe fold out some hands with equity against him. He is not folding out top pair, however. Watson calls. Turn card to nine. And when Tony gets called there, I think he's gonna shut it down a lot. Play this hand like a bluff catcher. Action goes check, check. Tony Gregg drawing to one out. Doesn't hit. Mike Watson may go for value here. 1.8 million in the middle. Yeah, he should feel pretty confident as king. He bets a million straight. Now, I did say Tony was going to play this as a bluff catcher. I'm not sure how many bluffs there are to be caught here. I think... Uh, no, he's not going to lay it down. He calls. And sees he's beat. And that was a tilt whistle. I do not think he was too happy with that call. And it's the Mike Watson fan club from Saskatoon, everyone. Mike extends his chip lead, opening up nearly a two to one advantage over his opponent. Ace queen for Tony Gregg. Uh -oh. Raises to half a million. How mad would you be if I insta folded? I don't think my Watson's folding King Jack here. Now we've got some serious heads up hands here. Things have the potential to escalate. He brings a knife, you bring a gun. Watson re-raises. It's a three bet to 1.35 million. He sends one of yours to the hospital, you send one of his to the morgue. Somehow you're actually worse at accents than Sean Connery. And that's saying something. That was just how I normally speak. Tony Gregg responds with a four bet to 2.875 million. Now you've got King Jack and you're faced with a four bet. Luckily, Mike's got the chips to just call and try to hit a pair. That's right, everyone. That's a legit play in poker. Call and try to hit a pair. It's fine. Just because it's what you would do doesn't make it wrong. Mike does call and we have a huge pot already. There's nearly six million in the middle. Yum, yum. Oh, Watson outflops Greg, top pair. Amazing flop for King Jack. Mike checks. This pot is huge and Tony's overs are gonna be good a lot so he cannot give a free card. He's set to continue. 1.65 million. All in. Mike Watson check raises all in. He shoves on Tony Gregg. And that is the appropriate face. It's kind of gross. And that is going to open up a vast gap between these two players. Mike did an awesome job of protecting his equity in that hand. And Tony probably likes his chances to climb back from 25 big blinds and then take his equity in that spot. Right now, Mike Watson has a commanding chip lead. It's 23 million versus four and a half million. And blinds are up to 150, 300. Is Tony Gregg gonna have another runner-up finish in the PCA? He's called here with ace eight. Mike Watson checks his option with seven four off. Well, the flop brings top pair for Gregg. Flush and straight draws for Watson. It's practically a coin flip. You would not have expected there to be a collision on the flop between these two hands, but somehow the poker gods provide. Tony Gregg bets 400,000. Seems like a pretty obvious spot for a just call. <coughs> Why call when you can raise 1.2 million from Watson? 
This raise puts Mike in a really awkward spot if Tony shoves. He'll pretty much have to call, and it's a weak hand as far as calling hands go. Let's see how Tony responds. All in. Greg's going with it. Oh, Mikey. What have you done? I think I know what Mike has to do, but don't forget, he's making a decision for one of the biggest titles in poker. Hard for him to know that it's pretty much 50-50 here. That it would be correct for him to call. He does call! Here we go. Let's flip that coin. This is a good one to see for you. A really good one. <laughs> really good one. Mike has 12 outs twice. This is why they make a deal. I can't really picture you holding up 7-4 off for the winner's photo, you know? <laughs> or it's too dirty. It's a great hand. You need a prettier hand than that. Gotta build my image. <laughs> if Mike hits, we have a winner. Just don't turn me dead like you did to uh, Philip. That's true. Offsuit nine, just. Yeah, you can turn a pair or something. He does turn a pair. Well dealt. <laughs> Mike Watson now has 16 cards he can hit to win the PCA. Fours, fives, sevens, and hearts all working for him. That's a lot of outs. Is it too many? The river is a heart, and that means it's over. Seven four in the winner's photo. Tony Gregg is a runner up again. Mike Watson wins the PCA 2016 main event. Okay. Mm -hmm. Two very deserving players made it to heads up, and this one just went Watson's way. In 2008, he won a WPT. In 2016, he takes down an EPT. Welcome back to Monaco and the PokerStars European Poker Tour presented by Monte Carlo Casino. So we just saw how Mike Watson won an EPT title in the Bahamas in 2016. He's going for his second title and trophy today. He is the chip leader at the five-handed final table in this main event. Coming into play from break with an 80 big blind stack. Leonard Maurer second in chips with 50 bigs. Leo Lees, Sammy Bouchmala bunched together around the 30 big blind mark. And Joachim Harold Stat is the shortest stack right now with 25 bigs as we kick off the 100K, 150K blind level. It's James Hartigan with Griffin Benger. Hello, everyone. And Sam Crafton. Hey, guys and girls. So, yes, it is the Mad Dog Show, Sam. Love to see it. The great man in action. And obviously, on the last hand of the last session, we lost Arno Ensemble, taking us down 2-5. Everyone now guaranteed nearly a quarter of a million euros, 235k for the next player out. 890k up top. Cards are in the air once again. Yeah, and Mike Watson going to be pushing the action with this big chip lead. One of the best players in the world. High roller, PCA champion. I mean, the list of credentials rolls on. Blind v. Blind, Lisa's called with the 7-4 of diamonds. Bauer with the 9-deuce of diamonds. Yeah. So we established earlier in the week, Sam, that Mauer is Grozorg online, a player <laughs> that we've uh, seen a lot of at the online tables. Uh -oh. As both players flop a flush draw. Um, I'm assuming he's someone you've played against a bunch. Yeah, I, I've got to say, there's not many players I've played more sort of final table poker with than... Leonard, we uh, we played almost exactly the same sort of stakes uh, through lockdown and, and, and the years before that. Uh, someone I know very, very well, very, very talented uh, individual, someone who works really, really hard on his game. And this is going to be pretty interesting. Both players with a, a weakish flush draw. Obviously, Leo, as the one that completed from the small blind, is going to have a bit of a stronger range on the ace-jack-3 board uh, and might want to exert some pressure. Quite a good card for Lise, because you imagine that if it were a diamond, that playing 30 big blinds effective might uh, Should, be bye-bye. Well, I mean, it's, uh, it's yeah, it's a very, very good card for, for Leo's range. He doesn't, he likes to just slow down. Doesn't push this sort of nut advantage that he has on the ace-king-jack 
what he's going to do if Maui bets. Um, but yeah, it's uh, sort of weak flush on weak flush. A diamond, as you say, would be disastrous for Leo. Check, check, river for free, which is the ace of hearts, Barry Greenstein. Yeah, and this is, again, a card that's sort of more favorable for Leo on check, check. And he's just going to wave the white flag here. And it's going to actually incentivize Leonard to try and bluff against a sort of targeting a queen high, a 10 high, a 3x. Might be that with the deuce in hand, you want to fire. Don't know whether 9 high sh it shouldn't really show down for much. Ace, ace, king, jack. The nine is playing. Yeah. So in, in a spot like this, though, when, when Leo does elect to check the turn, once Mao checks back, doesn't that sort of st strengthen Mao's range and, like, quite decrease Lee's? It's like it's hard for him to try to bet Mao off of a jack, for instance, on the river, and that's what makes it hard to bluff with the bottom of the range there. Yeah, but, I mean, you, you're going to check some kings. You're going to check yeah. some aces. You're going to check some some queen tens to get a check raise in. I mean, you, sh you should have some stronger hands. There, yes. Right? Uh, when you have, yeah. I think it's also difficult. You know, Leo started with, uh, you know, was the chip leader at one point on this final table, and things have not really gone particularly well for him and maybe doesn't want to start the, you know, level with, like, yeah. just bluffing into a jack that snaps you off or something, Yeah, of right? course. I mean, I'm not I'm not here to be critical of someone that's that's climbed all the way to the final table. And and Leo, someone also I know, uh, great guy to follow on Instagram, sort of, uh, nice. met, uh, like, puts posts about the tournaments he's playing and, and his lifestyle and poker. And I know he's very, very talented. I've played against him in the live arena myself. Um, yeah, just a little bit passive for a man of my taste, but... You know, these guys are going to... Maybe he he randomized and, and just mm -hmm. rolled a, a rolled low and, and decided to pass up the spot. Well, uh, Lise has the hand named after our guest commentator. <laughs> He's got the Grafton, 10-9 suited. Harold Stapp with ace-jack of clubs in the big blind. I didn't know whether you were going to be insulted by this question, Sam. Hank on YouTube says, is that Rob Young in the box? <laughs> We can't afford Rob Young's hourly, unfortunately, <laughs> so it, well, you won't be seeing him anytime soon. So this limp actually really going to work out for Leo. Um, be much more difficult to continue if Harold started three bet the big blind against an open, but just against the limp. And that sounds like a shove instead for the 30. It is. You're not going to get away with that, Leo. Wow. Jojo says that's the dealer from Triton. No, that's the dealer from the EPT who also works on Triton. Daniela has more history with the European Poker Tour than with Triton. By virtue of the EPT, you haven't been going for more years. Yeah, actually, she has the red spade tattooed on her arm, but she's just covered up by the by the black sleeve there. So, you know, the tattoo speaks of her loyalty, her, her fealty to the, to the EPT brand. Absolutely. We actually had a question earlier on. Who, which dealer has dealt more final tables in the last five years? And we mean the last five active years, let's ignore 2020, 2021, and everyone snap called Daniela. It's obviously. <laughs> yeah, a big part of the team. Yeah, and it's lovely to see uh, Brit, up and coming Brit, at the final table. Um, definitely going to have a little bias towards Leo on this final table, though I'm sure they're a great bunch of lads. Obviously, I know Mike Watson very, very well. But, uh, yeah, really exciting to see Leo with this big breakout score. Leo, the man in the van. And that is going to be raise and take it for Mauer, who sits second on the leaderboard with 54 bigs. Yeah, and uh, I forget whether he won a 25K in Barcelona. He did. Or, or, um, yeah, which was, which was a nice score for Leonard. He's obviously someone that's sort of, I wouldn't say transitioning to the live arena. He, he's played plenty of live poker. But, you know, similar really to... Uh, Alex, who took down the, the 100K event, we're seeing the sort of uh, lockdown generation of players. People who have put in a long, long time in the online streets have got amazing online scores, giant online scores, playing against the best in the world. Now beginning to make their mark in the live arena. It takes a while because of the variance and adjusting to, to, to the, the nuances of live poker for these online crushes to sort of build up a live resume. But as, as with you, Griff, when you transition, Flush Entity came to the live arena, it, it, you know, in the end, it happens. Yeah. Yeah, Leonard did win the 25K in Barcelona. That was worth 653,000 euros. This is actually his first EPT main event cash. And yeah. if it's a win, it will eclipse his earnings from that high roller in Barcelona last year. 
Very glad I was able to pave the, pave the way for these guys, you know? Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Griffin, the trendsetter Benja. <laughs> yeah, and, and options available here for Mike between flat and three bet. Alexa, just cool. He's got the Spraggy, A7 offsuit. 50 big blind steep, I guess. Maybe you want some suited properties or something slightly different. Maybe a lower ace uh, than the A7. Ooh. Yeah, and this is a big old flop here. Uh, for Leonard, who, you know, in my experience, very, very talented and, and will have studied final tables a great, great deal. But on a little bit on the looser side, certainly fearless in the same way as Alex, as, who I mentioned earlier. And we'll begin with a small down payment of quarter pot. But depending on run out, this is just the beginning here. Uh, Watson obviously going to be defending very, very wide, getting the pot odds as chip leader. Um, the ace, I wouldn't say deceptive, uh, but definitely high, very high in your range to have the top pair here. Four of hearts on the turn. Mike Watson check called the flop for 250k. He checks a second time. We can see he is drawing dead. This is the danger with the Spraggy. Yeah, I mean, it was with the ace seven that Leonard backed into that full house against Jason Wheeler yesterday. Uh, Mike Watson, not so lucky. Um, and this is going to be a decent sizing. Obviously, sizings go down a little bit under ICM. Million, but so we're not necessarily going. What's he going? Yeah. You know, we, I, think, I think for chips, we might expect an overbet here or, or pot. Sizings against chip leader just reduced. And, and, you know, Leonard staying in line as if he had an ace jack, ace 10. And also the bluffs. But I don't think Watson can get away from top pair yet. Obviously, you're going to be folding some King Jacks, King Tens. We imagine folding the Queen X, some Deuce X that doesn't pick up a wheel draw. And again, a million chips going into the middle. This would be it's looking like it's going to be a substantial swing between Mike Watson and second in chips, Landon Mauer. Six of spades completes the board. And yeah, we could see a change in the chip lead if another bet goes on, goes in the river. Yeah, and this is an interesting spot. Let's see what sizing Leonard goes for. Again, I think under earlier stage in the tournament, we would sort of be lining up to make sure that we're all in by the river. You want to do that less on final tables. So Leonard staying consistent. What does he pick for the sizing? So exciting. Yeah, two thirds pot. And now this is almost, I would say, the first decision point in the hand for Mike Watson. This is the first time when really the A7 reduced to a, a bluff catcher. See, most of the value does come from ace two, ace four, ace queen, right? So you're blocking value. Um, ace queen off, a lot of combinations. Ace deuce only, and ace four only the suited variant. So the, the spade is somewhat relevant here. Does he ever value bet worse? Ace five, you might imagine, would take out a street somewhere along the line. Same with ace three. Check back turn, perhaps. And Mike Watson. Yeah. Not excited <clears throat> by this spot. Yeah, and this will change hands in the chip lead anyway very slightly, but this 2.2 million swing will, you know, vault Mao up to around the 12.5 million mark and be a significant chip lead. So this is a big, big yeah. moment. Yeah, and I don't think the bluffs are, are that hard to find. Uh, you know, a 4-5, a jack-10, um, you know, just some, some sort of... You could be very polarized in position, some real air ball hands, 9-8 could play this way. Plenty of bluffing candidates on a board that favors the pre-flop aggressor. But do you work in the the unsuited combos at the cutoff with 9-8? No, not 9-8, right. you know, but 9-8 suited, 10-9 suited, yeah. there's, there's, there's plenty. Is a seven better than a 10? Uh, you know, Mike Watts, you know, does he just have to take his medicine and call half the time, 60% of the time? You can see it's a real big decision point for Mike Watson. I had to guess, I, I think he will decide to pay here. But again, it might just be a frequency thing where 
you decide to pay a certain percentage of the time with all kickers being equal. And he gets away from it. Finds a fold. Bravo, Mike Watson. Really nice fold. I think essentially losing the minimum. That is, you know. Yeah. World class. And yes, it has seen a change in the chip lead, but it's only a slight advantage. In fact, oh, Mike wow. Watson still has 75k more, but let's be honest, they're tied. 67 big blinds each. Leonard Mao has drawn level with Mike Watson. And distance between those two and the rest of the table are all bunched together. Yeah, and I don't want to lean too, too much into this narrative, but of course it's similar to what we saw in the 100k. You know, a new generation of poker player coming through in the form of Leonard Mao and Mike Watson representing the old guard in the same way sort of perhaps Mateos did uh, yeah. and, and Makita in, in, on that super high roller final table. Certainly a real nice pot for Leonard. It's, it's, it's so funny because actually he's someone that I, I've only ever called Grozork. I, I, like, <laughs> it's actually really hard for me to say Leonard... Ma How are we saying his surname? Mauer. 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 Very Germanic. Like it. Like, Mauer. Mauer. I, could, Mauer. I could get behind that. But it, there's certain players that, that, you know, at least to begin with, you know you know by your screen name. When I, when I see him at my table, like, or if I would tell I played a hand against Grozork. Even if I played with him in a light, you know. Just actually similar, I, I tend to say uh, so what, uh rather than Mike. Yeah, my mom only calls me Shagwar. <laughs> so Mike has completed with Queen Deuce, and Leo Lee checks his option with King Queen. Now playing low variance here versus the chip leader. Trying to keep in weaker kings and queens. <laughs> Very nice. There you go. Ace Jack six, King Queen high, still the best hand. Action goes check, check. Three of diamonds on the turn. <coughs> yeah, Mike, feeling he has other hands to pull, for from, pull from for bluffs, you know, uh, some seven nines, you know, the lower the cards, the better. Uh, queen high doesn't get king high to fold too often on this board. So we'll just hope for a little bit of showdown um, and lose the pot to Leo. Of course, this is just one of the ways that uh, temperament and experience, as well as, of course, study comes into it. Mike, you know, with the chip lead, uh, sometimes you feel like oh, I've got to pressure the shorter stack each and every hand but it's okay to take a more passive line with certain combinations, uh, give up a pot or two along the way. These top players so attuned to the combinatorics. Well, earlier Sam Grafton was mistaken for Rob Young. Now we've got Vastarantsu on Twitch saying, that sounds like that British action bloke. <laughs> action, yeah, all action. Who does, he, who does he think I am? Jason Statham. Oh, my God. Sam Grafton, Jason Statham. That's a movie I want to see. <laughs> Sorry, Dwayne. We're biffing you off the next Hobson Shaw movie. We've got Grafton. I feel like Mike's got a winner's mentality here with this shirt. Right? This, is a, this is a winner. He's picked it's, this out. He's I, I, I do it myself. I bring shirts. It's like yeah, a final table, final shirt, table yeah. type shirt, right? I was a big fan of the shirt. Joe was not convinced. I think Mike's shirt is on point. Yeah, and, and if, you know, he busts early and, and his, uh, his wife gets some baguette and tuna and stuff, he could take it off and they could put it down for a picnic. <laughs> <laughs> Raise and take it from the button. Mike back out in front. I know uh, Joe Chim is a PLO guy primarily. What do we know uh, about our boy Sammy here? So Sammy Bouchemelot, well, the, the interesting thing is that the, the fun story is that he and Arno, who went out in sixth place, like started playing online around the same time. Oh, and wow. they used to play together in like three Euro MTTs on like .fr. Lovely. And then they find themselves at the final table, the same EPT final table. So he's, 
an online grinder in France, has been playing for 10 years. He actually is being coached by Virgil Turchi, who we had on the feature table earlier on in this event, and he was on his rail earlier on. And he encouraged him to play a live satellite for this. So he actually won his seat the day before day 1B. You've got to admire that. Love, love to see grinders doing well. I, I was saying earlier how Arno I found out his screen name and, and realized I played 8 million MTTs against him as well. <laughs> so good to see uh, guys coming through from the online background uh, transition I made myself. Yeah, has 330K in live winnings. Cash the 2018 World Series of Poker main event. But it's Harold Stanton Watson in this hand, and it is top, top for Watson. It is the gut shot for Harold Stad. I think, I think Mike feels some regret about the very average green t-shirt he wore for his PCA winners <laughs> final. So, he, he, you know, that's just the one thing Not that niggled with him. It's the one thing that niggled at him about that win. Yeah. I PCA think, too, like, at least make it blue. I think I think you can get away with a t-shirt at a final table in the Bahamas, but in Monte Carlo, you've got to have a collar. Yeah, and has he got a bit of check race here? Without the back door, ah, this is probably, yeah, I think this is quite nice, actually. Um, you know, Not when they have ace-queen, but yes. <laughs> sure. Force out. You know, we imagine a holding like ace-eight off. Um, that's, uh, you know, a jack-nine suited with no interaction. Uh, Seven-five doesn't play as good in the check call line here when, you you know, you can't turn a flush draw. Uh, so puts pedal to the metal immediately. And Mike just deciding whether he wants to three-bet the flop now or keep in the bluffs. I really want to handle this question from Carlos on YouTube. Are there still online satellites for the EPT in Barcelona? They're not running yet, and I believe they will start running towards the end of this month. Could just put it in now. Click, clicked it back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the re raise is to 1,250,000. Yeah, very cute from Mike Watson. Gives him some options to make a bluff here as well. Pressurizing. Um, you know, if Harold Stat had check raised uh, a weak Queen X, putting that in an awkward position and allowing him to bluff with a sort of ace five with a club or something like of that nature. And Harold Stat, 600K chips he won't be seeing again soon or without a fight. And nice play from Mike Watson. And for the first time at this final table today, we see a player <laughs> drop below the 20 big blind mark. Harold Stat left with 18 bigs. Mike Watson up to 77 bigs, back up over 11 and a half million. Do you think the strategy changes there when it's, there isn't a flusher on the flop? It's just uh, you're, you're too nutted, and it's n you're not going to get sort of three-bet shoves all in on the flop. Yeah, I, don't, I mean, the, 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 it should be that the flush draws, flush draws he check raises, he gets in, right? That, well, that's why you want to keep on could, putting keep bets in there to get it yeah, all in. That's yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, could, could, could well be that. But I'm saying would you lean more call if the board was rainbow as yeah. Watson? Yeah, yeah exactly. That's what I that thought, sense. yeah. yeah. Jack-10 suited for Mauer on the button. What's Sammy got? He could be considering a shove here on occasion. Yeah. 26 effective. Yeah, I think this is really nice. You just fold out King Jack, King-10. Ace-10 doesn't enjoy itself, etc., etc. You don't allow people to realize uh, equity from a big blind with those sort of seven five suited, seven six suited. Uh, you know, and, and, and you know, I know how serious Grozog is about the, <coughs> about the game. He's given him a warning. He didn't like that shove. The tournament directors intervened. 
There's too many big plans for the Jack Dempsey. <laughs> We're going to shut down for today, guys. <laughs> so a reminder that this is the last day of the mini EPT Monte Carlo online series with our mini main event starting at 8.15 this evening, local time. Uh, if you make the final table, you get a scoop ticket, a 1K scoop ticket to the medium buy-in main event. If you win it, you get an EPT Barcelona package. So plenty of added value in this $5.50 MTT, which closes out that series. Yeah, I was just going to say about Leonard. I know he's uh, sort of part of the Votnalos crew. And, uh, you know, those guys spend a lot of time studying and working Apple together, Ruby sharing Ruby. hand histories. Uh, big shout out to them. Very, very strong. I thought they were always Firm. out playing the flipping games. <laughs> yes. A playing lot. the 50 flipping <laughs> games, always coming seven. Yeah, playing, mate, putting in some volume as well. So uh, I know those guys will all be railing him. Probably playing the Sunday tournaments as well, so a big shout out to them. We get Harold Stad raising the button here with Ace Four, and we have Mike Watson in the big blind yeah, with not, King Three. Yeah, not exciting to be opening into the chip leader, and Mike again with a hand that is a potential three bet candidate uh, with the high card, low card. Well, again, just to decide how to play it goes for the call. So this is the problem, Sam, is that some people in the world just don't get sarcasm. The tournament director did not criticize Maurer for the shove. <laughs> he was actually coming over to tell them there'd been a mistake with the tournament clock and they actually have another hour to run at this level rather than 50 minutes. Sam made a joke and some of you took it seriously. <laughs> and now we're going to move on. Yeah, and, and things <laughs> continue guys, to go on. Mike Watson's way. Harold Stad with the ace of hearts in hand, which is you know, has nice properties preventing check raises and the like. Just a good board for the pre-flop raiser who, when he's going to be playing so tight, and goes for slightly bigger sizing uh, because of the connectivity. And Mike Watson with a commanding lead with the top pair won't be over excited, of course, with the three kicker, but will continue nonetheless. And a heart on the turn would be interesting. Obviously, Harold Stad, a PLO player. And it comes a card which, you know, very much favors Mike Watson. They just built, their range just built a lot more around the board. Really rough card for Harold Stad to see. Now needs to decide whether to fire again. Obviously, ahead of the Queen Jacks, Jack 10s, 7-8s, um, 10-8 of diamond holding. I don't know about that. will be folding anyway. Has to decide whether wants to fire again or slow down. And that's a, that's a cool card. Mike's going to feel like the king is, is good here very often. You're going to play this as a bet a lot because you have the 7-8s and... Yeah. Yeah. Some of the Broadway straight draws. Yeah, you, you, yeah. Your, your, your hand's just worth a bet against queens, jacks, etc. Uh, but decides to check on the Heart River. Very the Doors open now for Harold Stad with that ace of hearts, just over pot remaining. Sure. Can he get a six to fold? Is it possible Mike has ace ten? You, know, you don't want to ace in your hand to, to, to bet into ace ten. I, I don't know. And I think he ace just 10 probably knuckled. shoves a decent amount preflop, 20 effective, right? Yeah, some of the time, you'd imagine. And very controlled poker from Sir Watts. As I said, could have considered three bet, could have considered value bet on the river, just playing it uh, snug, not wanting to put unnecessary chips in the middle. Actually, might have lost the hand if he played the river. You know, versus a blocking bet, might have wanted to turn that ace three into a into a bluff shove. Unless you just bet to induce. <laughs> bet. Snap real gangster. Got kick three. Got yeah. you. Important announcement. There was a question about Barcelona satellites. Yeah. The plan initially was to launch them at the end of this month. I have just been informed they're going to start tomorrow. So the lobby's already there. The first satellite runs tomorrow, Sunday, May 7th, same day that Scoop starts. You can try to qualify for EPT Barcelona. Let's go. Yeah. The, the sight of Leo and Mike playing this final table is going to have you guys so fired up to qualify for an EPT. We, we couldn't hold the satellite back any longer. Makes sense. One EPT finishes. Now try and qualify for the next one. Yeah. And 
and sight for sore eyes here for Sammy, ace king of clubs. From three Euro M MTTs to 3.8 million chips on an EPT final table. By the way, we do now have a legitimate short stack at this final table. We referenced a short while ago that Harold's had a drop below the 20 big blind mark. He's now got 13 bigs. Yeah, and snap fold from Leonard. I've never seen Sam Grafton fold king nine suited. I mean, it's just he's he's got obviously got a sense for how Sammy's playing. I mean, it's not a not a great uh, continue anyway. But uh, no, as I said, he's going to play. I feel like Leonard. I mean, it's all these guys, but he's going to play this final table very, very well. Probably. Yeah. Um, very so. Well. IB, who is watching the PokerStars European Poker Tour on the PokerStars YouTube channel, asks, on which platform are the satellites played? I don't know. But I think you can work it out. PokerStars. I figured it out. PokerStars. PokerStars. Did I get it? Queen, ten of diamonds, under the gun. That's a fold. Ooh. It's rough. It's rough when you have to fold queen, ten. That's very rough. Yeah. And Sammy picking up some cards. The ace 10, good enough for an open. With Mad Dog lurking on his left. He doesn't give anyone a break. Wow, what we were. Aces for Mao. Dream stuff on a final table. No, I love a good flat from the big blind with aces, but this is never really a situation you can do, right? You need to start getting money in and Yes. Yes. I mean you're the covering stack, you're supposed to exert yeah. pressure anyway. That is the dynamic. And Sammy has to tread very carefully here. This feels like King King Six off, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, it really <laughs> It really does. You have an ace in hand. I mean Thing is, ace ten off. It's pretty hard to go to a flop. You don't really want. Well, he, and he, I thought he was pushing the chips forward. This mm -hmm. is a really delicate situation. Yeah, you, because this is a spot you get pressurized so much because of Harold stats. Thirteen big blind stack. This is the ICM pressure spot. This is the king three off. The queen five off. Some of the time, cut off to big blind. I mean, I think we just want a suited ace always here, rather than the ace 10 off. And he does give it up. And he's feel look at that. He's feeling very annoyed about it. He feels like he's getting beat on the very good and disciplined fold against a very strong opponent who is going to have bluffs and releases the ace 10 and avoids almost certain disaster. Chris Hansen asking on YouTube about TV shows. So last year, we filmed both EPT Monte Carlo and EPT Barcelona for TV. I can tell you that the Monte Carlo shows are currently airing on Fox Sports in the USA. They'll be coming to other TV networks around the world soon. And then Barcelona will make its way to TV screens, as will the PCA plus PSPC. We're going to be releasing them as DVDs as well. Don't do that anymore. Back in the early, early years, you could get... DVD box sets of EPT seasons. Wow. Was your, was, were, you, were you on the cover? No. Oh. It's about the players, Before Griffin, not about the commentators. He's got a face for radio. <laughs> <laughs> that too. Mike Watson, raise and take it. Look, what, what, what skincare routine does he have? It looks like he's been, you know, like a... In one of those, I don't know, uh, states would know it's an L.A. kind of thing. Been in a pressure tank each and every morning to doesn't look very different, does he? He oh. looks younger. <laughs> Watson with the tennis shoes. Got it, you got it. <laughs> a very educated kind of, audience in the EPT. We yeah, don't it's kind of, you know, but it's kind of my thing. I just, I started it, I think. Snowmen's. Nom, nom. 
Yeah, and, you know, there's stack sizes where this isn't too exciting, but I think versus the chip leader, the 10 big blinds, uh, eight, it is going to be go time here for the PLO player. Just a very strong holding, and we, we can see exactly sort of hands Mike is opening. Can't get called by too much worse, but you, you know, you end up flipping. Some of the time when you get called, puts it in, and you know, it's just a, a very valuable pickup. Uh, yeah. You know, almost half your stack out there. Really, really nice to to, to find a a wired pair. And has clawed himself out of what was almost the danger zone. Yeah, hovering around 15 big blinds <clears> right <throat> now. Mike Watson retains the chip lead with more than 80 bigs and still 53 minutes to run on this level. Yeah, and a nice, after that ace-queen, you know, averted disaster where he managed to find that big fold on the river. I think, mm -hmm. And I do think that is a pretty big fold versus someone who's capable of finding bluffs. You know, a nice run of cards, top pairs and the like for Mike Watson. Not putting any unnecessary money with other hands and stretch his lead back up to 81 big blinds. Really nice spot for you know, the mad dog. And the potential for which it could have changed the dynamic of the table if Leonard had 12 million to Mike Watson 7.8 with Leonard having position on him. Yes. That just changes everything about what happens afterwards. Absolutely, absolutely. But yeah, and I wonder if that even came into his thinking of, yeah. of you know, the chips won versus the chips lost. See, that is a factor in ICM. He, he, he does a sort of resigned face, like that. <sighs> okay, we'll go to another flop. Another and blind on blind and battle. And that's an interesting one. Yeah, there is something kind of. Yeah, and a lot of interaction here. Uh, Sammy with the second pair, good kicker. Obviously, checking here. Well, they're playing, you know, pretty deep, right? Uh, in the sense that there's SBR eight behind or what have you. Yeah. The board's going to change. So it doesn't want to put in too much money up front. Checks. And Mike Watson with a very good candidate to start betting. Just f able to fold out some better 3x, 5x, and that very nutty potential on an ace or a six. Even a heart in hand as well. And Sammy, of course, going to continue with the strong second pair. Bingo, bango, bongo. A straight force of Watts. Yeah, and this is delightful for Mike Watson. But unblocking everything you imagine, yeah. Mike Watson's going to be going pretty big, and I think that's going to give Bujmal a good opportunity to get away from it. Yeah, I mean, it's quite... If you go pot... It, or a bit below, it's still sort of, yeah, you can sort of set up a shove. Of course, hearts and spades. Yeah, I mean, come yeah, he could have ace five of, of hearts, ace five of spades. What's he gone? 600k. Yeah. Keeping his range together for when he just wants to bet a, a, a queen. And now the decision point for Sammy does let it go. Um, you know, and, and quick fold there. I guess it makes some sense. Basically, just because you have other hands that can improve more easily. You have all the uh, flush draw plus straight draw, mm -hmm. uh, pair plus flush draws, uh, pair plus straight draw. Yeah, you're pretty, pretty actually low in your value range because you called pot on the flop as well, right? There's not, there, there are some unpaired hands you're calling on the flop, but not that many, sure. right? So you still find yourself near the bottom of your range with a, with a big four. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of nice to be able to outdraw queen two and queen four. Um, like having to overcard to the queen I is nice, but <clears throat> yeah, I mean, n nice fold. Let's Good point, just yeah. play, Let's just play the results like he was drawing dead. Get the hell out <laughs> of there. Yeah, let's, let's go. Yeah, um, yeah and, and second time, by the way, Sammy's got away from a, a, a close spot in, in quick succession. It's not, by the way, it's not easy from a mental perspective playing the second fiddle. You know, you go through this tournament and to make the final table, a lot of time you're the, the 
big stack at your table, you're crushing people, you're running people over, you know, and, and all of us as poker players find it so much easier to, to be in the aggressive gear, pushing people around. It's not easy to be sort of uh, bashed about, you know, feel like you're being bashed around. Um, but yeah, I think that's a really good point, actually. Uh, James was mentioning yesterday, I think that Bujmala was one of the chip leaders uh, for much of this tournament, or at least in the top, you know, the yeah. very, very small percentage. So you kind of have this, like, table boss thing going on each and every day and then something shifts when you meet all the other table bosses <laughs> yes. and you know you might lose a big pot and you have to really adjust your thinking like okay like i'm not always going to be the top dog this is these things come in waves Changing and that gears. takes yeah it takes a you know it takes a lot to to do that especially when as the days goes on you get more tired and like <laughs> you know, stressful no, I, mean, I mean it's uh, it's unfathomable obviously it doesn't you know, there's only a few events in the world like an EPT that, that takes place over such a strong, long structure over so many days. It's, it's a real feat of endurance. Yeah, I was talking to some friends that were in town and don't know anything about poker, and they're like, so how long do these things take? I was like, like six days or like how many hours? What do you, sure. How much do they, they play? It's like these things, there is a marathon aspect that you have to realize they have just been poker, poker, poker for all of these days, and it's just it's exhausting and it's incredible and it's very challenging. Another pot for Mike Watson, closing in on the 90 big blind mark. Has more than 13 million now. Yeah, imagine someone like Sir Watson has been doing for 25, 30 years. Yeah. See, it, see him there back in the days with Jack Treetop, Treetop Strauss. <laughs> Doggy. Puggy Pearson. Yeah, of course. He's in some of those photos in the background. You know, he's a young lad then, don't get me wrong. <laughs> no. Young upper comer. Gary Turnbuckle. So action on Bujmala. Starts the hand with 25 bigs. Has pocket eights. Has the snowmans. Nom nom. Getting bougie with the pocket eights. Very sophisticated hand. Seven six in the bag for the table short stack who folds. Yeah, recognizing the strength of Sammy's range there, that would have been a perhaps a, a defend against Mike or someone, but feels like uh, Sammy not incentivized to open wide there under the gun. And for that reason, felt like he could fold the 7-6 off, off the short stack. So we could see was in terrible trouble. trouble. Folded to Mao on the button. Nine deuce off. He passes. Blind v. Blind. Yeah, and there's a lot out there with these big blind antis. And Harold stack with the ace jack off. Is he going to say the words all in? Well, it could also limp to induce a shove. He says the words all in and is presented with the red triangle of death. Bujmala, 9 3 off. Faults. There are our chip counts. Mike Watson, the big chip leader. Leonard Grozog Mao in second. And then a big drop off uh, to Sammy and Leo. Sammy just gone slightly ahead with those couple of pickups. But very closely matched. Once again, five nations represented. Very diverse final table. Really is the European Poker Tour.
we were saying at the table yesterday, actually, uh, how, you know, I, was, I, got, I got some terrible, my table broke, I got some terrible table draw opening into Ike, Devoris, and Makita. And we were on the bubble together just chit-chatting. But, you know, I think even amongst the guys who've achieved so much. You You're know, better? <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, yeah, I am, of course. But, no, uh, <laughs> I, we were saying if he managed to win Monte Carlo, I know we're, you know, a, a long way from that. But to win PCA and... EBT Monte Carlo Grand Final. It's pretty unbelievable, by the way. Yeah. Like, they're two of the, the tournaments, right? And that's not me just being like a poker stars hype man. I mean, it's not, you know, e e to win two EBTs would be absurd, but to win PCA and Grand Final, like, that's, that's crazy. I mean, yeah. you just have to look at the field size, right? Four figure field size here, four figure field size in PCA, over a thousand total entries. I mean, Pretty ridiculous, but the yeah, but the prestige. I mean, it's just the Monte Carlo, the, the crown jewel, and then PCA is just well, PCA, you know. Yeah, and he's got a. D uh, Except maybe the Christian Harder year. Just kidding. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, didn't didn't uh, Sawatz tweet trips so, for wow. Sawatz on the turn? Oh, no. Well, there you go. It's, it's, it seems like it's it's coming up the way. Sammy so gonna be <laughs> careful here still <laughs> with <laughs> Mad Dog. <laughs> Do it one more time. <laughs> Go to bed. Stretch us. Get some other. Squirrel. <laughs> um, so. And Watson betting 225. Yeah, and Sammy a little bit stuck here. There's going to be plenty of give ups. Uh, second pair. Beats all the bluffs. You know, a Jack Deuce might fart out here. A six, four might fart out here. Plenty of hands you have beat. So I'm going to need an eight on the river. Good card, too, for Bujmal, actually. Yes. Next to, wow. next to an eight, this is as good a card as he could see because it might. See, the trip's diminished by that river card. Now, the question for Mike is, can he get called by worse? We'll check and begrudgingly pick up a smaller pot than he would have liked. Of course, did get lucky on the turn himself with that with that seven. Yeah, it was only a six-figure pot. It really, uh, Bujmala didn't lose much, just two and a half bigs. Yeah. Pretty ideal. Mike Watson up to 90 big blinds after that hand. Yeah, and he, I mean, he's, by the way, I play, I mean, obviously I have to play with him quite a lot in the live arena. He's, he's, mate, he's, he's a killer these days. He's just, he don't care. He just puts it on people who are really very, very tough to play against. Got a skeptic on Twitch. Bear Totem says, I just don't see how these guys can logically decide what to do. Guess? Sure. You, you and me both, brother. <laughs> There's a little bit of guessing, I guess, I mean. Or even guessing at the guessing. Action on Harold Stat. Jack 10 off. Again, yeah, all these hands just become much closer on final tables. Just have to stay in line when you can't call off the hands you normally would. Really enjoying the people that are just tuning in or, or weren't listening to hear that he was Mad Dog that just heard us growling. <laughs> like, what's going on? <laughs> I don't really care. Yeah. Me neither. I don't care if people have context to the ridiculous stuff we no. do. It's part of being a cool club to get the jokes. <laughs> and here comes Mad Dog. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna limp in this time with 8-6. Leo Lease checks 10-4. 10-4, roger that, yeah. 10-5 <laughs> deuce, two diamonds. Yeah, nice flop for Leo. Obviously, kicker not so hot, but, you know, actually he got some straightening properties, a diamond, pretty pretty decent. Mike might consider betting hit. The object here is always just to sort of give yourself some flexibility on turns and potentially fold out. You know, if you can fold a jack six uh, or a, a, um, a queen six so that when you turn your pair that you don't sort of check down and be out kicked. It's kind of one of the goals of this bet. 
And now, when you turn the double straight draw, uh, you can fire again, potentially. But Leo, do you want to say it states? What's he done? Turns two pair. Yeah, big turn card for Leo. And we haven't Did I get it right? seen a big collision for a while. Watson also with the diamond. Could look to pressure a deuce X. Some ki Imagine we're just going to see some king nine high floats from Leo. King queen high. And Fars again. 500,000, 600,000. Yeah, and so what's going into a sort of polarized line? Repping, you know, the stronger parts of his range, a, a queen 10 plus type holding. And Leo has to decide what to do with the two pair. Can I get eyes on that bet? Yeah, yeah, ten four. We're looking at a six hundred thousand here on the turn. Over. Yeah, you didn't say over. Ten four over. <laughs> yeah, and Leo, a little surprised by this bet, just trying to keep his composure. Hold just gets it done now. Just pushes it in, takes Mike off his equity. Um, a hand like exactly like he has six eight six seven doesn't feel he's going to have enough visibility on a three a diamond an eight and the like what does visibility mean well it's just the ten four um your two pair is going to shrink on a lot of rivers yeah. right on a on a more clean board if, if he had ten eight and the turn was an eight there's a lot of Nice rivers where you can still feel you can value bet or call very comfortably with your two pair. There, a three, a six, a so diamond. Your visibility is what I would call susceptible. Yeah, you're, yes, exactly. Your, your two pair can be vulnerable. Like vulnerable, if the diamonds sure. weren't there, maybe he just calls again. and Or if one of the straight cards isn't there, maybe he just decides to call again. But with both, it's like... Of course. No, no, I understand sure the theory. I just wanted to make sure I understood yeah, the yeah, definition of the word. it for everyone to yeah. Cool. Like, yeah, exactly. Yes, uh, thank you. Sorry. You know, Mike's got some combination of overcards, flush draws, straight draws, etc. And also, when when Mike just has Ace Ten, you you win that. You you stack. You know, you, you you get the money in really good. Might also kill your action against Pocket Kings, let's say. Unlike he has Pocket Kings, but you know what I mean. Um, so I don't mind Leo's shove there. Not necessarily uh, what I would have done, but but makes some sense to just on such a dynamic texture. And, and of course, we see, very frustrating, took Mike off a very nutty draw with the 8-6. So, guys, I know I've been workshopping for years about what to call the three of us together. The mm -hmm. tripod, all these things, didn't really work out. But I got one here on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Someone said, love the howling and barking of the Grafton Benger, Stapes, Hardigan, Wolf's Pack. <laughs> the Wolf Pack. I don't mind the Wolf Pack. Isn't that from uh, The Hangover, though? Uh, <laughs> little, little don't ruin it, man. <laughs> it's a little outdated. You know? I'm, Z I'm Galifianakis, aren't I? It might be back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like that could, that could get a resurgence, that movie, in 20 years. Yeah, I mean, you know, you know what Stapes is like. Probably plays a home game with half the cast of any movie that we have at the time. No, it's like hey, anything like that. I feel he's always like, yeah, I was out with Brad the other night. Actually, you know, like this is what he always likes to drop into the broadcast. You know, I don't think I have any major connections. I have had a beer with Zach Galifianakis once. That's yeah, the best I can do. That's a do that's a bit nice. That's pretty strong. <laughs> it's, like, it's like the one name you mentioned. I've had a beer with him. I mean, like we've all had beers with Galifianakis, right? But he kind of took your spot. I feel like if he if he didn't exist, you, that could have been you. By the way, he, it, that, he predates me by about ten years. But I I see your point. Yeah, yeah. There's only one room room for one Hasut funny man, you know, in the in the industry. It's, it's brutal representation. Underrepresented. Uh, underrepresented. He, he, the beer I had with him was actually um, one of the few moments in my life where I was like, hey man, you want to have a beer? And he was like, sure. And then I had no idea what to say to him, and it was crazy <laughs> awkward. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. We just kind of both stood there, and then eventually he just walked away. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> and I found out later he was going to offer me the role that Bradley Cooper took in The Hangover. All right, Mala. And, yeah, maybe it's time for the, uh, the Mala Power Hour. Yeah, coming Raising in. small to big. Yeah, and... It's kind of polarized here because he's going to have jams and he's when he comes in for a race he's going to have kind of trash or really good hands looking to induce so i think with the ace it might be that we want to just 
rip it in. I'm sure how experienced Harold Stat is on these kind of finals. Definitely have a lot less experience than a few of the guys, one would imagine, with the, with the PLO background, as I understand it anyway. And it's not fun, by the way, to just pile it in here, knowing that some of the time you're going to get snapped by a superior ace or, or queens. But I think just the lack of playability of ace four, you can see it's a real decision. Win. Yeah, very nice. And I, I think... Way I think to go. Yeah, really... Yeah, you know. More like the Mala shower and, hour. And it, and it may just be that I'm underestimating how much uh, experience the, the Norwegian has at oh, tournament yeah. poker. But also, you know, you just take these great card players, you know, people that play PLO to super high stakes, and, and they work through the puzzle very quickly, you know. They've got that card sense and can see, okay, do, do I want to take a flop in position? Do I, do I dominate anything? Am I going to be able to realize my equity? No, I just want to use the blocker here and now. Power over the top. And, yeah, if I run into queens, I got 30%. So what? Nick Walsh TV in chat asks, how long are clocks now in this room? Uh, 14 inches? Thank you for your question. Nick Walsh TV being put in his place by the commentators. Wow. <laughs> Mal up with ace just, five now. Just showing we're equal opportunities when it comes to snarky responses. You got you to gotta be, you got to word your question very specifically. I mean, I assume he was doing that to set me up. I wouldn't give him that much credit. <laughs> Harold's dead with queen 10 now in the small blind. Mm. Yeah, not much gone Leonard's way for a little bit. Been a little card dead since he had the aces. But he sort of maintained his stack. Sammy just trying to remain cognizant of where he stands in the pecking order. How short is... How are we saying it? Joachim? I trust Joaquin. 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 It's much better. Of course, it's Joaquin. Joaquin, the Phoenix Herald's dad. Yes. Uh, Joaquin in the uh, in the small blind. Whether he's super short or, or similar, that's going to affect the defending range a little. And also might affect your perception of what the raise exactly. you know, range is on the button. Good. Yeah, exactly. Joaquin will be on the button in this hand. Mike Watson in the big blind. It's kind of like, looks like the, we're entering a Tron remix, remake with this background here. Get used, we've kind of got used to this amazing set after a year of it, but it's still quite stunning. And once again, Sammy blind on blind with the Mad Dog. <laughs> Holds the bond, gives him the walk with the bond. Yeah, and Ace King suited for Watson. Wow. I think with a suited hand, we've got to put in the. Actually, also a 100, 150k. That's very tight, by the way. I, maybe maybe Sir Watts gave off something. Should we tell him? Does he need to put on a scarf? Yeah, I think you just got to flick in the 50, hope to get a flop there. But yeah. if you think that Watson's just raising like so much of his range, but maybe you're just burning chips. But I mean, getting. Just call. Chip, yeah. Limp call. Let's go. Yeah. I've got the bond. Sure. Oh, James Harding would never fold. You can make a straight flush versus the nut flush in a full house. There you go. Yeah. Very powerful. Absolutely. And you're in Monte Carlo, bro. <laughs> yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. Maybe the, maybe the TD's going to have to intervene again. I'm yeah, sorry. yeah, yeah, yeah. You We're actually going to be great, taking a short break products. here as the TD <laughs> yeah. explains the Monte Carlo rules of the bond hand. Yeah. James Hardigan's just flipping out right now. He folded what? I take one level, half level off. Mike Watson, Queen Jack in the small. Yeah, and from out position into Leo, going to decide. And going to come in for a raise. Force Leo to defend some dominated combos. And exactly a hand like this just becomes a little more cuspy versus the, the open. Obviously, it's just such a lovely check uh, behind when Watson limps. And you see forcing out two live cards using wielding your stack to your advantage. You know, obviously, this is what poker's about. It's sort of fight for equity uh, and forcing your opponent to fold and relinquish all their equity in the pot. Just such a great outcome each and every time. And worth mentioning... 
you know, the chip stacks of the bottom three really <coughs> getting a little more bunched up. Leo Lease leading them with 26 blinds. Bujmala with 21, and, and Harold's that now all the way up to 17. So nothing is nothing is gi given, nothing is guaranteed here for any of these these three. Any one of them could finish in sixth. Fifth, pardon me. Mike Watson back in action. Mala in the big blind. 65. Yeah, and I, I mentioned this about uh, the 100K final table when Makita had the big chip lead. When you are in the driving seat at a final table, it's very demanding. I mean, you're, you're essentially playing, you know, 60% of the hands, yeah. you know, through one form or another. It's folding round to you so often. You're incentivized to open so much. Very, very demanding. Ace, queen, jack is a straight draw for Watson. Double gata. And, and a diamond, just a board that's very, you know, I think everyone knows, very good for the pre-flop razor with the three Broadway. I like this double gutter. It's such a weird one, you know? Yeah, yeah, the 10-8 yeah. on ace-queen jack. Yeah. <laughs> the nine's so juicy. <laughs> you guys are adorable. <laughs> Put a black nine out there. We, like, we oh. often, this, this is what we sit around on breaks. Oh. Griff will just turn to me and be like, what's your favorite de double gutter? <laughs> I, I like 8 6 or 5 four, I like six. it better yeah. just to text out of the blue. <laughs> you haven't seen each other for two and a half months. He's yeah. like, hey man, what's your favorite double guy? <laughs> oh dear. Would you rather a flop a set or river a flush draw? <laughs> yeah, and, and, and that just that, that illustrating the, the distance. Mike, big gap to Leonard. Leonard, big gap to Leo. <laughs> Someone says in chat, get your mind out of the double gutter. <laughs> That's strong. Yeah, That's right. comment of the day for me. Someone else saying, Watson going insane. And though I, the choice of words is off, Watson is back in action here, 8 6 suited. Yeah, and Leonard's let Mike have it his way for a while. You can see he's maybe a little bit of, maybe it's feel like it's time, by the way. Yeah, it's look at that. that he's done it. Look, by the way, that. it's a new grozzle, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> that was he's the... keeping his cool. He's keeping his calm. That was a couple seconds of yeah, just like, he's... well, wait a second. <laughs> you can't wait, why? A... I just started realizing you're winning every hand. Yeah. I'm going to let you have this one, but I've got my eye on you. Oh, there he is. Very nice from that. He's a, he's a, it's a... Yeah. Okay. Don't worry about me. <laughs> I've never had it. Come back up. Oh, that sounded like a dog that maybe ate some chocolate. <laughs> oh, no. All right, he's let one go. He knew. He, know, he senses Grozo needs to win It's enough of the out. bit. <laughs> senses Grozo senses needs to win out. Come on, come on, Lennon. There we go. We got a king. That's all we need. That's all we need. A blocker. We got a king and a corduroy shirt, and we're ready to to come in for a race. Now, yeah, and this is exactly you see exactly the, the sort of final table principles. You have the jack ten suited, exact same spot. That that uh, powerful suited hand folds out better. You just pile it in here with the blocker comes in for an open. It's not going to work out. One wouldn't imagine for the maybe, for maybe the fourth or fifth time the snowman. Nom nom, nom nom. Your snowman sound in distress. Yeah, and this proves blockers aren't real because he has an eight in his hand, <laughs> and yet somehow. <laughs> going for the half stack in case there's two all ins. And half stack, good enough. Half yeah. price. Bujmala now the lowest stack. Harold Stad just narrowly jumping ahead of Bujmala. 19 big blinds against 18 big blinds. Yeah, and, and of course, you know, it's, it's they're undoubtedly the short stack and a big, big gap. But you can see that they can hurt Leonard if they were to double through him. Uh, would sort of flip flop. It, you know, if either of them doubled through. Grozzle, they would actually go up to second in chip. So, yeah. you know, you want to keep active. You want to keep opening, pushing a lot of money out there each and every hand. But you got to tread carefully at the same time. Uh, 
And a spot that quite deliberately Grozog has uh, avoided opening into the chip leader, but King Queen strong enough. Hey, Mikey, you got to take a peek. Now, w what's the um, logic behind sizing up to 1.5x here? Yeah, just you don't want to play with Mike. With Mike Watson, yeah. Yeah, you want to just give him a worse. You know, he gets to realize more equity. And that's why it's called the very unpromising 9-7 off. Yeah. Ooh. Sign of the beast. <laughs> so a question here on Twitch. This is one of the longer final tables. No, I think this is the same... Sizes the, the tables, right? We have we this is a normal. Yeah, because we we brought it. They yeah, ship we brought it. They we ship, ship it here. Out. These are ones we yeah. These are ones we often use. So no longer than usual. But if I you, will look into that for you. If you carry on doing this job, your your personality will just be like <laughs> stapes. I was going to say stapes plus stapes, stapes <laughs> point, but it, it's not. It's more stapes <laughs> zero point, stapes beta. Yeah. <laughs> I get called it's, beta all the time. <laughs> It's weird because the more I become like him, I feel like he likes me less. So I don't know if it's because that, that, it's like a that, know, there's self only, There's thing. basically only two paths that you can take. You must choose wisely. It's like, you know, you, you, you're at a fork in the road. Either okay. you become Hartigan or you become Stapes. That's right. There's only two destinies. You either die a hero choose. or you... <laughs> yeah, to become the villain. Yeah. yeah maybe you become Maria Hope. I just would love in that. LA living I would, I, would, I have, I have it, 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 fantasized about what Rio Rio is, is, is the giga commentator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Eating bringing giga. you smoothies and, and delicate pastries each morning. Yeah. Waking up with perfect hair and just living living the life. Incredible. Oh, Maria, you, tell, you tell us the schedule you want to have. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You just let us know when you oh. want us to run the tournament. <laughs> <laughs> Mikey with 6-5, Leo with king 8. Yeah, and again, not fun for Leo. He's no, taking his medicine, staying out of trouble, but king high. Can we do a cute little three bet? Can we just defend in position? Are going to be dominating some combinations. Get cute, Leo. I think we have to continue somehow, probably doesn't. Just, just folding, and yeah. It's Happy birthday, Mike Watson. Well, the problem is you're, you're no, it's I mean, you you're third in chips now. Yeah, it's yeah. tough. Look, I mean, you lose two blinds there. Maybe it comes jack eight, three, and you call a bet. It's just like yeah, of course, of you, course. you do have those that chip yeah, edge right now. Don't, and don't get me wrong. If Leo had had king nine, we wouldn't even be talking. About, he would just king, call king eight yeah. suited. Of course, he's yeah, in that. So I understand king eight. Not it's not exciting. But I think I probably still would call, but I understand why he folded. Yeah, of course, of course. Just just trying to keep his nose clean, stay out the way of a chip leader and a very very talented one at that. Well, Joaquin knows I'm commentating. You can't fold, Joaquin. <laughs> no, he'll limp or no. Oh, no, gosh. I mean it's. it's uh, I think that he would normally play the hand, but. Wanted to insult you specifically. <laughs> yeah, that seemed that seemed kind of pointed. I got to be honest. Oh, so it was the cutoff. It wasn't the button. No, it wasn't the button. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, 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 it's understandable. It's not supposed to be put too much. Why does it have nine, to be that? It might make it a nine. I'm not sure. Okay. Just in case it wasn't clear. No grafting for you. And Joaquim does drop back to the technically the bottom of yeah, the bottom, but and more or less tied with Bourgeois. You know, and Mike Watson at one point I think he was on sixty bigs level with Leonard, chipped up to ninety six big blinds. Uh, obviously, some favorable distribution, making making some top pairs uh, and such like, but played very very well. And again, some nice blockers to just come in for an open. Feels like you know, Leo's going to play honest on the button, and, and the, having a queen and jack helps with that. Yeah, and there you go. It's uh, frightening to think of, you know, the experience. And also, let's let's be honest here, Griff. You know, mm -hmm. from uh, Mike's maybe even the generation before us, but 
you know, there's a lot of players fallen by the wayside from, you know, the, the years where we were in the streets battling or whatever. Mike's really, you know, uh, rebooting his game would be to almost do, do him a disservice. But, you know, was a top, top player 10 years ago, right? Mm -hmm. A legend already then, Agon and Crusher. And, and, you know, as the game's changed a lot and developed a lot, and, then, and he's kept up with that. Yeah. It's quite, it's quite hard to do. And a good Canadian boy. And I found out from Newfoundland, actually. I thought he was just from Toronto. It turns out he was born in New St. Newfoundland. Newfoundland. Yeah. Newfoundland. No, we call it Newfoundland, yeah. Uh, no, I know, I know. Uh, yeah, yeah. I know. I just, <laughs> yeah. Just doing how English people might want to say yeah. it. Yeah, and, and those are the nicest Canadians, too. I, my, actually, my brother-in-law is from Newfoundland. Yeah, and, and we're keen with a, a suited ace where we take a lot of our rejabs. But Leo been very, very snug. This is a bit trouble, but... I mean, the thing is, is you might even get Leo to follow. This is yeah. a potential clash, really. I could see Leo folding to a shove here as well. I could also see Joaquim just folding to yeah. the open. Yeah, I think, you know, of course, if this was Leonard on the button, I think we would be going all oh, in yeah. here with the A7 suited. Much closer spot versus Leo. And I think Leo's certainly not hoping for a jam either, despite the, the, the comprehensive... Uh, equity advantage he has with the ace jack I still think Leo might call, but it's... Yeah. He, I don't think he would call ace-10, so we'll, we'll it's like... Minute. And he's gone for the three-bet here. He's going for a three-bet... It's for effective stack, oh, he's yeah. effective. Oh, he's effectively shoved. And real close spot here for Leo on the cutoff with the ace jack off. What was the plan, Leo, when you thought, what if he shoves? Very tough, really tough. rough. Obviously, there are those ace king and ace queen combos, kings and queens. Ah, oh, and he's nice. and he's and that's, he's recognised the strength of the ace jack versus the small blind, and he'll find himself way ahead. Haraldstad has made the call. Domination situation. Haraldstad behind and at risk. Yeah, and Leo's done his job here. He's got it in for a big pot way ahead. 5.5 million in the pot. And a ladder for everyone. Sammy, of course, an interested spectator. Very nice to see Leo with, I hope, his girlfriend. That is Perhaps Holly. <laughs> Someone else's girlfriend, potentially. We like to use names when we can. Holly and Leo on the oh, rail. they're cute. Leo very much enjoying the ride, which is fitting for a guy who came here in a van. King, 10, 4, two spades. That's a good flop. Wow. Can he fades the spades? Doesn't seem that bothered. Yeah, and look at the equities. 47% to 49%. Spade on the turn. And that will do it. That is a... Double up yeah. for Joaquim Haraldstad. A very, very rough outcome for the young Englishman. Takes it in his stride. Class huh? act. Takes it well. Oh, uh, that's why he's making reckless plays. He's taking advice from Kai and Mark. Yeah, no yeah, yeah. Windmilling it in there. Oh, it like, all checks out. Yeah, Kai's like, well, what can you do? Five, right? Oh, oh. six, yeah. So I couldn't see the one behind here. We'll get... Leo seems... Just fine, despite the fact that he is left with only six blinds. Yeah, he's still in there and fighting. I mean, one double up. There's a lot of yeah. chips out there. Uh, Sammy's got 15. He can double up. You know, uh, that, that's something you've got to do first. But, you know, he, he, he's, he won't be waving the white flag yet. Big, and we should say, big pot for Joaquim, up to 36 big blinds. There you see the change in the pecking order. No ladder um, for Sammy and Lise. The, ver the very much the short stack. Wow. <laughs> Sorry. Bujmala back in time. Or was he? Looks like no. Oh no, I see the cards there. He's got his hand on. He's in. Ace, deuce. Yeah, one of the things about the big blind ante is you have to put in an ante, uh, you have to put in one big blind dead. Hello. So you actually want to shove a tiny bit wider than normal under the gun. So ace, deuce, going to make Seems fine, right? the grade. Yeah. yeah, for sure. 
two and a half out there. And... Oh, no. Oh. We'd I'd love to see him get this through. It does get through. Yeah, and oh, fun, interesting. Mike, of course, also not incentivized to necessarily mm. make the toughest calls. You know, having a short uh, stack around yeah. when you're the chip leader, not so bad. Makes sure everyone stays in their place. And that's rude. That's an that's angling. <laughs> <laughs> and Leo, yeah, I mean, forced to immediately relinquish two of the big blinds that he just made. But yeah, he just bought himself was, around. Yeah. Smile at Bujmala. You know, for former Patrick. players that all seem pretty well skilled and pretty well versed in how to navigate this final table, they're smiling. They seem a little bit human. Of course. Thank I you. like it. Well, don't push it. Okay, smiling. <laughs> Almost human. Their smile programs <laughs> have been updated. Smile increased 23%. <laughs> Dead. Big slick energy. Yeah, and he's just aware that he's covered by Mike Watson. It's going to be a lot of cuspy decisions here. Pull in. And just rips it. Doesn't want to get put to the test mm -hmm. by Mike Watson. Just <sighs> utilizing. Oh, oh, thank God. <laughs> I mean, you don't want to be all in against Queen 3 Shooter. Not that I think Mike would have. No, but you're just absolutely exhaling when Mike folds, right? I mean. Sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually, I, I was on the 50K final in, uh, well, in Prague. When we came back, I was second. I was chip leader coming back in the money, seven of us. And I lost one. Oh, Seiji knocked out someone. Maybe. He, anyway, Seiji won a pot, and he was chip leader. I was second in chips. I opened Ace King, and he threw back me. So I just shoved 75 big blinds with Ace King off. Yeah, he had aces. I remember I was that. Just eliminated for the tournament. I was like, I was like, back to bed. You he know, was like, even asking <laughs> me for advice after that. Yeah, yeah, like, what do you spinning. think about this? I was like, you know, when they just go, <laughs> you're like, I'm all in, and you just know you're not getting called, and they're just like, yeah. They look at their cards. They're like, yeah, I'll be calling that. I'll be like, well, hold on, no, 70, no, no. 75 bigs I've put in here. <laughs> like, what, what do you mean? You're definitely a, a very blockers. Blockers aren't real day for me. Yes. Uh, I'll just know it's really, really bad when when my phone rings and it's Sam. <laughs> I'll be like, oh, my God, what happened? <laughs> Staves, can you just talk me through this? <laughs> EPT Monte Carlo final table. Good for you saying table. I know you like to just say final. Ah, <laughs> it's Jack for Bujbala. Ooh, like, I guess everything, right? No. But no, you just min fold. Yeah, just raise, just raise, just play very, very tight, and come in for a raise. This, this, I mean, you only get caught by better, I think. One million. Bujmal is an and anagram this, for you, mob, ace, jack. I see. Yeah, he's going half stack. Well, fair enough. Fair enough. I guess you are sort of the cut off. In that. that ah, I guess it was cut one. it off. <laughs> Bushmala gets the half stack semi all in through. The demi shove. Silo Simon Sensation asking me about that anagram. He says, What about the L's tapes? Guess what? You can take the L. You You're banned. banned. King 10 suited, looking very delightful. And let's hope Leo finds a hand here. Come on, five queens. Oh! That is wow, indeed days. a hand. Let's go. No fold equity. No fold equity means uh, quintuple up. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's run it. And maybe a small amount of posturing from Wookiee, one would imagine. Kind of incentivized to let Sawats take care of Leo. Oh! 
what and in the world? This is a great spot for Leo. Uh, Sammy, Jack's going to just be too strong. One would imagine. Let's, so what's going to be opening a lot wider than King Ten suited, and he'll reshove over the top. And it's best case scenario for Leo Worthington Lee's. Best case scenario. Gets the Almost other hands out. A little bit of pre-celebration, oh, much better even than well. just being up against <laughs> the King Ten. My girlfriend's also a, a jump up and downer. It's very cute. Okay, have one of his mm. as well, yeah. yeah. Just explaining the situation, and, and let's hope, having got so unlucky, the hand before that the Queen's holds up. See, fans of Sammy will be hoping for a jack. Leo got it in good before. It did not work out. Hopefully, it holds this time. 886 two spades. Spades are not an unwelcome sight this time around. But also won't matter if the jack comes with that paired board. That's a scary thing. That is scary indeed. Has to fade two cards to survive. Has to fade the river. These two are a vibe. And Queen's fault. luckily, <laughs> the river set was for Leo Lease. Yeah, and I'm pleased to see Leo double up and then some, but got a feel for Bujmala. Wasn't going to get involved there without a very, very strong holding. Jack's more than good enough. Let's remember against Did you play that? Kiss Cam. Kiss for luck. My gosh. My gosh. Cute. Very cute. This is, this is the world of... <laughs> this is the, the thing people don't know about poker. We're all just delightful humans. Yes. With cute girlfriends. <laughs> it's just the way, way it is. It's just a flock of <sighs> loving, sensitive men. And Leo Lease, by the way, uh, up to 18 big blinds. Almost flip-flopping. A new lease Sammy. on life. <laughs> oh, yeah, indeed. A worthing to lease on life. And, yeah. Yeah, it, not, not exactly frustration, but it's a very unfortunate situation for Bujmala, who's, who's ducked and dived, opening into the Mad Dog as chip leader. And, uh, yeah, just really unlucky to just run into tip top of range. Tip top, is that a plug for the pizza place at the top of the hill? Uh, it's called Tip Top Pizza? Yeah. The pl places in Monte Carlo don't need me plugging them. I mean, no, none of our viewers <laughs> can afford to eat that, I'm pretty certain. <laughs> none of the commentators it's, can either. Some, some, of high, some of the high it's rollers can. <laughs> Nothing doing for yeah, Sammy on the button. Yeah, and so what's five deuce off? This could be an any two spot, potentially. I don't know. Maybe he just comes in for a raise and feels Leo will play honest versus that. But certainly, yeah. Oof, beautiful. Very similar to the spot we saw Waki take yeah. the final job. Yeah, he knows what's up. <laughs> the ace very powerful against the polarized open. Girlfriend, I still cam and cheer. Less. Lacked better name asks, how much is food there? <laughs> you know, I don't want to say Monica's expensive, but a filet fish is market price. <laughs> I feel, Steve's going to feel stupid. It's one of the no, because, like, you know how fish, it's, it's like a, I don't know, it's like lobster. It's like when you go to a restaurant, they don't have the number list on yeah, the menu. So it just expensive. says market so price. So the filet of fish is at McDonald's, saying the filet of fish is market wow. price. I, I don't that know. one's not my fault. That's a good one. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure it's and good. I've just never way, been to a restaurant that doesn't have the price. By the way, if you, have to explain, <laughs> if you have to explain the joke, that means it's like a really good joke. It's one right? of the best it's jokes. The rules. Yeah. yeah. That's the rules. If, not, so if, if you make a joke and no one laughs, that's when you really know you're funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the other side of comedy. Like Look, at just... breakfast, they serve three types of eggs. Fried, scrambled, and Fabergé. Okay, yeah, that's... That's, uh... good. that's good. That's good. Yeah. Should I, do you want me, should I do some more? Yeah, yeah, Give us two more. You're the, the biggest threat to national security here. A coupon to tot. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll allow it. <laughs> okay, one more. Last one. Uh, are you reading from the chat or are you written? The no, chat? no. I was, you don't know this is my bit for like years now? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. 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 He like has a I'm whole folder to, full. I don't have a folder. I just I, it's not a folder. It's, you know. <laughs> I think I, clo I think I closed my file because I okay, published okay. my last one today. We got real, too much real pressure. We got time. Happening. We got time. We got poker. We got a six suited being folded because Pujmala affected the shoves. But the, all the jokes rely on on knowing fancy stuff, so that's why it's going on. Oh, my head a little bit. oh mm. that, is like that a, why? Because no, you're just so down to earth. It's insane. No, as you <laughs> in Monaco, you have to know what a like, Fabergé egg is, which I did by the way. Oh, you did. Okay, but only because but it's in a, bond, one, isn't it yeah. in a Bond film. That one yeah. of Fabergé. Uh, is there a Fabergé? <laughs> that must have been it. Yeah. Yeah. The fountain outside the hotel is full of bitcoins. <laughs> yeah, I like it. Okay. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, I like that one a lot, actually. I actually checked after you told me that joke the other day. Have you got any left? Huh? Rattling around. That's still got very a, personal. <laughs> <laughs> Just trading them off at the bottom Stop. to buy into Irish Open. All right. <laughs> We're back. We're back. <laughs> it's London. We got the Toby Lewis. I had to defend my title, We're Sam. in a small blind. <laughs> We, we cover this guy. We cover this guy. He's got 34 big blinds. We got 57. We could go either way. Maybe, maybe it's he's deep enough now that we want to actually just play smaller pots. If he's got 20, we just put it in his eye. If he's got 34, we're we're kind of happy to to keep things tranquilo. These guys just not incentivized to bloat the pot against each other. Queen. For Trey, two clubs and a wheel draw for Heldstad. Yeah. I just realized, do you always say Trey? Or just... Almost always, Almost yeah. always, yeah. It was one of the first things that um, the poker world corrected me on when I first got mm. into the industry. Yeah. Stop saying twos and threes. It's deuces and trays. Okay. Well, they were telling you to say it the way you're saying it now. Yeah. They wanted you to say it with Trey. Yeah. I'm talking old school gamblers, though. Okay. These guys, Sam, These was, like, guys, I mean, those Sam guys, was still in high school when I started doing this. Flush on the turn. I mean, those guys are still looking at hold cards. They're part of the, the, the hold card generation. No, no, they're still hold cards. Oh, okay, the cards good. you're holding. Uh, straight flush draw, too. Street flash potential. Wow. Dun, 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 dun. And Harold's dad drunk dead. Yeah, interesting. Leonard. Checking it over. It's gonna go for a street of value. Oh my gosh. What's the river? What's the wow. river, uh, Joe? And the deuce, that is the wheel. Mal dead. couldn't know it, but that is the best river card he could have seen. And obviously on check, check, this 10 high flush. Not that it wasn't powerful already, but very, very strong now. What sizing do you think? Has he gone? Has does he managed to find a check? No. Does, no. What sizing doesn't get raised here? This this one. Yeah. Wow, it doesn't get raised. Okay. Well, yeah, it goes for something. The yeah, and that's, as I said, is significant um, in lots of ways. Really pushes Joaquin back down. And, you know, they, he was getting up towards challenging for that second in, chips. in chips position they but now pushed chips. forced back, back down to 26 yeah. big blinds thank you yeah and that's great <clears> value <throat> there i mean that was 1.25x pot on the river yeah. that's great yeah and ha you know it's the reason that sometimes you need to check uh, some strong hands right mm -hmm. that gave him an opportunity to make to make something yeah make that, something of his life that sends mawa Closer to Mike Watson with 67 bigs. Haraldstad took a hit there, but still is third in chips with 26 big blinds. Pocket queens for Mike Watson. Ace 10 for Lease. So I think this is a good reminder that Mike Watson, and for those who've been watching every day, I think it was two days ago, was all in for his tournament life. Queens to ace king, and the board came. Ace, turn king, river queen. And here he is. And it's just a reminder of how... Crazy variances. Leonard just not wanting a 10 in hand wow. for a three bet bluff. Not strong enough to flat. Doesn't want to jam. Just gets out of there. No, you just see the upside to sort of playing in line, um, avoiding 
a potential misstep where others might have made it. Uh, it's so hard to do to just be like the all-in guy, and then all of a sudden you get another big ace. You're like, yeah. not, not well, this no. time. Not this time, yeah. Great look-alike on Twitch from Sysimic. Least looks like the guy from Umbrella Academy. If you know, you know. Remember, all lookalikes cannot be poker related. It's the only rule. There's no other poker players. I'm not allowed to say this guy looks like Richard Trick. Exactly. Yeah. That, one's come, up. that one's come up a lot, actually. I won't. <laughs> Action's folded around to Bujmala in the small blind, King Five. Yeah, and Sammy just got a little card dead since the mishap with Holy. Pocket Jackson. We'll use the King to just try and pick up the blinds. And does. We can cheer too. Yeah, it's nice to see for him. Just a few minutes left on this level before we take our second break of the day. Started with six players today, have only lost one. Next elimination, good for 235,000 euros. Yeah, big bucks. And, you know, again, it's, it's, it's different to when we see super high rollers. Just a lot of buy-ins. To win 40-odd buy-ins is, in a tournament, it's not easy to do. Queen, 10 of diamonds under the gun from Mawa. King, queen for Bujmala. Yeah, and that may well be good enough. 12 yeah. big blinds. Seems fairly... Obvious. Yeah, I think you're going to be, you know, probably slightly ahead of the range of the open actually here. Yeah, five-handed. Of course, you'd, you'd rather have some suited properties, but you will go for it as short as stack. Frustrating for Mauer. Oh, my goodness. Ace, queen for Elise. Yeah, and, and by the way, he's only putting a million... Of his stack. So one problem for Leo is if he shoves and were to be called by Leonard, he would be, his friend uh, um, Sammy would be able to get away with it. But instead, Leo is going to get it in very, very good. Leo gets it in good for the third time. Yeah, and, and you know, as much as I love to see a young Brit do well, do feel a bit here for Sammy. Jax and King Queen obviously reshoving on Queen 10. And then an opponent working up with a superior hand in the big blind. Maybe a little chop here. So I had to move for some. Look at that. Real desire on, on the face of Sammy. And it does come queen high. Doesn't change much. Domination situation. There is Do a diamond, right? Domination there holding. Is a diamond. Backdoor diamonds. Would be a most unwelcome sight for the happy couple on the rail. Nine of hearts on the turn. Yeah, obviously, ace queen looking very, very strong. Will we go to four handed? And a deuce on the river. There's no help for Bujmala. Yeah, he can be very, very proud of how he's performed. I don't think anyone would have played. The jacks or the king queen differently really fought hard. Yeah, look at that. It's lovely to see. Sometimes oh, that's just how the cookie crumbles. Sammy Bujmala. Yeah, he looks a bit shocked. Yeah, 29 years old, out of Marseille, France. Love that. Beautiful. He manages to ladder up at least one spot today, securing himself around another. Hundred thousand. Well, a little bit less than that. Anyway, <laughs> um, yeah. And the th the thing about these bust outs is, you know, you come up, come in today with sixth place money locked in. It's going to feel a bit dis despondent. It's going to feel a bit hard done by by the way the cards came out. But I promise you, a week or two from now, he's going to realise he's made a huge EPT final table, a big score. And he'll be feeling a lot more positive about that result. I'm certain of it. So it looks like we're squeezing in another hand here. <laughs> I'll just wait. Yeah, and the break. no extreme short stack now. 
Uh, Leo, 33 big blinds here. Joaquin, the shortest. And we are going to play one last hand. Man, no, uh, no victory lap. No funeral for Bujmal. A pair of eights on this flop for Lise. And that will be the last hand of the level. So it took us two levels to lose two players. Three hours of play before getting down to the final four. And those final four chip stacks match up, as you can see here. The new short stack, Joachim Haraldstad, 19 big blinds, 27 for Leo Lees, who's got a new Lees on life after doubling up and surviving a bad beat last level. Mao in second, Mike Watson still leading. More from EPT Monte Carlo in 19 minutes. Nine seven for Castelluccio. He folds from under the gun. Ace King for Mosin Chirania. Mosin should most deaf raise here. And he does raise to 250,000. Fold it around to Mike Dietrich. The table short stack. He has ace nine of clubs. You hate it, but with his stack, you gotta shove this. Colin. He does. He's definitely gonna get a call, and he's definitely dominated. Cards go on their back. I said. Well, Good luck, Mike. Yeah, you too, bud. Mike Dietrich will be looking for a nine or some clubs. Both would be preferable, and also no king. Otherwise, he will exit this tournament in sixth place. Nice of Clayton Mostyn to stick around and rail his buddy. 10-7-5 flop with no clubs. Not the sweat he was hoping for. Now he's just looking for a nine or running straight cards. And eight on the turn. We got a gutter ball sweat. Any jack, any nine, any six. The river is a brick for Dietrich. He goes out in six. Good, sir, Joe. Yeah, man. Good luck. Good luck. Yeah. Thanks, nice brother. Play well. Yeah. Good play with you, Bernard. Okay. Yeah. Take care. Yeah, good luck. Good game. Isn't it bad enough that Americans sneak into Canada to steal all their jobs and now they're knocking them out of poker tournaments? Think about some international diplomacy, would you, Mosin? Line still 60 and 120,000. And folded to Sergio Castelluccio on the button. He has pocket sevens and he raises. <clears throat> Kings for most in Chirania. Definitely a spot for a three bizzle. Play the pot out of position without the betting lead, and you're pretty likely to get action from the button who either has a hand or maybe doesn't want to give you the credit for having one. Here comes the re raise. 570,000 total. And for Sergio, I think just calling here is the only play. Lucille has folded the big blind. It's back on Sergio. Unless you got some kind of soul read fold in you, four betting would be very bad with two sevens. Look at that, a chip castle. A castle Lucio. Don't give up the day job. Oh, I forgot this is your day job. Whoops. Castle Lucio calls. Perfectly fine hand to see a flop in position. And that flop is low. Castelluccio could get in trouble here with an overpair to the board. Very dangerous board for him. Easy C-bet for Mosin. And that bet is 420,000. Sergio's probably pretty happy to call a bet here, but I think that happiness ain't gonna last long. There's the call. String call. That is unless a seven hits, in which case, yeah, happy again. What's well, a nine? Still brutally, this card doesn't look too scary for a couple of sevens. Mosin should have no problem continuing to hammer away. More than two million in the pot. And Mosin's bet on the turn is 720,000. He's got Faraz Jaka, Chris Mormon, Luca Pagano, watching two streets of value so far. These bets are starting to get awfully big. Sergio calls again here. It's going to be very hard for him to station the river. Unless, of course, the seven comes again. And he will happily get it all in on the river. 
Well, Castelluccio has called a second time. Now nearly 3.6 million in the pot with one card to come. It's not a seven, but it is another low card. Mosin gearing up to put Sergio in a really, really tough spot. He's already extracted two streets of value. Will he extract a third? The bet on the river is 1.38 million. And this is some cherry bet sizing for Mosin Charania, and Sergio's adopting the appropriate response. It's a huge bet, but still small enough to make it really difficult to fold. It's a work of art, really. And this is just so sick. These are the two biggest stacks that are left. It comes down to soul rating a lot in a spot like this. <sighs> Castelluccio calls. And Charania shows the Kings to win that pot and take the tournament chip lead from Castelluccio. He's down to five million. Mos and Charania now up to more than 8.6 million. Blinds are up to 100,000, 200,000 with a 30,000 ante. Folded to Mosin Charani in the small blind. Queen six off. And he will call. Totally fine to limp in that spot. Jack 10 for Lucille. Lucille could raise, but checking's fine too. It's a hand that flops really well. And you do want to make sure you actually get to see a flop with it. So she checks. And the flop is King Queen six. Six setup. Somebody call the stretcher. Lucille's up and down. Mosin's got bottom two pair. There's so much action on this flop. It should come with an Arnold Schwarzenegger one liner. Charania has checked. Lucille bets her draw. 225,000. Lucille's giving Mosin the chance to check raise. He just calls. Now, this might be a hand where you'd see a lot of money going normally, but in their minds, Bernard's a lock for third place, so they may not want to play a huge pot. Ten of clubs on the turn. Lucille now with a pair to go with her draw. Mosin checks a second time. Lucille checks behind. River for free. The three of spades. She doesn't get there. Let's see if Mosin likes his hand enough to go for some value. Yeah, that ten of clubs was such a buzzkill. No one has a club. Straights came in. Better two pairs came in. Lucille didn't have to semi-bluff anymore. She's got actual showdown value. Mosin does value bet. 460,000. She may feel compelled to call. She does call. Wow. You eat hard. Hmm? You eat hard. Remember, Mosin just limp pre-flop. Wow. Lucille's going to have the best hand there a lot of the time. So she gives up the chip lead to Chirania. But she still has a very big stack. We made such a thing about the fact she's the first woman to ever make the final table of this tournament. She could potentially become our first ever female grand final champion. Yeah, it's incredible. Charania with King Queen suited on the button, raising, makes it 410,000. Lucille folds the small blind. Bernard Guillon with ace four in the big blind. Thinking of doing something crazy, Bernard? <laughs> All in. He shoves! He knows those aren't aces, right? I'm kidding, he should probably shove with that anyway. Mosin calls. Just one little stack of yellow is all it took for him. Practically a flip. Good luck, Bernard. Good luck. Uh, Thank you. Shit. Oh, that almost made me cry. I love him. What a flop for Charania. Queen, queen, nine. I have three queens. Thank you, Mosin. We'd noticed. Guillon now with less than 1% equity. Lucille on the verge of going heads up against Mosin Charania for the title here in Monaco. Yes. Guillon drawing dead on the turn. He goes out in third. Mosin Charania and Lucille Kai go heads up at the EPT Grand Final. €545,000, the prize for Guillaume. Lucille has ace-king. Hello there. Well, if she raises 8-10, chance now she's going to raise ace-king. You don't say. Sure enough, 400000 Pocket queens for Mosin. Well, hello to you, too. Here we go. And 
And here comes the three bet. Mosin Chirania makes it a total of 855,000. And one more time from Lucille. Raise. Four bet coming, which will no doubt lead to a five bet jam from Chirania, which no doubt she will call. Whoa, 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 let's not get ahead of ourselves, James. Mosin can lay this down still. Yeah, right. She makes it 2,055,000. One more time from Mosin. We could probably just get to the river. All in. He oh, shots! Yeah. Call. And she calls! Here we go. Yeah. That's why I built them. You hate to see it come down to a flip, but both have played so good, both want it so bad. I don't know any other way to decide this. One of the biggest coin flips in EPT history. Look. A ridiculously huge race with the championship on the line. Nine, three, deuce, two clubs. Lucille calling for the backdoor flush draw. Her immediate outs are aces and kings. Queens are holding. Queens are holding. The turn is a seven. No club. No additional sweat on the turn. The river card potentially for the biggest title in European poker. If it's not an ace or a king, Mosin Sharania has won this year's EPT Grand Final. The river card. It's a brick! Sharani is the champion! He pockets more than 1.3 million euros and he will lift that trophy. Commiserations on one side of the room. And celebrations on the other. Great performance by Lucille Kaye. You lost, kid, but you don't have to like it. And Mosin seems a little shell shocked. Let's have a big round of applause for Lucille, everybody. <laughs> Lucille Kaye still made history today, the first woman to ever make the final table of this tournament. And Mosin Sharani's name will be in the history books. Well, the chip leader is first to speak here with pocket sixes. He's counting out a raise to 135,000. Round to Adrian Mateos in the big blind. Queen 10. He defends. This will be a race if we see all five cards. The trick is to sometimes not see all five and win some of the ones by betting that you'd lose at showdown. A set for Ferez. Check. Mateos checks his gut shot. And Ferez checks behind. Oh, man, you gotta bet your sets. You're losing value and giving free cards. Mateos turns a straight. Look, the jack was coming no matter what, so it's not like the check hurt him that much. But now would be a bad time to stop playing it slow. Mateus leads the turn for 250,000. Oh boy. Ferez raises to half a million. It's not really Ferez's fault, but in general, you don't want to be checking when you're ahead and raising when you're behind for your health. And now that Ferez has shown himself to be strong, I'd say there's a pretty good chance Mateos tosses in a few more betting discs. Here comes the re-raise. A three bet to 1.3 million. Now I really think the move here is to just call. If you're behind and you get it in, you're in really bad shape. If you're ahead and you get it in, he's probably folding. At least if you just call, your opponent can bluff again on the river. I'm already... Ferez shoves, and Mateos calls with the nuts. It's a straight. It's bad. You got outs though, dude, bro. All of Senegal on its feet. This is the biggest pot of the tournament so far. Adrian Mateos gets a huge double up unless 
the board pairs on the river. Kings, jacks, nines, and the K6 all eliminate Mateos. The river card is a 10. Yes. That changes everything. Yes, it does. We have a new chip leader. Blinds now 61-20. Therese has ace-9. Hey, that's his lucky hand. That's the hand he busted Johnny with. He raises to 310,000. Mateos with 7-4 of spades. Hey, we are heads up, and Mateos is going to have the post-flop advantage, so a call here is perfectly reasonable. He defends. And what a flop. Top pair for Ferez, two pair for Mateos. That is some post-flop edge, but also what a cooler. Heads up, this is a bigger cooler than the one where they keep a cryogenically frozen Marlon Brando. 425,000, the C bet from Ferez. It's got to be very tempting to raise here. Mateos does check raise. He makes it 1.1 million. Ferez might just think Mateos is trying to push him around. The big bad pro. Three back coming. 2.675 million. Ferez has also got back to our hearts. And once he's shown himself to have something here, it's entirely possible Mateos goes to play this fast as, which I am totally on board with. All in. Mateos moves all in. Too many chips in the middle to fold now. Ferez calls, and the cards go on their backs. Cuatro. Dobles contra as nueve. Dobles top pairs. Ferez has run pretty good this whole tournament, but that can all change in a blink of an eye. The turn card. Jack of diamonds. So Ferez spikes an ace jack on nine on the river. He's the grand final champion. Eight cards that give Ferez the win. It's a blank. A huge turning point in the match. That was the big double up opportunity he was waiting for. Now he's in the lead, now he can put it away. Adrian Mateos now has a seven to one chip lead over Muhyiddin Ferez. Back to the action. Mateos, commanding chip leader. Well, this is a different story than before, eh? Ferez with a six of spades. He raises to 410,000. Mateos has him dominated with ace eight. All in. He shoves on Ferez. Ace on ace, heads up. One player short. This could be for all the monies. Oh, yeah. Ferez calls. Oh, yeah. And this could be it. He doesn't need an ocho. He just needs no sace. More than half the time, Mateo seals the deal here. Here comes the flop. And there's the Ocho! That is just about gonna do it. It might finally be Ferez Bueller's day off. It could be over on the turn. Spain has been waiting for its first win on the EPT for 11 seasons. And 
the wait is over! Oh! Adrian Mateos takes down the EPT 11 Grand Final! Oh! And a great showing from amateur player Mohadine Ferez, who finishes second. Buenos dias, Adrian! That was then, this is now. The 2023 PokerStars EPT presented by Monte Carlo Casino. And action continues from the final table where we have four players competing for the trophy and the first prize of 890,000 euros. Right now, the biggest stack is Sir Watts. Mike Watson coming back from break with 69 big blinds. Leonard Maurer playing 47 bigs. Leo Lees, 28 big blinds. Joachim Haraldstadt, the shortest stack with 19 big blinds. We have reached level 32. The blinds are now 100,000, 200,000 with a 200K big blind ante. It's James Hartigan, Sam Grafton still with me. Hey guys. And we're joined for this level by Nick Walsh. Uh, hello, hello, thank you for having me. So four-handed action begins. I know we had like one hand of four-handed play during the last session, but really, Sam, it felt like the level ended with Sammy going out. Yeah, and uh, as I say, feel for him. Played really, really well and on the wrong end of a couple of callers. At least, Nick, you're being 100% objective in your approach to this EPT. <laughs> Hashtag Team Lease, let's go. So first hand of the new level, first hand of this session. It's been folded to Leonard in the small blind with queen three off. Raises big on the shorty in the big blind. And how that is moved around the table, will fold his hand. Another look at that trophy. Stunning golden shard here in Monte Carlo. So you were saying earlier on, Sam, that one of the narratives at this final table is uh, the new generation of online player like Leonard potentially winning an EPT versus the old guard like Mike Watson. I mean, Mike right now has the chip lead. If he were able to close this out, Mike Watson would become one of a handful of players to have won two main event titles. Yeah, absolutely. And, and two really big ones. Uh, Monte Carlo and PCA, I mean, iconic, iconic tournaments. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, Joaquim with an offsuit ace. Definitely a hand that's going to be ahead of a button opening range. Little freer to put the chips in the middle as the shorter stack. Don't want to go too crazy. He's played quite conservatively so far at this final table. Does make the all-in move. Does get the triangle. Yeah. Now hovering around the 22 big blind mark. So with four players remaining, everyone has locked up 305k, nearly 400k for third. So a significant money jump. Always significant money jumps when you get to the stage of a final table. More than half a million for the runner-up. Nearly 900k for the winner. As we deal hand 94 of the final table, and we have. Leonard Mauer under the gun with queen nine off. Just a reminder, of course, guys, under the gun in this case being the cutoff. Indeed. So we're playing that sweet, sweet cutoff range. Nice and wide. Decides King nine fold. on the button for Harold Stad. Yeah, this seems like a good one. He's got about 22 big blinds to start the hand. This is a combination that you want to play from the button. Just a min raise seems good. On the raise. Has a little bit extra on top. 425,000. Mike Watson folding the small blind. A little bit of sauce. And 10-5 of diamonds for Leo Lees in the big blind. 
What do you think, Sam? Mandatory defend, I think. Any suited hand, basically. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, kind of covering Joaquim as well is nice. So Jack-10-3 on the flop. One diamond. Yeah, and Leo, of course, been involved in a lot of action. Reduced the short stack, then the treble up, then the ladder. Now taking a flop. Alan Stapp with the gut shot. Yeah, and just very good board for a tight button opening range. Continues for 500,000. Yeah, and a big sizing on this dynamic te texture. But Leo immediately reaching for trip chips, got the backup of the diamonds. Turn card is a five, that is now two pair for Leo Lees. Yeah, and looks like a real brick. And Joaquim may well be tempted to fire again to pressure. You know, we can imagine a 10-6 of diamonds, for instance, might have more trouble continuing. A queen nine might be forced to fold. But Knuckles back, and I just realize his equity in position. Barry Greenstein makes an appearance. Wow. I don't know about you, Sam. I wouldn't mind seeing a check here from Leo. The ace seems like a really good card, not only for that opening range where he's improved, but also a card that Harrelstad might use as a bluff, so potentially might get some value there. Yeah, and he does check over to Joaquin. Seems like we're not going to be unpaired too often on this one. We're going to have like eights we can show down, a ten we can show down. It's almost, one might say, a mandatory bluff. Seems a little bit too obvious, but I think with a heart in hand, unpaired. Joaquim doesn't look too comfortable, but I might just be because I know he has king nine high. Trying to think what sizing he wants to go for. What size would an ace go? Does he want to represent a king-queen? Does this hand match up with the, the flushes and straights where he could go really, really big? He might even just not find it here, seeing his hat. Looks a little unsure. He 2. is. 2.4 million. 2.4 million. Oh, wow. Slight over bet. Oh, wow. Love this. Oh, man. And this is, this is really nice because this is the one sizing where, look at Leo. Oh, is he just... Snap call. Wow. Easy game. Picking it up. Yeah. Wow. Picks off the bluff instantly with two pair. And that is going to leave Harold Stat with 10 big blinds. That was a big pot to lose. Yeah. And uh, checked, like recognizing it's one of the strongest hands he checks on the river. Felt like he had to. I mean, it's not fun, by the way. Joaquim's thought it through, plucked up the courage, fired out the big bet. And then you get beaten into the <laughs> pot. Very, very rough indeed for Joaquim. He's just got the perfect hand for it, though, right, Sam? He's blocking the king, queen. He's blocking the hearts. The ace is obviously a scare card for a jack or a 10 or a 5. Yeah, I mean, he's got plenty of value to, to pull from that, one would imagine. He's not even going to open that many offsuit hands. So, um, yeah. I mean, Leo looks very confident there, by the way. Uh, yeah, I, I would have. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not not super exciting. I don't even think with uh, with turn five. Um. Raise and take here for Mike Watson with the tens, holding on to the chip lead at this four-handed final table, close to 14 million chips. A reminder that the blinds are currently 100,000, 200,000, and we'll stay at that level for another one hour and 22 minutes. We've only just kicked off level 32, We're only just back from break. Yeah, and, and Leo has been kept on a, a short That's lease, fine. sandwiched as he is between <laughs> Mad Dog and Grozog, the two chip leaders. Now with 40 big blinds, not like Mao can mess with him too much when they're so close in chips. And, and when Sir Watts folds, he's going to be able to open just a little bit wider um, from the button um, and play a little bit more freely. And Leonard with an ace. Just eight big blinds for Joaquim in the big blind. Yeah, should be a ship every time. All in. There it is. Shoves on Harold Stad, who has 7-5 suited and folds the big blind. 
Oh, Sam, at this point, the big blind Andes are so punishing when you have that short stack. They come round, whacking in two bigs feels like a huge chunk. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's a, it's a very different beast. Obviously, when you're sort of full ring, the big blind ante, you know, has changed the game somewhat in the, in the ante is a little bit bigger than it used to be. But when you're, you know, when we, was sh we used to go shorthanded before, obviously the ante would be half as much as it had been when you were full ring. And now exactly the same really forces the action. That was my follow-up question, Sam. Have you, obviously playing at the highest levels, have you guys gone in the lab and actually sort of adjusted your ranges to suit? Or is it more of a feel thing where you've kind of gone, you know, like, you know, we can assume that I know the range is just going to be a little bit wider. No, yeah, definitely. I mean, a lot of, when I'm studying, I definitely, the, it's, it, because it can be very different. The live payouts and the online payouts are different. Right. And then you're playing, um, uh, half ante essentially in a star spinal table yep. so you have to know what the adjustments are of course some of it comes to feel but yeah th there is some study that you can do super interesting stuff yeah i think that's a big thing for people coming from online kind of going yeah i pretty much have the gist of it but you're like big blind ante changes everything especially shorthanded so lease opened under the gun with ace jack mike watson defending his big blind with jack seven a dominated hand he's checked the action to lease on a king six deuce board Lease fires. Yeah, and it's interesting to remember, Watson, just with a, a jacket, bear jacket diamonds here, um, just considering his options. Uh, it seems like a bit too much. Uh, look at the mad dog. You're going to see a moment of madness here. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, I would have been, been very surprised to see so what's get creative there but just having a little think um you know this leo was down to six big blinds i believe under the gun when he found that ace deuce off and got the shove through now up to 41 big blinds you know not that i would ever think uh, any of the guys that made it this far to a final table would ever give up but just shows what you can achieve from the short stack if you pick up a little bit of run good really back in contention for this title yeah, join the join the list of British winners: Tom Middleton, Jake Cody, um, Toby Lewis, and the like. Boy next door asking on Twitch which one is Grozorg. That will be Leonard Mauer. This right. hand is Watson versus Lease. It's small blind versus big blind. And with Queen Six, Mike completes. Yeah, and you see the advantages you have. I mean. When Leo was a bit shorter, so what's coming in for a raise very, very often. Now forced to just play a little bit more controlled. But it is a big flop where they both connect. Yeah, top pair for Lee, but the queen high flush draw for Mike Watson, who checks this flop. And we can see that in addition to having the flush draw, Mike's got a pair of sixes and actually is a statistical favorite here. Just, it's a post-flop flip. Yeah, and the one big blind, these monotone textures, everyone has to proceed pretty cautiously. Seems like a pretty easy check call, really. You've got showdown and you've got this, the cool draw, so really no reason to get too too excited here. And the club of the turn will give him the second Ooh, nuts. when it gives least two pair, but he's got to be scared of the fact that there's four clubs out there. I should say also there is a street flash, of course, guys, but second nut flush here for Watson. Seven of hearts on the river after it goes check, check on the turn. Yeah, and the queen of clubs in incredibly powerful here on the river. That's right, Hushi. Street flash poker potential. But Mike Watson with the queen high flush and... What size value bet gets paid by two pair? Not that Mike knows his opponent has two pair. 1.5. Yeah, and a big polarizing bet. And Leo does have a decent bluff catcher here. Oh, he's just, he's out. Snap faults. Yeah, wow. nice work there, Leo. Wow. Yeah, I like that size from Watson though, right, Sam? Just like, you really gotta, you wanna be able to bluff that spot effectively, right? Therefore, having that big polarizing size, you know, means that you will get paid by a lot of clubs. You yeah. have a larger size there, so. Feels good. In this case, no club, just the fold. Sometimes a two pair could level themselves to do a call there, I suppose, but we're on the final table here. Chips are very valuable, and Leo just makes the fold. 
I noticed that the rail is a lot quieter now. Both French players have gone out. Yeah, it's understandable. Obviously, people are going to have, I wouldn't say home support, but much easier to get friends and family over from France. Where, where's also what's his railing crew? Yeah, they're playing, playing big 10K six max tournaments and stuff like this, I guess. <laughs> Unfortunately, one of the, the nature of uh, being a successful tournament player is your friends are kind of nonplussed. It's not quite the life changing event it, it is for others. Although I'm sure it will be very meaningful for Mike if he can uh, take this down. Bad dog Mike. Our old stat thinking about what to do with Ace Deuce under the gun. Yeah, and this is where the big blind ante comes into play a bit more as well. Two and a half big blinds out there uh, if you were to get your shove through. Not exciting to have the Ace Deuce off. And will just fold, thought it through and thought better of it. One thing about this big gap is that it's kind of hard to see Leonard or Leo busting Obviously, it will happen some percentage of the time. There are setups when you fold, but you can't ladder up as easily as if there was a 10 big blind or a 12 big blind stack. And lease. So we've only seen one of his cards. He's got the Jack of Diamonds. Watson's button raises to 450,000, and that is a re raise. Those are the 100k chips. So lease. Re-raising to 1.4 million, and I can't see Mike going anywhere with nines. Yeah, nines, a very, very strong hand on the button. <coughs> Might be tempted just to rip this one. I mean, nines definitely playable, can call in position. We are a little bit on the deeper side. Yeah, I think he'll he'll, he'll go for a flat. Like yeah. Some of the bluffs are like ace-5 and ace-6 suited and stuff. Right. Stuff you just dominate. I, I, I don't know. So what's going to have a strong sense of how to approach this spot? Uh, but Alex to just call. Yep. He's got position, and, you know, Leo going to not be able to bluff as freely into a covering stack as, as if we were just playing for chips, not going to be able to leverage. wonder what Leo does have. Obviously, you know, it's very likely this is a, a king jack suited, an ace jack off, or uh, a pocket jack. So that, that would be sort of our guess. So not much changed here. See, good flop for Sir Watts. Ace king doesn't improve. Uh, ace queen doesn't improve and you've got this sort of three liner for a little bit of backup can find your way into a flush or straight if you are right up against it and very difficult situation for the young englishman three million out there six million chips behind and so the lease continuing for eight hundred thousand yeah, and it's a small sizing and quite a dynamic texture. Um, and definitely giving Sir Watts an appetizing price to continue. Obviously, this board just hasn't changed much. Not going to be so many bluffs with a 10 in Leo's hand. Have been outdrawn on occasion and will continue. This pot getting very, very sizable. Board pairs on the turn, puts a second flush draw out there. Sam, do you think uh, Le uh, Leo ever has a hand like Queen Jack here? Do you feel like that's a combo that he just flats usually pre? I mean, at some frequency, it might be three bet, right? Yeah, it could, could be. Queen Jack of Diamonds, I guess, would be the one. I would think Queen Jack off is just too, a bit too much. Bit too wide, bit too frequent. Yeah. Yep. And Leo checks over to Mike. There are a small number of eights in Mike's range. And I wonder whether Sir Watts sort of leverages this chip lead to just put out a blocking bet, fold two overs on occasion, and feel like you're not going to get check raised too often. Very difficult spot. One million. Yeah. He's got tens and he's got an 8x. He's got aces. Mm. So if Leo starts to go mad check raising this, this spot, he, he's got plenty of hands he can call on. So he put out a million, and now what does Leo do? Obviously, we know that if this is Jack's, uh, Leo's not going to be folding. But if it's an ace, I mean, could it be a Jack 10? Seems unlikely again to me, but we shall see. A little bit mysterious because of the of missing one card. Yeah. Uh, but Nick, I know you love it when we get analysis from our viewers. 
and obviously a lot of people concerned about the missing card. Shift Four says you only need one card for poker, your credit card. Oh, where can I get your book, buddy? Sign me up for the course. Yeah, and he's out. I love that size from Watson, though. Absolutely beautiful poker there. Very, very finesse. That was not an insignificant hand as Mike Watson increases his chip lead. And actually, now he's moved over the 16 million mark. There are roughly 32 million chips in play, which means with four players remaining, Sir Watts has half the chips in play. Yeah, and, and, and just to sort of lean into that, I mean, obviously we are just seeing, you know, one of the most successful poker players of the last 20 years. We're used to this on the EPT, you know, a lot of really strong players make the final tables. Obviously we cover the high rollers, but Mike Watson, someone that's done it online, someone that has main event successes, obviously you know, big scores. Most recently, you know, one that just comes to mind, the 50K in Barcelona, he won for an absolutely huge score. Just a real, real poker talent and just, no, cementing that with what with you know this big final table yeah, and, yeah. and and just execution temperament you can see all the the qualities that you need to be a top top level poker player coming together and then yeah doesn't need to overdo it just jack do suited into the into the muck and we move on so we have reached hand 100 of the final table and we still have one short stack harold stack Eight big blinds at the start of this hand. Two of them posted. Six behind. He is in the danger zone. Danger zone! And look at that. Now shoves on him with 9-6 offsuit. Yeah, Leo obviously folding that queen-6 suiting. Looking over at Joaquim's very, very shallow stack. Doesn't want to be involved here. And obviously Mao is just going to put him to the test here. Uh, is this, this is a Nash call, isn't it, Sam? I feel like six bigs would probably have to call this. Yeah, this seems like a Nash call to me, especially when you consider the additional dead money that adjusts those ranges, as we were mentioning just now. So much dead money out there. 10-8 suited just has a ton of equity, if not the best hand. Yeah, I mean, it, it does seem close. Obviously, the, again, I, I, I don't I don't fully know how much tournament Joaquim has played, but this is just not an exciting spot, and one that even tournament specialists is kind of hard to to be exactly sure, just doesn't come up too often. The gap to Leo does make a big difference, uh, but and he will just let it go. I think, you know, it may be a, it may be a small mistake. And, and obviously in this exact instance, we can see was well, well ahead. So um, yeah, <laughs> a little wipe of the brow from, uh, from Lennon Mao. <laughs> uh, not, not, not wanting a call there with the nine six off. Uh, yeah, definitely preferred the fold there, but if that spot freaks you out, guys, remember that Maui's shoving range there is going to contain like 5-6 suited, 7-8 suited, 8-9 suited, plenty of stuff that the 10-8 doesn't mind seeing. And even if he does have the top of his range, like Ace-King, still going to have something close to 60-40 with all that additional dead money. Pot odds looking really sweet. So definitely a close one. I think i probably find the call button, but I don't know. I'm a whale, Sam, so there you go. Here we go. Blind v. Blind. Harold Stad in the small. King 6 off. Yeah, and, and this is just a lot easier, I think, for everyone. Everyone loves to find it's just much easier on a final to be putting the money in, trying to force folds and win money this way than the other way around, and we'll use the king. All in for five big blinds. Mike Watson, 10-8 suited, makes the call. Shot, there we go. So just Harold turn. Stad at risk, but <laughs> does have the best hand right now, but... He's not that far ahead. Watson with live cards will have solid equity. Wow. So what's heard your coaching? Yeah. For, he tuned in. Yeah. In real time and, and heard that 10 8 suited would be a call with the, <laughs> with the dead money. And even when he's got king six, he's still got plenty of activity. Going to be something like 60 40, apparently. Sam, if we weren't sure that I was making the right call, we are now. Yes. Oh wow. my God. Look 10, at 10, 9. This is going to be hard to come back from. Yeah. Jack of hearts for a sweat. Joaquim definitely deserves a little sweat. Played very well on this final. Drawing dead and eliminated. Over on the turn. And Joachim Haraldstadt is our fourth place finisher in the EPT Monte Carlo 2023 main event. And he is going to cash out for just over 300,000 euros. Yeah, and that's a huge, huge fourth prize. Amazing run. Not just, you know... To even get to this final table, just think of the numbers he's got to go through, how well he must have played after the last few days, and goes to his rail and will be 
hopefully very pleased <laughs> with his achievement. Among the people on his rail, Cam Mockery, who finaled Barcelona last year. Big legend. Love Cam. Fan favourite all round. Yeah. And now we are down to three, and of course it would be Sawatz who took him out. So Mike's now got close to 90 big blinds, pretty much has a two-to-one advantage on Leonard Maurer, who sits second in chips. Yeah, I mean, this is just a very exciting spot to find yourself in, but Mike not going to underestimate his opponents. Uh, Leo and Leonard, sure, of course, shown themselves to be very capable on this final table, and we, and we know about their resumes elsewhere as well. Shout out to my boy Leo, that van life, that van run good. Yeah, a great person to follow on uh, Instagram. I mean, I actually, I mean, I've known Leo for a decent yeah. while, and, and yeah. we do catch I up when we see each other on points. stops. But uh, I feel Very like good. I know him a lot better just because of how much he sort of shares about his life. And, hmm? you know, a post hands that he plays yeah. and his thought process, really nice to see. Yeah, known him from the old Brighton, bit, Brighton days. No, Both of us reside in the old you know? city of Brighton. Yeah. But uh, obviously, I see him handcuffs, uh, handcuffs yeah, off very slightly for Leo here, Sam. Yeah, now that we've seen that shorty bust, 29 big blinds, the shortest stack, he can start to make a little bit more. Yeah, I mean, uh, as you get close, obviously, one way to picture it is, you know, ICM is most intense at the beginning of the final table, eight-handed, and heads up, there's zero ICM. Yep. So you're just moving as you move further in that direction. You're competing more directly with people. There's no not other people that benefit when you're all in. So there's a much less ICM pressure three-handed than, than what we've seen elsewhere. But uh, a bad spot for Leo here as... Well, he's just Leonard completed. Picking up a premium. And I'm so guessing picky. Leonard will raise. And sure enough, throws more chips in. Makes it 650,000 total. You can see, and Leo acted quite quickly often, but you can see a little unsure, perhaps, as how to proceed. You do want to call a lot of your suited hands. Rather have a little bit more connectivity. And that's quite a connection. Yeah, 9 at 7 3 with the two diamonds. Yeah, absolutely. Leonard, super pleased to see no overcard. You know, a lot of King X and Queen X limp calling. Jack's very strong on this board and also want a lot of protection. Uh, against overcards. Playing a bit closer to chips, and he might want to go decently big here. Well, oh, his pre flop raise was to 650. The continuation bet is 600. Yeah, it keeps, keeps it relatively in line. And lease with the flush draw and overcard. Also a hand that does benefit a bit from a check raise, forcing out a king five or a, or a queen okay. ten. And oh, will go for the check raise. And that's a committing race, Sam. He's only got five million and three million and it's already in. Well, I don't know about this. Oh, All in wow. and a call. Wow. Least committed himself with that check raise and is now drawing to eight cards. Yeah, and you can see Leonard's a bit disappointed. I mean... It's not so bad, a flush draw with no overcut. Um, and Leo will go to his rail again. He this is a big 60-30. So Leo Lease at risk and behind. Oh. Does hit a five on the turn and picks up additional outs. Diamonds, fives, and tens are working for him. Any other card? We're going heads up in Monte Carlo. Well, this lease has expired. Leo is eliminated in third place. He cashes for nearly 400K, and it is going to be Mike Watson heads up against Leonard Maurer for the trophy title and 890K first prize. Yeah, and before we get to this really exciting heads up, let's say big congratulations to Leo, an amazing run from, you know, what will be to some people a new name, uh, but for a lot of us, it's someone that's been on the scene a decent while, and that's a huge score for the young Brit. I would say on your bike, but now we got to say yeah. in your van. Nice work, Leo. Very, very sick run. Absolutely huge score. Good game to the man with the van, and well done to our final two. Well, this is the heads-up battle that we thought we would get. 
And actually, it's more even than it potentially could have been because it was Maurer who took out Lease. It's going to be 87 bigs versus 75. Super deep heads up poker coming your way. Super deep. Here it goes, guys. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah. the players have asked to look yeah, at the numbers. <laughs> you need. Thought yeah. they were asking for a break, but actually they've asked for Toby Stone to bring his trusty laptop to the main stage so they can potentially redistribute the remaining prize money. Uh, it is pretty close. Yeah, and, and this speaks, I think, a little bit of Leonard's stature in the game. He's someone that's had, I mean, just recently, humongous scores online. Uh, obviously, Mike Watson, just a, a famed figure over the last decade in poker, but it shows that, you know, really this is just basically two top, top professionals, heads up in Monte Carlo, and, you know, they might want to come to some sort of agreement just to, um, you know, lessen the, the pay jump. It is very, very steep between first and second prize. Yeah, so the advertised payouts, the advertised remaining prize money, it's 556,600 for second, and then a jump to 890,000 for the winner. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what, if anything, they agree. I, I think it's worth highlighting as well that any deal that would be agreed, and it's not to say that they would necessarily come to terms, would have to leave some money still to play for, what we call 10% of remainings. How the deal would work is that both would receive second place prize money, which is 556600. Five, they can then redistribute the remaining prize money, how they see fit, with 10% of that left to play for, and of course the title and trophy, which does mean something. Uh, I know I, people like to think, Sam, oh, it's all about the money poker. No, it's not. No, uh, uh, of course. I mean, you know, you don't survive as long as Mike Watson has done in this game, unless you deeply care about the competitive spirit. And for Leonard, as I said, already with a big high roller title, but I mean, for anyone to win at EPT, it's one of your first dreams in poker, particularly for us tournament players. And neither player with a significant advantage in this heads up battle. 17.5 million for Mike Watson, 15 and a half million for Leonard Maurer. So 87 bigs playing 75 bigs. And we've still got 60 minutes to play at this blind level. Now, of course, once we get to the end of level 32, with only two players remaining, the blind levels will halve to 45 minutes each. But there is the possibility of a long heads up battle, considering how deep they are. Yeah, and how strong technically these guys will be as well. And good comment from Pokestar Strag, reminding everyone that it is the player's money. It's the money that they've put into the prize so, pool. And it's always better that a deal is made in the open and authorized by the tournament the staff yeah, yeah. rather than off to the side where it can't be enforced. Sure. Out to the DTD car park to make a deal in the back of someone's Ford Fiesta. <laughs> <laughs> name Not the first person, first name. <laughs> Michael. Is it A E L? Yeah. Yeah. Wait yeah. for. Like waiting for Godot, waiting for Toby Stone to arrive. The time would have passed anyway. I'd love it if Toby walked over and they went, yeah, yeah, we've agreed. Uh, we know what we want to do. Winner take all. <laughs> we always see Toby Stone when he announces the payouts. Yeah. We see him when he runs the bubble and keeps it smooth and controlled. And we see him with his trusty laptop whenever there are numbers to be crunched and a deal to be discussed. At least, heads up, there's only one number, right? ICM not a thing. Yeah. Correct. Should we get Toby like a novelty license plate that says smooth and controlled? But like with with like a five instead of an it's, S? It's the, it's the tagline for his aftershed. Toby Stone. <laughs> Hi guys. Smooth with and the, by the EPT. Smooth and controlled. <laughs> Here we go. Let's go, Toby. It's like your bank manager appearing. No? <laughs> First of all, we're going to ask you if you're going to discuss any deal, if you could do it here at the table rather than sure, sure. away. And if you want somebody to help you, you can bring somebody here mm. or you can make a phone call. This is first place. This is second place. This is your names and these are your tip counts, okay? We ask you to play for 10% of remaining. So you're both guaranteed second place. So we do a total prize money and take two second places off and that leaves 333, 400. So you have to play for 10% of this. Yes. If you want, I can increase this to a higher amount. 
and then we can you can do the chip equity on that. So with these figures playing for 33, these are your numbers. Sounds good to me. Chip yeah. chop and ICM are the same now because there's two of you left. So yeah, they're the numbers playing for the 30 scenes. <laughs> that yeah. works. That's fine. I think that works. Well. Yeah. Well, this seems that? like the okay. easiest well, deal in history. Let's go. I'll go with just the numbers. Start toilet. Congrats. Sure. Yeah. Come back in five minutes. Perfect. Is that okay? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah. So the players are going to take an impromptu sure. five minute break five after minutes. agreeing a deal. Uh, playing for 33k. That is 10% of remaining prize money. And then a straight chip shot with no negotiating. No negotiating. Yeah. Just two young. Gentlemen, chopping up 300k in under 60 seconds. That's the nature of uh, high stakes poker in a nutshell. Welcome to Monte Carlo. Yes. <laughs> uh, no, re really nice to see. And, and again, I think it makes sense. One way, you know, we sometimes look at this is, you know, Leonard or, or Mike would think, okay, if this, if my opponent was sitting down at a table offering me 150k heads up sit and go, would I be looking to take that spot? And would I have an edge there? And the answer is probably no. So having you know, reached a, a once, or in the case of Mike Watson, twice a career uh, landmark, it makes sense to do some kind of deal. So these are the numbers they've locked up. Mike Watson guaranteed 716,000 euros. Leonard Mao at 697K. Whoever wins will get more prize money because they are still playing for 33,340 euros plus the trophy. But they've locked up those sums and again, those amounts of money very close together because the stacks are very close together. A straight chip chop, no negotiating, no I want five euros more, no I have the edge heads up, no my mum's worth 30 million. <laughs> 30 million. Just a simple <laughs> straight chip chop agreed with that money left to play for. I actually saw Flex Nelly by the pool. So, five minute break, and then we're back Remember, to play heads up. In that final table, I called him down to the bottom pair in a blind versus yes. blind spot where he had a full house, and, and you guys were like, oh, what, what the hell is that? <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, we highlighted earlier on that this is our second trip to Prague this year. And during our first live stream back in March, you were a notable participant in the conversation on that stream, highlighting why you have not come to Prague for many years, because you are not prepared or were not prepared to hashtag embrace the squeak, which is why I told Toby Stone, EPTTD to email you to let you know that it seems they have hashtag eliminated the squeak. I heard that, yeah. I, I didn't, I, I need to correct the record here. I didn't miss Prague because I couldn't handle it anymore. I missed Prague back in, what was it, March or February because I had COVID. I couldn't come. That's always been my oh. biggest complaint with, with Prague here is the chairs causing psychic damage. Uh, because it's not a squeak. It's it's the loudest, <laughs> most painful screech you could possibly imagine with those bare metal bottoms of the chairs ripping into the tile floor every time one of the 500 people in the room <laughs> slightly shifts their weight a little bit. And uh, it's been a crusade of mine since 2011 to well, the first time I ever came here for Prague to get this fixed. I, I looked up carpet retailers or rental places. Well, I, I considered buying things to put <laughs> over the bottoms of the chairs and just going down there one night at 3 a.m. when all the tournaments were over for the day and turning all the chairs upside down to fix them. But uh, I was holding out hope that someday someone would hear my pleas and fix it themselves. So James, do we know what happened, how it actually got fixed? They've looked at numerous options over the years. And look, I think, to be honest, I don't think anyone realized just how big a problem this was and how much torture it was causing, not just to the players in the room, but to the, the live staff, stream audience The as staff, well. the dealers, and the foremen. They absolutely, hated it too. The floor absolutely. people, that's right. Anyway, the solution, and I apologize that it has taken 11 years from you first highlighting it, Steve, for this to be implemented. I believe a little socks, it's basically a little kind of like clear gel plastic sleeve and then on the bottom of that is like a felt base so they don't come off like if you just stick those felt bases to the ends of chairs they fall off that's the problem whereas if they're actually kind of like sliding on like little socks they stay on and so far word on the ground seems to be that it's working but interestingly steve some people have complained that there is no longer a squeak i, I don't care those people probably aren't here 
there are probably some uh, people in your audience that uh, just enjoyed memeing the hashtag, <laughs> but they don't realize the, the, the psychic damage it was causing to everybody that had to spend time in that room. And thankfully, a few years ago, the High Rollers, we got to play upstairs on the mezzanine level in one of the quiet carpeted ballrooms which is lovely yes because it's, it's also nice because you don't have to go through the long security line to get into that big room in the first place so the high roller players we get the luxury of no screeching chairs most of the days we're here i think if i have a standout steve o'dwyer moment and i apologize for the fact that the poker stars content machine has basically kind of really got its maximum value out of this one it is the hero call against Roger Sippel in the PCA Super High Roller. And I just think the no it's also the novelty value of it, right? Because the final hand, the winning hand, mm -hmm. is so often an all-in pre-flop. It's so often a race. So for it to end with a really good hero call, mm -hmm. just it's something a bit different, especially for those stakes. And also against a player who you're not going to be expecting to make a move like that. Well, I think... There was a bit of a misconception about uh, Roger's, Roger's tendencies. Um, I think most people just look at him and be like, oh, that's not the kind of guy you right. want to be making that hero call with. But um, I, mean, I had never played with Roger, but I knew people who had, and they were like, watch out. <laughs> Good advice. Uh, I mean, there was, if you remember earlier on in that final table, I called him down with bottom pair in a blind versus yes. blind spot where he had a full house, and, and you guys were like, oh, what? <laughs> and it was the same thing like like i had heard like you just watch out you know be willing to be willing to make some loose calls against this guy um and in that hand it was the first hand back from break and right before that he had just lost a big pot and just my thinking was like he's going to go on break he's going to kind of psych himself up and be like i gotta win those chips back i was ready to make a big hero call going into that hand like or those first few hands after break ended because i thought he was going to be like i need to need to get back to even i gotta i gotta win some pots here that interview with steve o'dwyer brought to you by lufthansa Welcome back to the Pokestars EPT presented by Monte Carlo Casino. We are heads up in the main event. Deal agreed between Mike Watson and Leonard Maurer. Still playing for just over 33K plus the EPT trophy. Sam Grafton and Nick Wall still alongside me, James Hartigan. And Sam, this could be a chunky heads up battle. A lot of chips. 76 bigs effective they're playing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, both of them going to be desperate to take home that EBT title. 40K, of course, very meaningful as well. And uh, yeah, two superstars of the game. Uh, both cut their teeth on the online felt. So what's some time ago when Leonard, one of the, the top players of the here and now. So going to be a lot of strategies on display at this stack depth and as the sh stacks get shorter. There is a false perception that once players have agreed a deal, they don't care anymore and they just want to get it in and they're prepared to gamble. No, they've taken some of the variance out of it. They've guaranteed themselves a significant sum of money each, but they're still playing for A, 30K, but B, the win, yeah. the trophy, the I, title. I mean, yeah, this isn't... If you dedicate our thousands and thousands of hours to the art of no limit hold'em and then you arrive at a situation where you can win a european poker tour title this isn't just me being a poker stars guy there's other titles of course in the world yes but a big marquee tournament win is something we all want we've all spent you know in the case of of Leonard, a decade in the case of so what's two decades, you know, fighting for, you're going to want to close out the win. And of course, you know, you have a little bit of ego as well. You're up against another top pro, you're going to want to uh, show him who's boss. So, first hand of heads up play, we get the raise from Mauer flattered by Watson. And Mauer has continued this 7 3 3 flop with. Yeah, and so what's just King deciding. Hunt whether to check raise yep. or check call here C can fold out some better queens yep. and uh, and you want to do decent bit of check raising on this board yep um you yep. know and mauer with two overcards to the seven backdoor flush you know the thing about 
heads up. You're just playing such, such wide ranges. Got to play very tough down the streets. Nice, good call here from Mawa. And yeah, as Sam said, I think this is a great combination to find the check raise on Trey Trey 7, because you will check raise your 3x here as well. But of course, having those backdoor diamonds is a really important characteristic of the queen four here when you're going to find a check raise, I think. Yeah, and turns the gut shot may well mean he wants to continue. Got to keep control of his frequencies somewhat, but you would imagine, you know, again, firing again to fold out exactly the type of folding that Mauer has potentially, potentially. What's your size here, Sam, if you're going to continue turn? Well, like a 60% situation? Yeah, we'll see, see what so what's goes for. Decides Ooh. to check. It's kind of interesting. I guess if you're check raising spades, clubs, and diamonds, uh, you're going to always continue with the clubs. Some of the time you can bluff the river as if you've turned a five with five, six, five, four. Be interesting. I don't know whether King 8 gains that much from betting. Might be nice to just clear up equity. Um, One million. But does bet wow. out. It's a little undisciplined in my book. Sure what we're doing exactly. Yeah. You're going to run a bluff against a 7 or a 5. I don't know that we are. And see, having a glance at Sir Watts, not sure as to how to proceed. I've got to say this isn't my area of specialism at this stack depth particularly. Uh, and so what's now that he's checked? A bit unsure. I mean, yeah, we'll just give it up. Yeah, I mean, another consideration there, Sam, is maybe maybe another check-raising combo might be hand like 4-5 or something like that where you've got the gut shot. So 4-5 check-raises flop and then it runs into a pair on the turn, slows down, just check calls. So I feel like that king it gets looked up quite often there as well. Sorry, we've got an expert weighing in on Twitch. Six Sleep says, chops are ruining the integrity of the sport. What's next? Participation trophies. Unfortunately for you, I vetoed Chat Pro Saturday. Therefore, thou art banned. Yeah, I mean, some, of the, some Six, of the most competitive five, seven, individuals eight. you've ever Keep met on the planet, I'm pretty sad. Okay. Um, yeah, really interesting to see. And, and on, you know, just indicates, you know, the art of heads up, very, very complex and nuanced, uh, very hard to navigate. One thing, of course, we should say about players of this standard is Mike is also going to sort of control frequencies a little bit with, um, you know, some randomization and such like. Doesn't, if he's check raising that board a lot, needs to give up or check a decent amount. Uh, really interesting hand to kick things off. And, and you know, we're going to be seeing a lot of this. It is always coming Sevan on YouTube who asks if Mauer wins, does he get more than Mike? Yes. The sums they've locked up are very similar, like 716, 695, and with 33 to play for, whoever wins will get more prize money. Yeah, and Mauer raising it up here for value with the King 8, and actually getting called by a hand he completely dominates in the form of Queen 8. You know, and, and this is just, you know, not to overemphasize it, but. Again, we go to the second flop. Neither player with the pair. King high against queen high once again. And this is just a lot of heads up poker. Makes things very, very difficult. Gotta love the heads up. Continuation. From Mawa. Or excuse me, was this a lead? No. Sorry, no, it was a continuation, yeah. And Mauer with the advantage right now, 18 million versus 14 and a half million, 90 bigs playing 71 bigs. Yeah, Germany versus Canada. Of course, it was, was it Manik who won the, no, he didn't win last year, he won the year 2019. Yes, yes. And Manic. there has not been a German EPT champion since Manik Lerzer in 2019. Name me three other German champions. Sebastian Ruthenberg. Wow. Goes for season two straight away. <laughs> Sein Ensan. Yeah, of course, big legend. Tanduk Win. Wow. Sandra Noyox. <laughs> Sandra Noyox. What if I to Sandra Noyox? Sick. EPD Dortmund champion? Correct, 2009. <laughs> Love that. Guys, can you get some claps in the chat for the walking EPT encyclopedia that is James Hardigan? It's, I, it's just unbelievable how he does the that. The man's to been to Baden Baden, and he's not about to let you forget it. Sebastian Pauli. I mean, I could keep going. <laughs> Martin Finger. <laughs> <laughs> They also, the names sound made up. Martin Finger and Sandra Nordrup. It's like, is that, are they real names? Like, probably not, right? Chat GPT names, obviously. Uh, 
Eight, seven, three on the flop. Six is still good. Award-winning James Hardigan, everybody. Yeah. What were you, Poker Personality of the Year? What were you? <laughs> <laughs> Troll. Then <laughs> checking back the sixes. God, he just looks so controlled, doesn't he, Sam? The sure. mad dog, that stare. Played a lot of poker, this guy. Jeez. I think that's a real key word, though, control, right? Like, when you start out, you really panic. You find yourself in situations. You're like, how did I get to the river and the pot's this big? It's. Sure. I think so much of it is just about confidence and just knowing that you are you have a plan for, for most situations, you know? Yeah, solving each each puzzle in its turn. Don't worry, Sam, because Elkanuts wants to join in. Your challenge to name a German EPT champion who's not Manig Lerzer. He says Manig Lerzer. <laughs> yeah, I think Mao is going to be really happy with this river. Potentially. Yeah, could, definitely time to go for value, yep. one would imagine. Uh, going to hear from a king on the river and a seven. Just going to be up against exactly the kind of holding Watts, so Watts has a lot of the time. Yeah, and so what does have a potential bluff catcher here? Is there a fourth? Like, what would you be up against? There's nine, ten slow, slow play, and like realizes equity, and then break out. Why wouldn't he have represented the king? Do we want a two in our hand? Doesn't seem good. Very hard to know. But on the other hand, you know, we can't we can't just check fold everything. We're gonna have a few slow plays. Uh, but does fold the queen deuce. I think that makes sense. Maybe queen 10 is going to be a much nicer, nicer call, queen jack. And another pot, small one, going in the direction of Leonard. But it's, uh, you know, my, uh, uh, something of a flip-flop. Mike Watson, 69 big blinds. Nice. Yeah, it's funny because in the break, of course, we we heard Steve O'Dwyer talking about, you know, coming back from a break and realizing, oh, my opponent had lost a big hand or lost a few hands. Okay, so like psychologically, 30. I was ready for him to do something stupid. I don't think that's something that's going to be a factor for uh, Mao here. I don't, can't imagine uh, so what's losing a few pots and going on tilt, trying to get it all back in one big hand. As you said, Nick, very two very composed individuals. That's heads up at this stack depth is such a war of attrition at times unless we see a big cooler. And uh, it really just is about who's going to be tougher. Who's got the alligator blood? Played a lot of heads up in my time. Actually specialized in heads up, guys. And it's just, you just got to be so much tougher than the next guy. The way you beat other regs is just sticking it out for longer and being more composed than them on the days when you lose your composure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and again, two unpaired hands. To be fair to Mike, I don't think he's made a pair since we started this uh, this heads up. Well, I'm small sample size, given, but granted. <laughs> yeah, but ace high is good here, though. But a little bit of inter interaction for for Leonard. Obviously, three liner does have a, a backup diamond, which would be good in the eventuality of a four flush. Just you know, these defenses that make. Very little money, right? Pot of 1.7 million, maybe calling here makes you 1.2 million. Oh, and he just goes for the check raise. Wow, sis, I was not expecting this, but does make some sense. Can fold out maybe a, 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 a better diamond, a 6 5 off with a, a diamond if 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 so. What's would have raised that? And Mike does have the back door hearts going for him. Mao is just blocking queen jack, blocking king queen, blocking diamonds, blocking straight draws. I think this probably works a ton, but Mike just has kind of too strong of a hand here. Yeah, I mean, it gives you a bluff, a nice bluff on a nine, for yeah. instance. But yeah, I mean, we'll see, we'll see. Eight of diamonds on the turn. Mao now with the three high flush draw. And still no one with a pair. Uh, would be really nice for Leonard if he had 
the, the, the sort of suits were reversed. Queen of diamonds would be very powerful on this turn. Three of diamonds, less so, yeah. has to be controlled in its frequencies. But my, uh, we can see that another barrel would potentially get this done. And just as we saw Sir Watts with the queen five, uh, the queen six or whatever it was, sort of check the turn, and Leonard pounced with his king high. I wonder what Sir Watts does with the a7. Checks back. And there's the queen on the river. Now someone has a pair. Yeah, and uh, by the way, it's you know, one of the ways that you realize equity is with these aggressive actions out of position. Sort of buying yourself some free cards. And I wonder whether Leonard goes for value now oftentimes going to be against the jack obviously in this instance we can see he's against the ace high but two pair kicker wouldn't play against queen 10 Seven or queen 50. eight yeah i was going to say i think i can see him making kind of a blocker value bet here goes on the small side here 750k if i'm not mistaken yep that's what he puts in yeah doesn't go too large obviously there is a straight that got there that that is in mike's range some of the time and Picks up another nice pot, pot going over the 100 big blind mark with that pickup and yeah, not going Mike Watson's way in the early stages. Now I'm putting some distance between them now. 20.68 million playing 12.25. 102 bigs for Mauer. Just shy of 60 bigs for Mike Watson. A reminder, guys, that the final mini oh, EPT Monte Carlo yeah. tournament takes place at 8.15 this evening and is our mini main event. $5.50 with a Barcelona package going to the winner plus added scoop tickets. Everyone who makes the final table is going to get a 1K scoop main event ticket. Plus there's the package up top. But remember, all these are added prizes. There's the cash prize pool as well. 40K guaranteed, 8.15 this evening. There is a mini EPT Monte Carlo tab in the Stars lobby, so you should be able to find it quite easily. Yeah, and so what's picking up a semi-premium in the big blind here. Very powerful in heads-up poker. King-queen off. After Mauer calls, Watson raises from the big blind to one million. Yeah, and again, it's worth emphasizing that big blind ante is in play each and every hand. So it's two and a half big blinds out there each time. That's why one of the reasons there employing this limping strategy because you've got to just limp call and fight for the chips in the middle with such a wide range of hands three million and i was just Ooh. about to say Ooh. this tank i mean this is this is a bit more the the gross org that i know and love finding the aggression time and time again raises to three million a three bet Looks, just looks so strong, doesn't it, Sam? Yeah, I mean, King Queen shriveling up just a little bit. Just a bit. The hands that, that do this for value, obviously going to continue, but now out of position and facing a sort of stronger range of hands or more polarized range of hands, not as exciting. Let's see what happens. This hand needs Mathis. 6.2 million in the pot. Oh, it's queen high. Yes, and the downside to this uh, limp re-raise is that you strengthen to what's range and this queen shriveling in value a little bit. Two spades out there and the six spades in hand. Now, Grozog having to decide how to continue. Perhaps wanting to put in a bet now to protect against some live cards. Can get value from worse. Or do we want to check back our worst queen and just make sure that we only play this hand for two streets? And Mike Watson, a very savvy individual, think on that check check. He's going to be aware that king queen goes up very greatly in value. There are obviously a huge number of straight draws, two flush draws. The nuts going to change on a lot of river cards, but we'll definitely... One would imagine want to put some money in here. 3.7, Sam. 3.7. Bit less. Bit less, I think. 3.6. Oh! 
absolutely no, drills but, it. But you, you, that, uh, that's credit to you. You, you, and, you and the Mad Dog in sync. <laughs> <laughs> We're so in sync right now. Got a call with the 10-8 suited there, buddy. Yep, uh, makes the call. 3.6, <laughs> yep, half, boom. Like, uh, Love that. And so, yeah, yeah, and look at this reaction. I, I mean, I don't want to be too... Leonard, just having a little bit uncomfortable. It, it realizes this pot is gonna is getting quite big, but not going, uh, using a time bank card. You know, we've got the topest pair. This is quite nice, I guess. Obviously, we, we know that the top pair is gonna be a call here. Not gonna raise, not gonna fold, but wanting to make it look like, okay, do I have an ace king or an ace jack? Giving himself some flexibility. Uh, you know, not wanting to tip off his hand strength to Sir Watts. And a brick river would be very, very good for Mike, Wat uh, Mike Watson here. He's got five and a half million behind. There's 13 and a half million in the middle. Yeah, this is a big old pot. You don't say. It is a brick river. Yeah, and shouldn't change too much. Shouldn't change too much. 5.45 million behind Watson. Jack nine, not a hand that, that Lennon can have all too often. And it may be that Sir Watts, has he got 5.5 .5 behind? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, could be all in time here for Mike Watson. King, queen. On. Yeah, there we go. And it's on Leonard Mal with, oh, get snapped. Snap cold. Snap cold, and that completely changes momentum. That is a huge swing. Now suddenly Mike Watson is the dominant chip leader. He's got 121 bigs as Leonard Mauer drops down to 43 bigs. It's a three to one chip lead, Sam. Yeah, unbelievable. And the first time that Mad Dog makes a pair, it's a top pair, semi coolering his opponent who made the aggressive play with the queen six and a big, big swing in the direction of Mike Watson. Mauer opened up a significant advantage, then came that hand, and now it's 24.3, plays 8.6. Yeah. Hand credit to Mike Watson for getting the chips in the middle with his sizing over two streets. And unfortunate for Mauer. No flush completing or straight completing on the river. Really just not much he could do about it once he flops the top pair. And Mike Watson now sitting with around 121 big lines. Leonard Mawa just 41, so we're getting a lot shorter in effective stack. Yeah, I mean, of course, still a lot of play, right? 41 yep, big blinds, absolutely. especially with the limping strategies and such like. But uh, yeah, it's it's undoubtedly Mike Watson that is the favorite to add the Monte Carlo EPT title to that PCA title on his resume. And welcome back to the booth, Mr. Joe Stapleton. 121 big blinds, heads up, huh? It's pretty good. Usually that's all of them. <laughs> <laughs> on to the next one, hand 109, guys. 41 minutes left on this level. The heads up continues. Yeah. One million. Grozog. Yeah, or Grozorg. I don't know. Grozorg. Yeah, it could be. I, again, Groz.org. Yeah, and here we go. Mike Watson with a, a strong hand limping in. I'm probably, I hope I'm not mispronouncing his screen name as well as his surname. <laughs> Just, I apologize to German, right. German viewers. Yeah, and, and yeah. Another queen, another top pair for Mike Watson. Yeah, not. Not cold deck this time, at least. Not going Lennon's way so far. The aggression paying off in the early stages of this confrontation. But here, strengthening his opponent's range. Going to continue. Yeah, and there's some chance Mike even raises here. King Jack, very strong. See, it's a very dry texture. We want to allow opponents to blast off. But... At the same time, we do want to have some raises, maybe just a, a low 
like a mixing frequency. I don't know. Mike, just having a think. I think you probably definitely see the check raise here more often than not. Just because oh, we well, do he's, in, we he's in position, right? Oh, uh, sorry, excuse me. Which which makes the raise, I think, out of position for sure with check raising. But uh, just deciding and just goes for the call. Yep. Keeping yes. his opponent wide, keeping all the... Oh, no, he raises. He does raise. Yeah, it does raise, and that's that. Yep. It's going to allow you some flexibility to bluff raise at 8, 9, and, and such. Like, and, uh, yeah, just sometimes you call your opponent, deny equity to ace, queen, give it a, 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 a you know, yeah. some of his continuation bets a tough time. Yeah, it's a balanced thing too, right, Sam? It's sort of like you do want to have some check raises with top pair. Might as well be with some of the better ones, right? Some of the king x, queen x kickers. Watson widens the gap. Yeah, and, a, and, a, and a, 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 yeah, a little bit of emotion from Leonard. Haven't seen that up to now. You can see how much he he wants it. Uh, very competitive individual, I'm sure. Just needs to keep his cool, which I, uh, by the way, I know he will do. Uh, very experienced tournament poker player. Just knows this is, you know, live by the sword, die by the sword. Some of these aggressive plays, you you just end up on the wrong end of things. So what's with the Dolly Parton? The Dolly Parton? Michael Jackson? Michael Jackson sang 9 to 5? Oh, yeah, Jackson 5. That's right. <laughs> I was just joking. You, know. you need to learn your ABC 1, 2, 3s. Of course. <laughs> now I hear in position. Definitely a texture that you probably just bet. Does it's just bet. We'll take that one down. Jack five got nothing going on. The Jackson Parton. The Jackson Parton. If only there'd been a crossover between those two. There must have been at some point. I bet you could dig up. <laughs> I'm sure there's something. What, you think they were both on Heal the World? No, no, what's, for, what, for what, sure. what was the one where Bob Dylan, what was the... Farm Aid? Yeah, and the, 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 the American version of Live Aid. Uh, I think it was Farm Aid. No, it's cool. It's something else. I mean, they had competing theme parks also. They, you had Dolly World oh, really? and the Neverland Ranch. I mean... I'm not going to... Please, let's not make any jokes. Let's, just go, let's go back to the... the uh, what, what would I make a joke about? <laughs> um, two people love children. <laughs> and King 10-10, ten, ten, two diamonds. Yes. Top pair again for Watson. Yeah, and you just see that, you know, it's a small sample size, but it makes a big difference in chips. Here again... Two pair for Mike Watson in position. And again, Leonard just with a frustrating combo. You can't really back into anything super strong. You can just be dead, even just against a king or semi-dead. But on the other hand, you know, can you just fold all your queen highs? Perhaps, yes. Perhaps not, you know. Um, And one more diamond on the turn. Kenneth Mas Diamond. Yeah, and so what's with a bit of a dilemma? You want to protect against a, a rogue diamond, which quite often your opponent's going to have. On the other hand, um, sort of the kicker plays against a king eight or king seven, which is occasionally going to be up against. Don't want to run into the stronger parts of your opponent's range. And for that reason, he just checks back and... Mao doesn't make anything on the river. Just deciding whether he needs to bluff this combination or not. How often is he unpaired? Can he, fo can he fold out something better, yes or no? That's also a big question. Can you get an ace high to fold? Can you get a two to fold if... Uh, so what's had five deuce or something like that and checks over to so what's a million chips in the middle Watson with a with a great SPR now this is fantastic 
It's got 25 times pot. 20, just shove. Why That's not? That's great. Yeah. And we'll go for value. Hundred thousand on the river. Yeah, and, and, and look at this. You see, see Leonard realizing. Okay, you know, does he bluff with a side? No. So therefore, I beat bluffs. Could I call with this? You think he'd be off queen six by now? You know, do I have a deuce ever? I value bet an eight myself. So, do I need to call this some of the time? It's just a very attritional tough technical game will fold the queen six again six doesn't seem like a great card um. so just like that we see leonard maua down to just 32 big blinds yeah very quickly got shallow that king queen hand just so so important king queen queen six now air all i need i'm not gonna oh sam green went on the rail there he is uh, I'm not going to uh, – I, I disagree with the premise of your question, but I'm going to ask it genuinely because I think it's it's asked arrogantly, but I think uh, it's worth explaining. We're getting an arrogant question. An arrogant question. Okay. Air all I need says, what he thinking? He has nothing. Lull. <laughs> now, we can we can mock this question, it's which I'm doing a little bit. Yeah, but it's, it's not exactly Shakespearean the ways. Right, but <laughs> it's a little, asked a little arrogantly. So – Sam, if you, I know that you were just sort of explaining that, but maybe just break it down that queen well, high, even though it is nothing in your home game. Yes. Heads up against one of the best in the world. We beat bluffs uh, and we lose to value. So it's a, a bluff catcher. And this, yeah, I guess so what's versus a raise. You have to be very, very good player to consider calling there. Yeah. You, you, yeah, it's you, on a level we were not think we are not thinking of. I'll include myself in there. Yeah, absolutely. So going for a three bet here. Is that correct? Yeah, and does three bet the ace nine suited pair versus a strong suited ace? And this is just a hand at thirty big blinds that Leonard's going to want to jam. Yep. It's going to take some time to compose himself. Very strong holding in heads up poker. Some of the bluffs have two overcards, and you just want to force those out. Yep, this is just an easy get in now. One imagines. One. Oh, oh, it just calls. Wow, just wants to play it in position. Ah, that's really interesting. Yeah. So it shouldn't be too overconfident there. 25 big blinds. Guess wanting to keep in the weaker parts of so what's his range. And once again, top pair from Mike Watson. Yeah, very, very nice outcome for Sir Watts. Yeah, it's the kind of board as well where the sixes need to get a little bit sticky as well, Sam, right? If you're going to flat sixes here pre, it just feels like you're going to want to call a lot of the continuations from, from Mike Watson. What's the size here, though? Um, in a three-bat pot, you imagine the continuation here going to be around a quarter, but given this sort of 8-9-4 dynamic, the fact it was defended pre, maybe he wants to size up a little bit. 1.5. 1.5. Yep, that makes sense. Closer to half. Yeah, and, and Leonard now wishing he shoved, maybe. I mean, it's just not exciting. Just because, again, visibility. Yeah. Hey, hey yep. Stapes, a little bit of visibility question. Callback. Callback yeah, to yeah, visibility. Yeah. Uh, you know, down the streets. Six is actually interfering with some of the bluffs, some of the give ups. On the other hand, you know, the status quo, the same versus an ace, an ace queen, an ace king, you know, uh, and such like you are still ahead. Whether some of those work in a check. Yeah, you can see Leonard just not got much maneuverability on the turn, does just call. Low visibility, low maneuver. It's like driving in a snowstorm. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> the hail is coming down. The blizzard is upon him. The foghorns are out. White out conditions. <laughs> King of clubs on the turn here. Yeah, and less than pot behind. So with the ace nine, obviously very occasionally we have got outdrawn against a king ten or a king queen. But we've sort of created a situation where the nine's going to be the nuts on pretty much every turn. Yep. Got to bang And look it at Leonard, now. by the way, 
zoned in, really watching Mike Watson. Even though live tells you wouldn't imagine it's too much of a thing. Yeah, there he goes. Just looking for any extra info, maybe even. Yeah, and it's just six it's is over. no good. Yeah, six is just six, five, six, seven. Yeah, it's just not two good cards to have in your hand. And, oh. and, and you know, maybe, again, down to 16 big blinds. But, you know, I would have been eliminated on that hand, I think. So, you know, give him, give him some credit, Leonard Mao. Leonard Mao uh, really Mawa. up against it now. Will it be Mawa Power or Mawa Shawa? Mawa needs Moa chips if he wants to remain in this tournament. 16 big blinds now going into hand 113. Yeah, and it's it's been yeah. domination from Mike Watson nine. over the last sort of 10. Uh, you know, we, we reached, I guess, how is it? This only hand 113. A lot has changed over a very short number of hands. Yeah, it took us over three hours to lose the first two players and under that same amount of time to lose the next couple. Nine deuce playing five, three. Watson in position, hits a three. Top pair though for Mawa for once. Yeah. Well, top pair and it's good for once. Yeah, been a while since flop was favorable for the young German. Check, check. Deuce on the turn. Yeah. And Two pair now from Mawa. Big interaction there with Sawatz picking up the straight Yes. Draw. It's like Danish Poker Boy says, either go all in on big cards or go home. Lel. Sound advice. Yep. Chapter five, Super System. 750. That's a good turn here from Mawa. Yeah, and going for the overbet. And Swartz so maybe a little surprised to see this. See, not going to go anywhere. Can be ahead and got some nutty, nutty outs. Just going to take his time. Make an assessment of what Leonard could be doing this with. So not wanting to tip off anything about the strength of his own hand. And Watson will make the call. Yeah, big river incoming here. Mauer with just slightly more than pot behind. Yeah, again, you notice the... Ten of diamonds completes a potential flush draw, but the, not much else. Yeah, the sizing to set up a small overbet, small overbet. You know, they're very astute at making sure they can get the money in when they want to get the money in. Mao not going to be over the moon to see that river cut. But, again, may just feel that his hand's too strong. The what diamond you? aspect of it? There's the all-in. Yeah. And so what's with a pretty flimsy bluff catcher just in the sense that he's going to have stronger hands than this does have a diamond does beat a five seven a six seven clubs and the like might a bluff come from a hand like five eight though what properties does he want Definitely wants to die. I mean, one way to look at it is you just block two pairs, block straights, block flushes. That would be the the reason to call here, right? Could this hand, you know, given that the the four, the three, are all pretty much the same, you don't have a nine too often. By the way, Mike Watson is thinking about hero calling here for what in his mind would be the win and the title. Well, he's not thinking about raising. <laughs> And lets it go, comes to the right decision against Leonard Mauer's actual holding. Mauer back up over 20 bigs. Mauer power. Mauer power. Mauer power indeed. 22 big blinds and the will to continue for our German friend.
The whole of Deutschland is behind you, my friend. Deutschland. You know, I, had a, Deutschland. I had a question. Super system was, was referenced moments ago. I've never read Super System. Probably not a shock. Um, does he ever explain? Have, have you ever read a book? I've read <laughs> a book, yes. <laughs> Dr. Seuss? A, but not a lot. Sure, guy. If, it doesn't, if it's not written by Lee Child and star <laughs> Jack Reacher, I probably haven't read it. Sure. <laughs> Does he ever explain what the super system means? No. You you mean is there like a final you reach the culminating chapter? And he's and then... like, you're probably wondering why this poker book is called Super System, two words that don't appear anywhere in the game of poker. Yeah, that's true. The, the, the last page just says, You gotta play big hand strong Lamau. Yeah. Give him the keys of the Lambo. Give him the keys to the Lambo, Lamau. It's super slash system too, which is even more confusing to me. Wow. Say it with me, chat. Endlich normaler Leute. I have no idea what that means, by the way. I can't condone or, or support sure. whatever. If we're removed from air, we'll know it was, yeah, was exactly. bad words. Wow. Look at that. A little flamboyant bat there with the, with the wheel draw. Yeah, not much idle chit-chat between these two. Job <laughs> in hand kind not of guys. chit-chat idle or otherwise? I mean, I would love it if they started goofing off. Yeah, just, you know. Yeah. You call, if he'd said, if he'd gone all in and then said, you call, it's going to be all over. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit jealous of someone's. What a career. A little. What a career. Just a, just a. Kick something. Cut a race. Mad what? dog. King Mad seven. Dog. Mawa. Yeah, it's Jack just. Jack three off. Woof. That's it, a real woof. It's just like, phew. come on, guys. Jack three off. Woof. Two life cards. Go into a flop. The Jackson, when two of the brothers dropped out of the group. It's just Janet, LaToya, and Michael. <laughs> the Jackson, <Right. laughs> Jackson three. Middle pair for Sawats, King Kicker. This could be the what? Korean butter. G. No? Okay, that's fine. They're not all winners. I'm, I'm okay with that. Oh, you, you've got the wrong I'm not smart enough for your jokes. You know this. Watson usually has a bet here, guys. Very strong second pair. There are some there are some second pairs you check back here, guys, but usually the stronger ones. Just it, here's one for it. you. I reference the, the discreet charm of the bourgeois Jack Three. <laughs> yes. How about that? Love that. <laughs> love that. We had a bouge, bougie guy, and yeah, I love that. You know, you could do Brunel references to the cows come on. That's, that's fine. <laughs> I just uh, except I lost the entire rest of the audience. <laughs> I gained a Sam. It's just when and you lost do. It's just when else. you do the Marvel Universe. I'm out. You know, like <laughs> anything, anything from uh, you know, experimental cinema of the 1950s. I'm, I'm <laughs> I, I got you, dog. Joshin in Twitch chat says, "Ich mag die Kommentatorin. Ich mag du, meine Freund." Mawa on the button, six deuce off. The Deuce Bigelow. Is that one that's in your range, Deuce Bigelow? Yeah, I've okay. seen it. I've All right, seen very it. good. Have I seen it? Yeah, I must have seen it at some point. We, we saw it. We, that was in an age when we saw every movie. Sure. It, this is the sort of movie where you could just watch the trailer and you get all six good jokes <laughs> yeah. in the movie. There's really no need Except to Except for, like, the three R-rated ones they couldn't show you. Right. Isn't that what they did in South Park? And Rob Schneider is yeah. the Rob. stapler. <laughs> Rob Schneider. I got a Rob Schneider's brother anecdote. Can you guys want? Okay, cool. <laughs> 19 big blinds from Mawa. You're such an LA guy, aren't you? Such a West Coast guy. Such an LA guy. It's like, you know, I imagine your life's like the player. You're just turning up at parties and, go, you know, everywhere you go, you always go for just lunch. I'm on, pitching movies yeah, everywhere Yeah, you just go, go, go yeah. for lunch on Sunset Boulevard and Picturing, bumping into Julia uh, Roberts. Bruce Willis and Julia Roberts for the two leads. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a sequel to The Graduate. <laughs> Mrs. Robinson is, uh, she's back. She's in a home. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh. oh, wow. 
The three bet all in. King five off. It's that, it's that sneaky one that just every once in a while it sneaks in there as a shove, doesn't it, Sam? Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, those are, it's one of those weird combinations, guys, when you're looking at the old charts. It's always a weird shove with King 5 off for some reason. It's wacky. These GTO kids. I'm going to give you a tip, Sam, right now, because a, a show just came out with its season three. You can go back and watch the first two seasons. Sure. It's called The Other Two. Yeah. Hilarious. Oh, yeah? What's it's hilarious. Up? It's on uh, HBO Max in the States. I don't know what it would be. For yeah, you, I, I, I might have that. I'm now TV, I think I got access to yeah. HBO. Yeah, The Other Two. Okay, I'll check You won't be disappointed. Love that. The other two, writing that down. That's out there for everyone. And a stand-up special just came out from my friend Greg Warren. Uh, it's on YouTube. It's free. It's called The Salesman. Two great recommendations for comedy lovers out not, there. Not for right now, though. No, 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 no. Right now. now. It's almost Whoa. over. I mean, you, know, yeah, yeah, you want to see. So this will be over in one to four so hours. This could be, yes. You want to see Mike Watson and Lennon Mauer. Viewership just plummeted, Joe. Thanks for that, bud. Yeah, they're all switching to YouTube. But we're on YouTube. Ha-ha, <laughs> surprise. <laughs> <laughs> the algorithm knows you want more poker. You can picture and picture it. King eight, deuce, three diamonds, no diamonds. This is what we like. No In one with nothing, not a nowhere. But, yes. But we do have position and some kind of betting lead. 250K. Let's just put something, a piece of lint out there. Exactly. 250K. Oh, I'll take it. I'll take it. Drills the bed size again. No sweat, guys. It's boring, but it's part of my life. There it goes. Yep. Nothing he can do there. Watson just needs to give it up. The title on the line. And a first title for Mawa, a second title, and at least a second title. A, a second EPT sure. title for Mike Watson. Sure. I think he still has the PCA trophy somewhere. A feat that definitely does. Only three other people in history have accomplished. Sure. I mean, it is pretty strange. Now, granted, these things happen no matter what, but Maria came in here on day two and she was like, I went broke. Mike Watson, he got me. And uh, I was thinking of anti-railing him, but actually, <laughs> I'm going to... Anti-railing I'm gonna, him. I'm going to anti-anti-rail him. <laughs> and he's probably going to win the whole thing. And, well, he either won it or he is dang close. This is how badly you run. You anti-rail someone and they, they win their second yeah. time. <laughs> like lightning <laughs> strikes them a second time. But she wasn't anti-railing. She was anti-anti-railing. She decided to lean into it. Yeah, I feel like he's not someone that you can... It's hard to root against. I mean, yeah. he, he bashes me up. He beats me up. He three bets me and four bets me. And even I don't anti-rail him. Uh, big turn card here. Nice turn card. Again, for Leonard turning the two pet. Checks again. A little bit sneaky. With the gut shot and the ace high. Might not be a hand we want to be bluffing with, Benny. Two pair, still good. Although, it's an annoying board to have two pair on yeah. sometimes. Me means we're going to just go for a smaller sizing if we go for a value bet. So we block... Hey, hey, Sam. I was having two pairs. When I first me. started learning about this game, yeah, they used to say, Six don't minutes. base your bet size based on the hand, of the strength wow. of your hand. You go, he's gone for potty, recognizing that the, the two pair is strong. There's not going to be too many eights. And that seems to be not a thing anymore. It seems like you do base your, your bet size based on the strength of your hand these days. Sure. I mean, you want to put in the amount of money that your hand is worth. That, yeah. That's for sure. And so you want to have a, a somewhat flexible strategy. And then, you know, it's, it's, it's actually a sort of stylistic choice. Some people, I, th like, I tend to say to myself, okay, I can have two bet sizes here. Or I can have three bet sizes. And then once I've decided how many bet sizes I have, I place my hand strength into one of those. And I'm quite rigorous with that. I'm quite disciplined with that. So as not okay, to give so away... Okay, so hold on. Because sometimes the parlance that people use, I think, is a little confusing. So we say, I can have three bet sizes here. Kings for Watson. 
Yes. I can have three butt sizes here. You meaning I, you should have three butt sizes here? Well, uh, I, if I was a, a genius computer, I might have seven bet sizes and be capable of executing that strategy. But I'm quite strict on myself, and I sort of, I call it like bucketing. I put it into one of the two or three bet sizes I have. Other players play a strategy where they bet their exact hand, mm -hmm. right? And they say, no one's going to pick up on that. I don't play them often enough. And they, they, they approach things differently. So it's a, a stylistic choice. You could have a strategy where on every river, you're going to have one bet size, and it's going to contain your strongest hands and your weakest hands. And then when you get raised, you're like, Boom, I've actually got the nuts in, in the size. Okay. You know, and it's, it's, it's how you want to approach situations. It's the same, like pre-flop, most of us have one opening sizing. Some people now are having two opening sizes or three opening sizes or a limp and an open size, right? Three opening sizes, but they're sort of randomized, right? Well, again, Or is it you, always you, when my, my opening size with aces is, random, is bet size number three? My yeah, opening. well, exactly. You might want to have aces and and your weakest hand in the bigger opening size. So you're encouraging them to fold or jam or whatever it might be. But there's some sort of balance to it, I guess is what I'm saying. Well, again, it just depends on the individual. I think these top level guys are gonna try and have some kind of balance strategy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some people, I, I once heard a very, very good player who I won't announce on that, say you wanna have an arrogant strategy. I was like, oh, I only wanna Ooh. have two. He was like, I wanna have an arrogant strategy where you do have three or four flop sizes. Because the thing is, let's suppose you had four flop sizes. It's very hard to, a lot of interaction here, by the way, uh, for Leonard. So yeah, we're getting a little bit technical, but it is an interesting thing to think about. Yeah. Uh, of how you want to proceed. And, and it does definitely vary even amongst the top guys. But uh, for instance, Mike Watson, someone I think of as very structured in his approach. And actually he's gonna go for a lead here, the raise from Sawats, meaning that he's going to have a few less of these lower combinations. Hey, Joe. A little yes. bit. You know how Sam says that he, had, he has three sizes? Yeah. When is somebody going to tell him it's called No Limit Texas Hold'em? <laughs> sure. Yeah, don't, don't, don't be chained up. Free <laughs> size <laughs> Texas Hold'em. You, you want to bet this, small, this, medium, way, or large? Can I just say, this is a perfect example. You might want to have no leads here, right? You might want to just say, I'm keeping my range together, and I'm playing checks only. Someone else might say, actually, you're handcuffing yourself unnecessarily. It's a board that's good for you. But, do you, okay, someone else might say, I want to have three different lead sides. When I, when I flop a straight, I want to bet big right. and two big. And you're like, well, aren't you going to give away? Like, what's going to happen to your checks if now I you're... I mean, if you're never going to lead any... Can you just check dark all the time, right? Like... I know nobody does that, but if well, you're if you're I mean, literally that a predictable, lot people, a lot of people kind of do. If but you're that predictable, well, you're then also giving you you know again you don't know whether I have a lead. Right, you might not have any leads, but you don't want your opponent to know that. Yeah, exactly. okay. So it's, uh, as we, it's funny because as we could talk, we talk about it. You can just see what a complex, difficult. Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. Even even approaching different situations, the you know different people have different ideas of how how that should go. You know. Mala is going to limp this time with the Jackson 5. So close. A, B, C. <laughs> Dolly Wood and Mike Jams. Wow, 27. Love that. Mala folds. And Mala's chipped his way back up. He was at 27 bigs before the start of that hand. Now he's 25. Certainly a big difference between 25 and 17 where he was yes. about 20 minutes ago. Yeah, and, and nice psychologically. Again, I don't think someone as strong as Grozol going to be too influenced by sort of the momentum shift or, uh, you know, has just played the stack size in front of you. But it is nice to, you know, win a few hands on the bounce and, and you know, keep your head above water and not feel like um, everything's going to what's his way. Uh, Mustafa Ferris says, uh, Watson looks like Ray Fines. Has this been talked about yet? It hasn't. And it's just bad enough. To be a good bad lookalike, I'll well, give you. I'll I'll grant it. Oh, he needs to win one more EPT. If he wins three, then the, we will make a movie about him and we'll put Ray Fines in it. He looks like a young Ray Fines. Though. It's it's funny, doesn't look, he, like, doesn't he, look like Ray Fines is actually like 65 now. When, when he, he three bets uh, Sam Grafton, he turns him into the English patient. <laughs> <laughs> Jack nine four two diamonds, diamond diamond from Mawa. If you caught my Instagram story. Yesterday, Makita's turning three, the suited Jordan into his trademark hand. Really? He, yeah, because obviously on the 100K final, he opened three deuce. Um, and uh, he, he bubbled 
He opened three deuce suited under the gun, Ike Haxton defending the big blind. And he just shoved Jack 5 6 Ooh. with one diamond. And uh, Ike called with King Jack, and the river was a four. Nice. To, to burst the bubble in the 25. This is how we're playing high stakes poker. Wow. So, this baby flush draw, obviously, we can turn some straight draws, but we do want some flushes in the check call. Maybe we want it to be our least strong ones. Eight. Interesting card there. A card that's very good for, in general, good for Mike Watson. Um, although some a size will check back. And the wheel interaction to go with the flush draw for Lennon. Spade and diamond in hand for Sir Watts, giving him a lot of flexibility on rivers. Blocking some continues. Decides to check back. Hey, it's the five of diamonds. Do you want the wheel or do you want the flush? Both yeah. are good. Gets all of it there. Wow. Wonder if maybe a three high flush draw is one we want to bet up front rather than check raise and save stronger flush draws for the check raise. Mm -hmm. Maybe. I understand this reference. Yeah. You want you like. Goes for That's a big blind. Ah, goes for a block as if he has a 9-10. Trying to induce a raise. And so what's, by the way, blocks the wheel, this is blocks fun. the flush. Yep. This is cool. Yep. I like this. I love this. And he Mostly because I understand it. He has such a great hand to actually turn his hand into a bluff here. It's just such a cool river for him to just go big. Just makes it like. Yeah, I don't know where the mad dog. This is, this is if, if you've got a mad dog and you put out one big blind, sometimes that. There it is. I was going to say 800, but he pumps in the nine. Yeah, and Leonard just deciding whether he wants to go bet, three bet. Like, this sizing, is this sizing a king high flush, or is this sizing just a two pair, in which case we want to jam? So Leonard, considering the all-in here now, I think he is going to go for it here. Hashtag induce. Yeah. I think it's a little bit risky, but we are heads up here. You know, we're not we're not dealing with a, a cutoff opening range here. And I think he's going to just spring the trap. It's also going to put your opponent off making light value raises against you. Okay. And, of course, you can get heroed. On him. Yeah. There it is. Very nicely played from the online crusher. Yeah, absolutely awesome little sizing there. The induce just looking so sweet. I don't know, if, if I'm Mike and I have that combo in that particular spot, if you're not pulling the trigger there, when are you doing it, for real? He's just got such a great hand to turn into a bluff there when you're blocking so much. And Mawa closes the gap slightly between himself and Watson, up over 30 bigs now. Yeah, and very, very nice because obviously a bigger bet well, not necessarily, but very likely a big, bigger bet wouldn't have have got a raise from Sir Watts. Might have just got a fold there. So picks up a substantial pot, making the most of his flush. But seven deuce always get beat pipped. Yeah, maybe maybe it does. Now uh, with the hammer. Yeah, I think with uh, with the big one antis here, Sam probably defending 100% from at least as a limp, right? Yeah. Snowman's for Watson. Sorry, defending, limping, I should say. V pipping 100%. Mm -hmm. And that is black chips. Those are 100K each. And seven deuces going into the muck. Card exposed. I didn't see it. <laughs> Come on, Mike. Information is Jeez, power. Mike. It's a game of impartial information. If Mike Watson finds out he was folding seven deuce there pre, he's going to run him over. Clean it up, Watson. <laughs> Clean it up. Didn't Mike come from some kind of brain trust university, that Timex and... Like what, actual Waterloo? university or like... University is, he got, is he a Waterloo alumni? Wasn't there a whole... That sounds familiar. Bunch. Is that a early sto a story of the early poker years that this was a hotbed? Somebody in chat, uh, it seemed credible. Sometimes you can tell when people are full of uh, 
nonsense. Nonsense. It's incredibly sad. Uh, Mike Watson, both he and his, his father were excellent baseball players. Wow. That one seemed real to me. He does wear a Blue Jays cap pretty often. Did you go to university, Sam? Yeah, 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 I did, yeah. Where else did you go? I went to Sheffield as an undergrad in Nottingham for my master's. Wonderful. Yeah. What was your master's in? Critical theory. Oh, of course. Yeah. Well, that's banned in most of America. Uh, sure. Western <laughs> Marxism is <laughs> destroying <laughs> Poland. <laughs> um, check, check. Ten shout, the shout out to the Frankfurt School. Um, <laughs> decided to move into critical game theory. Yeah, yeah. We do not like critics. <laughs> Fair tens on the turn. Maui checks over to Watson, drawing quite thin. What would Jean Baudrilla think about this? Uh, what would Michel Foucault think about this dynamic turn card? Uh, uh, all I know is that names like that just make people in America uncomfortable. Sure. They, any, any dropped consonants, we're out. Check cool. Derrida. Let's go for some value here. Jack 10, looking pretty strong. Obviously, kicker doesn't play tens and threes, queen kicker. But quite often, Mike gonna have kind of king high. Ace high. Tom Poker in chat says, I'm Watto's best mate, a dreadful baseball player. <laughs> Either way, it wouldn't be the first time I've been bluffed. Oh, and once again, we're in a situation where, uh, what do you mean he's thinking of calling here? He's got nothing, Lel. Yeah, again, you just need to, to call. Yeah, sometimes we've rivered a six. Again, just I think the two is, a, is not, not, the, you know, not the card we want. Yeah. I think, long story short, guys, what you think is no hand is actually a hand in heads up poker. Queen high, king high, ace high, actually considerably stronger. When you're playing ranges this wide, High cards have a lot of value, and you gotta you gotta figure that out if you, out if you want to become a good heads up player. That's just how it goes. It's the adjustment you have to make. Hand number one two six now, so thirty three of the blinds effective to start the hand. Leonard Mawa, the one with the shorter of the two stacks, of course, has a very nice combination in position. Honestly, it wouldn't be mad to see a raise or a limp here. You probably do a little bit of both. We are slightly on the deeper side. Probably going to be limping King-10 suited more frequently as we get shallower because, of course, it's one of those combinations we don't want to get blasted off. We want to play it from position. As Sam was saying, you're just going to limp call a bunch because you want to play a bunch of hands in position uh, with the additional dead money of the big blind ante in the pot already. And speaking of big blind ante, Leonard Mawa in the big blind this hand. We see more shirts in poker. I know that's a big... You feel like this is the case, states? You know, do you feel like with it, a bit it's, more? It's, it's come bit, around a little bit, bit that bit, people respect the game a little bit, more. Bit, yeah, the the, the 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 legacy of Mike Six. But you know what I mean. It used to be all hoodies and trackies and yeah. We went more. to like the basketball jersey phase for a while. Oh, now. I love so that. Now shout, it's a bit of a mix. shout out to Full Tilt and um, <laughs> <laughs> Mike Watson with King Queen. I'd love suit. to see Mike Watson if he just. If he just changes on the break and comes back in a Phoenix Suns journey. Ace that four for Mawa. <laughs> Actually, he might go on tandem one. By the way, two, two strong holdings. Mm -hmm. uh, 33. Holding. He's just going to ship it, yep. Oh. Like Charles Barkley versus Larry Bird. Uh, this might get cold, guys. It's for 33 big blinds. That's a lot of big blinds, though, Sam. I mean, I, I guess we have to call King Queen. I mean, I, I, it's not... Exciting. Yeah, I mean, I think technically yeah. some of the shoves here might actually be some suited connectors as well at some frequency. As, so it's just starts to tip in the favor of the call for the king queen, I think, a lot of the time. Yeah, so what's kind of hating it? It does feel like it's going to be this kind of hand a lot. That's a call. And this could be for the title. Yeah, this is a big old moment. Mawa ahead. Only very slightly, though. Takes a sip of water. Yeah, his work is done. 
It's all up <laughs> yeah. to the poker yeah. gods now. Both players on their feet. Forty K on the line and more importantly probably for these guys, the Monte Carlo EPT title. That is correct. Wow. Well, that is a pretty good flop for Maua. Mike Watson cannot <laughs> win the entire pot. Oh, we can go wow. runner, runner, chop. Wow. Oh, my God. Pay <laughs> up, Watson. I'm thinking of a flop, yeah, guys. Oh, yeah, <laughs> then that'll do it. Right. Sure. Yeah. Wow. I mean, you can't uh, teach those sorts of instincts. Wow. Leonard Maua. It is the Maua Paua Awa. I, I, I haven't seen, we haven't seen that in a long time. That, that's quite remarkable, right? Flop, <laughs> flopping dead? <laughs> flopping someone stone dead. Dead to a chop, I guess, is the only way to be technically correct there. But yeah, um, Six, nine, flopping <laughs> the joint. Maua with 56 big blinds now. 73 for Mike Watson. Game on. Very much game on. And that was the last hand of the level. These two are going to take a well-earned 20-minute break. And we'll get the exact chip counts as soon as they know what they are. And Mike Watson, one board away from his second title right there. And not only did he not win it, but Leonard Maua is now in strong contention chip counts 18.7 million for mike watson 14.1 for mala this could go for a while coming up in the break between the lines a collaboration between poker stars and oracle red bull racing four episode series that explores the parallels between winning strategies at an iconic EPT final table and tactical decisions at memorable Formula One races. It's got EPT champions, F1 drivers. Don't take my word for it. Check out the trailer. See you in 20. During a race, you don't have time for nerves. It's really at moments like this where the best players separate themselves. The high risk strategy calls, we live on them all the time. You can lose your whole stack in one hand. The race literally goes by in a heartbeat. It's totally engrossing. Red Bull, find a way to the front. This isn't just one man, one machine. This is about everybody working behind the scenes to get a race win. This is crucial. The first of the front runners to come into the pit. I tried to be always the boss on the table. I go in. I then send shots on him. You gotta be perfect. You cannot make any mistake. You have to work under a lot of pressure all the time. I have no words, James. I saw some come back, but I don't remember a story like this. Max Verstappen wins the Belgian Grand Prix from 14th on the grid. One of the most dominant races we've ever had in Formula One. This is going to be such a sweet victory. Five-handed at the main event final table. Blind still 60,000, 120,000 with a 20,000 ante. Now's when the real poker starts. Kalamusa folds. His fellow countryman Adrian Alan is going to get frisky and raise it up with 9-6 of diamonds. Sure, why not? Round to the blinds. Asan Umarov folds in the small. Jimmy Guerrero in the big. Ace Queen. Jimmy likes his hand. Jimmy thinks we should play for a bigger pot. Jimmy's gonna three bet. The chip leader re raises to 850,000. 
What's the lamb doing? Forbed alert. He has looked at his cards. Or actually, I don't hate this move. His hand isn't strong enough to call, but his stack is strong enough to forbet. One million eight hundred thousand. Jimmy's girlfriend T played this event. She finished 14th. Quite the sweat now. Guerrero out of position. He calls. We're going to the flop. Well, Jimmy has flopped a gut shot and a flush draw. He is almost a 9 to 1 favorite here. That was a hell of a flop for Ace Queen with the Queen of Hearts. He's checked it to Alan, who had the pre-flop betting lead. He continues for 1.5 million. And that is a terrible flop for 9-6 of diamonds. Guerrero calls the C-bet. And I think 6-9 should just give it up here. Most of the time, he's going to have less equity than Hillside Property in Pompeii. Four of clubs on the turn, pairing the board. Alan has less than a pot-sized bet behind. Guerrero still playing in flow. Checks it a second time. Alan checks behind. Let's hope for his sake that is the white flag being waved. A third four hits the river. Guerrero checks a third time. Brilliant. And Adrian Alan moves all in. A huge bluff. Now, this is the perfect run out to get folds, but I have no idea what Atlanta's repping. The two biggest stacks at the table go to battle, and then this happens. Only six combo, yeah? Kings or aces, yeah? Got broke here. Jimmy's got the right idea. There aren't a lot of combos of aces and kings out there. Yeah, well. Yeah, wow. Unfortunately, he is not beating Ace King as a bluff. Tough spot for him. Even tougher for that coffee stir. Sorry. He finds a call here. A land's out. Show me if I could. Maybe. Huh? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Excuse me? Yeah, I don't know. Time has been called. They'll put Jimmy Guerrero on a 60 second countdown. My French is a little rusty, but I'm pretty sure he's complimenting his opponent's play. He knows this is a bluff most of the time. It's either that or a slow played monster every once in a while. Which is it, Jimmy? Sure, bluff. Sure. <laughs> Very nice bluff. Say what? J'ai pas les couilles de payer, putain. Just dame. Ouais, je te jure. Vraiment? Ouais. He shows it. Ouais, je sais, il bluff. Aïe! Je sais, il bluff. Just dame. Ouais, je sais. He's ironic. 1,092 is the exact amount of my mini bar charges last year. That little, huh? Blind 60,000, with a 20,000 ante. Action folded to one of the short stacks, Oren Rosen from Israel. Ace Jack of Diamonds. Oren's gonna be Oren. I oh, know you need it. We need the triangle, yeah. Give him, give him. <laughs> yeah. I told you. I told you. Rosen has shoved. Jan Bendik with Ace King. Reshoving time. All in. Boom. Ace Umarov folds. Wow. <laughs> and Guerrero's out as well. So Rosen at risk and dominated. 
Our highest finishing is rarely before this. Also went broke to a dude named Yan. Season six. Hashtag fun facts. Oren's gonna have to get lucky here, or his friends are gonna have spent longer at airport security than they will at this final table. Well, that flops. He's Rosen's equity dropped to 16%. He needs a jack, or running diamonds, or running Broadway cards. That takes away all the back doors. A few chop opportunities, but ultimately Rosen is looking for a jack on the river to double up through Bendik. It's a six, and he's out in sixth. Nah, bummer, Rosen crew. It was probably a grace period in the parking garage, at least. Yan's wife, Angelica, is pretty stoked. Well, Bendix now playing a stack of five million, while Oren Rosen cashes for nearly 171,000 euros. Pretty sweet score for a guy just taking a shot. Guerrero with aces. Jimmy's getting rockets. Hey, remember that guy with the toothpick from Uncle Buck? Classic. So this is a raise from the button to 350,000. The land is folded. Action on Bendik in the big blind. 350. He's got king seven of hearts. Sure, why not? He calls. Ace, ace. King, seven. Bendik flops two pair. Oh, man. This is what I like to call a fang. And the A-N-G stands for ace is no good. Action's been checked to the pre-flop aggressor. Guerrero set to continue. It looks like a great flop for aces. 375,000. I say the move here is to just call. I don't think this is going to be a call. Yeah, yeah, and Bendik has made it pretty clear that he marches to the beat of a different drummer boy. He check raises to 925k. I mean, clearly that's what attracted Angelica to him in the first place. How's Guerrero going to respond? He can get in real trouble here if he thinks Bendik's going crazy with just a king. Counting out a re-raise. That's 1.85 million. Holy. Thanks, Porter. Bendix shoves and Guerrero snap calls. Wow, I am surprised to see Aces get it in there so happily. Yeah, nice hand. Give me a full. Yeah. Nice hand. I got to. A quarter of the time, he's going to catch up. Team Bendek hoping that kings and sevens hold here. A turn cards are deuce. Additional outs for Guerrero. Juice or four. Or an ace. The river card is a queen. Nice hand. <laughs> nice hand. Bendek doubles up. Now playing close to 8 million. Blinds 100,000, 200,000 with a 25,000 ante. Alan calls on the button in the small blind with eight. Bendik raises from the big blind with Queen Jack. Holding. Alan shoves. I call. And Bendit calls, we're off to the races already! He said he was a gambler, and the story checks out. That is one way to take the edge from a GTO player. This is for the title, everybody. Flip. At least in poker, your physique has got nothing to do with how well you flip. The flop. Is crunchy, all clubs. If the flop's the first hurdle, Alain just caught a toe. Lots of additional outs for Bendik. 
The turn card is another club. That'll do it. Wow. Bendik doubles up with a flush. Play on, players. Well, Yan has narrowed the gap between them substantially. Back to work, Adrian. Back where we started. The land's got Ace King. Ooh. He just calls. Bendik with a small pocket pair. All in. He shoves. Gets called, and once again, we're flipping for the title. A standard flip arrived at in a very not standard way. <laughs> well, now I guess I know why he limped. If Ace King gets there, it's over, and Adrian Alan is an EPT champ. So Jack Five Deuce flops, six is a holding. Opportunity number two for the Frenchman to put this away. The turn card is a queen that gives Alan additional outs. An ace, king, or ten on the river sees the Frenchman ship the tournament. It's a three. Bendik doubles up again. This has got to be frustrating. And for the first time at this final table, Jan Bendik's taken the chip lead. Yeah, boys. Two chances, two misses for Alan. I mean, you're supposed to win half your flips. What the H? Pocket eights. Here we go again. He raises to 525,000. We may be going again. Bendix got tens. This isn't a flip. Here comes the re-race. Bendik makes it 1.65 million. No, oh, now that he's got chips, he's not all jam happy. Well, they are pretty deep. It doesn't have to go all in pre-flop. Alan just calls, and he'll get to play the flop in position. And he flops a set. Maybe. Just maybe the ace will save Bendek from getting stacked here. I don't know. The ace might be a scare card, but I'm pretty sure Bendek's fear receptors went out with popcorn ceilings. He's continued the flop for 1.6 million. Alan calls. Will that slow Bendek down? Nothing has slowed him down thus far. The turn card is a 10. That's ball game. A cooler developing here, set over set. Now Bendik finally slows down. Bendik has checked it. Alan is betting. 1.5 million, a small bet into a huge pot. Really small. How much you play more? This is a terrible Hollywood or just a plain old D gaff. Then help. I am leaning toward the former. Alan breathing heavy. I think it's because he expects to have the best hand pretty much always. Bendik loading up for a check raise. He makes it 4.25 million. Everything in his hand has been standard up until this point. Against another player, Alan may not be loving this, but Bendik plays everything super fast, even two pair hands. Just a call from Alan, and he's gonna need those quads again. Oh man, I didn't even think of that. Nobody gets quads twice. Complete brick on the river. All in. Bendix shoves. A land calls and it's over. Let's everybody take a second to let this sink in. The grand final champion has been crowned. Jan Bendix has won the EPT 12 grand yes. final. Yes. Yes. And France cannot believe it. EPT 9 player of the year. Three time main event finalist. And on his third occasion, he is a winner. Good game,
He becomes the first ever Slovakian EPT champion. And he will wave that flag with pride. Big heart, big gambler, big title. Fast forward seven years, and here we are with the 2023 PokerStars EPT presented by Monte Carlo Casino. And we are heads up, down to the final two, with the prospect of a two-time EPT champion. Mike Watson won the PCA main event in 2016. He is the chip leader right now. 75 bigs, 18.7 million chips. Leonard Maurer, Grozorg online. The German pro has 14 million, 56 big blinds. Obviously got that big double up just before the break. Bring us to level 33 with the blinds at 125,000, 250,000 with a 250K big blind ante. It's James Hartigan alongside Maria Ho. Hi. Welcome back, Maria. Last time you were here, there were five players. Now we're down to the final two. And Mike Watson still wielding that stack that you gifted him on mm. day two. It's all because I decided to embrace actually rooting for him. He does have the advantage right now. Should highlight, when they went heads up, they oh, agreed the a deal very, very quickly. No arguing, straight chip chop. Mike locks up 716K. Leonard guarantees himself 697K, playing for 33,000 euros, and plus the, the trophy maybe and Maybe not a jam for Ace so I mean, if I could take it back, I would like to take it back. <laughs> That's all good. Can't be that bad. Maybe it was a little too deep. I don't know. The clock is running. We're ready to start this level. 45 minute levels now. So we're going to play two levels back to back before we have this evening's dinner break. Hand 128 of the final table. Seeing as how deep they are, James, this could be a real slog. Yeah, I mean, I should highlight, we've had two all-ins so far. There was the big all-in where Mike Watson got the double up and took the monster chip lead, and then that double up just before the break. So it's not like they're not afraid to get these stacks in, but yes, playing 56 bigs effective, they could easily go the distance. Watson with a premium heads up facing a raise. Yeah, we do get the three bet from Mike, a re raise to 2.2 .2 million and 10 through of spades. Yeah, granted, it's suited, but you probably want something a little bit stronger, something perhaps with a face card, something that also might block some really strong hands. Just too big of a gap between the 10 and the 3 there. Going to let it go. earlier on about all of Mike's accomplishments in addition to that PCA win, a 50K event at the World Series of Poker Europe. There was a 50K event at EPT Barcelona last year. His WPT title from the Bellagio Cup in 2008 and all of his online success as well. Seven Scoop titles, a reminder that Scoop 2023 starts tomorrow, and three WCoop titles as well. Whereas for Leonard Maurer, this is his first EPT main event cash. Highlighting, of course, that he won the 25K in Barcelona last year for 653 grand. So Watson raises with Jack 8, called by Maurer with 5-3. We go to the flop. 9 9-7-5. Post flop flip. 
pair versus a straight draw and live cards. Yeah, Mike has all the options available, I think, in this scenario. Check back seems fair. Just give himself the opportunity to realize that equity. Got the seven of hearts for free on the turn. It pairs the board. Does strengthen Mao's holding, especially with that check back from Watson on the flop. There's going to be, you know, quite a few top pairs and second pairs that Watson would be willing to bet. So the turn card pairing. It's going to make Mal feel a little more comfortable. So this is a delayed continuation bet of 1.1 million into a pot of 1.55 million. Mal just wanting to consider how often does Watson check back a 7x holding on the flop. Call it. 1.1. Mal calling, does have the best hand. Is a 61% favorite here. The river is a six, and that will give Mike Watson the straight. checks a third time so a semi bluff on the turn maria obvious value bet on the river how much is he going to make it yeah it, it looks like mao has exactly what he has here right a, a weak kind of 5x holding because you would imagine that if mao had trip sevens he would have check raised the turn or led himself and so because of that not sure you can go super big here on the end I mean, the backdoor flush draw does brick, but your opponent needs to also have a fairly strong hand here to call a big sizing, I think. Those are the 100K chips, and that is a decent quantity of them. Three million. Watson goes for a fairly sizable river bet. Gets a fold. Well, here's a question, Maria, from John PT on YouTube. It's random, but give me an answer, please. Who is the better poker player, Dan Harrington or TJ Cloutier? <sighs> I, I have to say Dan Harrington for several reasons. One, Dan Harrington has written a book that I feel like has withstood the test of time. Okay. For sure. And TJ Cloutier is is just a known craps player these days. <laughs> so I don't I don't know. I don't know if he's in the poker streets. Was it back to back World Series final tables that Dan Harrington made? Was it like the Moneymaker year and the Raymer year. Was he at the final table of both of those, or am I imagining it? I feel like that sounds right. Obviously won the main event in 1995. And yes, he's made three other main event final tables, 1987, 2003, and 2004. When you consider how big the fields were in 03 yeah. and 04, to make back-to-back -back finals is pretty impressive. Yeah, in all seriousness, I definitely have quite a bit of respect for Dan Harrington. I feel like he understood the strategy of Hold'em in a way that I think was ahead of his time compared to a lot of his peers. Okay. 
Watson on the attack with a three bet with a king blocker. Yeah, this feels like all Watson since we came back from break to the point where Mao has been chipped down to 40 bigs. Who's going to do the mad dog growl now that Stapes isn't here? I mean, I hope you're not expecting me to. I can't give you the growl, but I can give you a rendition of who let the dogs out? Woof, 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 woof. <laughs> that song by the Baja men who would later finance the Baja Mar Resort in Nassau. One million two hundred fifty. Okay, it's Mauer's turn to get aggressive as Watson opens with Queen Seven one. and Mauer with ten six off. You said two million. It's one. One million two hundred fifty. Makes it. <laughs> well, he did say two million, right? What? Yeah, what's happening? Well, first Watson started out with a limp. That's right. I thought he raised the, the buck, the but actually seven. he just completed, right? Yes. Mal coming in with that raise. Ace five deuce on the flop. We can see that queen high is still the best hand, but Mal does have the advantage of that three bet, or the raise pre, I should say. Seems like a pretty natural continue for the pre-flop aggressor on this type of texture. Mike folds and on to the next hand, which will be hand 132 of the final table. That's Mike's wife, Sarah. Sam Greenwood also on the rail for Sir Watts right now. I will say sometimes you see people make deals heads up and you know, the money that they've set aside to play for. It isn't all that much, but there's so much pride associated with being able to win an EPT title, especially when they're both players that, you know, are very well accomplished, clearly have a respect for each other's game. They're not here to give it away. They're gonna make the other person earn it. So the raise from Maui with 10-6 has just been re-raised by Mike Watson with ace-jack, a quick fold, and chips continuing to move in Sir Watts' direction. Opens up a two-to-one advantage on his opponent. So Paizo, Sir Watts is his online handle. Whereas Leonard is known as a Grozog online. The Grafton, 10 9 suited. Mike raises from the butt, from the small blind. 650,000, which seems to be the standard open at this level. 4 3 off for Leonard. Calls, and we will see a flop. Ten, seven, five. Top pair for Mike. Action's been checked to him.
heads up when you're going to be opening a decent percentage of the time from the button. Obviously, the ranges are going to be a little bit wider and you're going to have a lot of different board coverage. So that's why it's just really hard to fold any type of equity. But this bet, pretty sizable. A couple of draws possible, of course. Definitely puts this gut shot straight draw in a tough spot. He's played one time bank chip so far. Okay, he decides to check raise. Yeah, and I definitely can see, you know, the thought process behind this play because you're not going to have any showdown with four high. So if you're able to check raise here, and get a fold out of Watson. This is gonna be a really nice pickup. But if you get called, of course, you do have some equity. And on certain turns, you would just shut down and give up. Yeah. So lots of possibilities. You're certainly not gonna like it though when Watson does call. Yeah. And obviously calling here with top pair, which is a very strong hand heads up. Okay, ace on the turn. 7.55 million in the pot, Maria. Mao has 7.55 behind. Yeah, a little bit dangerous because sometimes Watson is going to have these ASEX type holdings when he calls a check raise. You see Mao checking it over, maybe hoping to get a free card with the double gutter. Mike Watson checks behind, and it's the seven of spades on the river, pairing the board. So Mowat does not get there. He is left with four high. Nope, he's playing the board. Mike Watson, tens and sevens with an ace kicker. And as we highlighted on the turn, Mauer has pot behind. Could he be thinking about trying to bluff in this situation after Mike Watson checks back that turn? Might he see an opening? He, he does. does. He bluff shoves the river for 7.5 million. It is a pot size bet. And Mike Watson wants a count. I'm. Okay, there was that ace on the turn, but Mike's hand is still pretty strong. It is, and you know, from out, he feels like if Watson had an ace, he's gonna most likely be betting the turn because there are so many draws from the flop that you wanna protect, get some value against. But for Watson, he's just wondering, would Mao check raise the flop with middle pair? Would a 7X type hand want to be check raising the flop. And again, so many draws that have missed from the flop. And Watson doesn't really block any of them. I mean, he blocks 9-8. Yeah. But he doesn't block the hearts. He doesn't block the exact type of, you know, gutters or, you know, the 8-6 the combinations, the 6-4 combinations. I'm not saying for one second this is in any way an easy call. And if you call and you're wrong, momentum shifts again, and suddenly the advantage is with Leonard Mauer. Equally, if he can find the call here, it is over, and he has won his second EPT title. He's played two time bank chips so far. Yeah, and still have plenty of time bank chips to spare. Certainly worth mulling over this decision. It's really 
just about, you know, what type of hands would be willing to check raise the flop and then check the turn and now shove the river. It feels like it's very obviously polarized to trips here, you know, perhaps some boats, not tens though, because I think he would have heard from tens pre-flop, you know, some more like fives full potentially. But again, so many missed draws from the flop. Understandably taking his time over this decision. Remember, each time bank chip is worth 30 seconds. He's played three so far. Playing a fourth. And considering making this hero call, which will give him the win. And I like to think that against a less capable opponent, Watson might not even give it this much thought. But against somebody as good as Leonard Mao, you have to be able to be open to the possibility that he's able to make this play without it. Five time bank chips played. So what's thinking this through? Can he find the call? Can he end it on this hand? I feel like Watson is going to be able to. Oh. Yes, yes, <laughs> he makes the call and we have our winner. An incredible call from Mike Watson to win the PokerStars EPT presented by Monte Carlo Casino and become a two-time European Poker Tour champion joining a very select club. And like that, wow. it's over and no one can quite believe it. <laughs> He's done it. He's a winner. Leonard Mauer, the runner-up. Mike Watson, the champion. He worked it out. Wild hand. Wild, wild hand. hand. Understatement of the day. <laughs> so a reminder that the two players did agree a deal heads up, and that means Leonard Mauer gets significantly more than the advertised second place payout. He's cashed for just shy of 700,000 euros. But Mike Watson gets nearly 750,000 euros. He gets the trophy and his second EPT title. How can he remain so calm? I think he's in shock both just at how that plan played out and that he was able to make the right call and, you know, just maybe how in a way, smooth, this whole tournament seemed to have gone for him in, in some ways. Just zigging and zagging at all the right times. Raise call, B80, check raise. Small call, check, check, and then he just shuts the river. Mike Watson putting Maria Ho's oh, chips to good use to close it out here today. Yeah, I like to think this is my first EPT win, I guess so. James. I hate to tell you, but that's Folded not many, like, that how like, poker <laughs> Seems like he's works. not really repping anything. There's no way he can be bluffing here. But, uh, but if that hand you played against him had gone the other time. way, that could be you standing there telling a hand history to the Greenwoods. <laughs> Thank you. So here's how it went down at the final table. First player out was Arno Ensemble, KO'd by Mike Watson. Jacks dominated tens. We had another domination situation for Sami Bushmala. Couldn't find the king. KO'd in fifth. Joachim Haraldstead, pretty car dead all day, and then ran his king six into Mike Watson's 10 8. Trips on the flop, full house on the turn. We were down to three. A couple of hands later, the man in the van, Leo Lees was eliminated in third. Then we got heads up. A deep stack heads up battle. A deal agreed. And what a hero call from Mike Watson. Becoming a two-time European Poker Tour champion.
Not many players have done it, but Mike Watson joins the likes of Vicky Corrin and Mikolai Pabal, and now he gets to talk to Joe Stapleton. Mike Watson, the last time we had a conversation like this, it was January 2016. It was seven years ago. It feels like yesterday to me. How long does it feel for you? I don't even know. I feel like time has just gone completely weird since then. We've had a bunch of years where there was no live poker. Uh, so, you know, it feels kind of recent, but also really distant all at the same time. I think that's perfectly fair. You're only the fourth player in history to win two EPT titles. Was that on your mind today? Uh, yeah, yeah, I didn't uh, I didn't really realize what the number was uh, until I came in today. But uh, I think, you know, winning two main events on the same tour is, is a really hard thing to do. I think it's, you know, definitely uh, right up there, probably maybe the biggest accomplishment in my poker career. And uh, I'm really, really happy with that. Yeah, very impressive. A lot of pressure. I think a lot of pressure, too, given that you were probably the most experienced player headed in this final table and maybe the favorite at the same time. Did you feel that pressure coming into today? I mean, I think any time you're playing a big final table like this, you're going to feel pressure. Uh, I don't know how you would be human if you didn't. As much as you do it, it never goes away entirely, at least not for me. So certainly I felt, uh, yeah, I felt some stress. I felt pressure. I don't know if I would say, like, I expected to win. But, you, you know, in some part of your brain, you kind of do because you've just been winning every hand for four days to get here. And you kind of just think it's going to keep happening and you're going to win. But uh, I've been close enough time to know that's not always the truth of it. Well, lots of people did expect you to win, and you've made a lot of people very happy about that today. I guess just one more question about pressure. Uh, do you feel as if maybe some pressure has been released moving forward now that you have another big, huge win under your belt? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, couldn't be happier with, with the accomplishment. And, uh, yeah, I don't know if pressure going forward, but it's definitely something I'm, I'm really thrilled with. And, uh, you know, I'm going to keep trying to build on it, of course, but uh, definitely, uh, yeah, huge result. Okay, one last question. Your nickname, Sir Watch, your online handle. I did some research. 1934 was the last time a Canadian citizen was actually knighted. Do you have any plans to petition the new king? Wow. Uh, yeah, I mean, no. I, I, I'm not into the monarchy. I'm not into the monarchy, Joe. I, fair, I fair enough. I don't want to get you to make a political statement here. All I wanted to say is, especially because of that call we saw to end this tournament, you are a hero to us. Let's get a big round of applause for EPT Monte Carlo and two-time EPT champion Mike Watson. I think it's a bit of a stretch to expect someone to get knighted for winning two EPTs, but you know what? I'd be down for it. Here's how things ended at the final table of the PokerStars EPT presented by Monte Carlo Casino. A reminder, a deal was agreed between the final two players. So 697 for Leonard Maurer, a great showing for him today. And Mike Watson cashing for just shy of 750K. But he also gets that all important trophy and second EPT title. Let's go back to the tournament floor for the official winner's trophy presentation. Welcome to the trophy presentation for the EPT main event at the Poker Stars EPT presented by Monte Carlo Casino. Here on stage with me to help present the trophy is Stefano Monte Carlo SBM Poker Coordinator, Associate Director of Live Events at Poker Stars Cedric Below, Tournament Director Toby Stone, and Live Events Business Development Manager for Poker Stars Julian Liart. Before we hand out the trophy, Cedric would like to say a few words. Thank you, Joe. Yeah, I just would like to say a few words on behalf of Poker Stars. First and foremost, a big thank you to all players who came here in Monaco, in Monte Carlo. It's the 17th year Poker Stars is coming in Monte Carlo. It's a very iconic location. It's maybe the most beautiful poker room in the world. So yeah, thank you everyone who came here. It was a fantastic event. Of course, I would like to address massive thank you to all the staff who worked at this event, all the dealers, everyone here involved, and a big thanks to our partner SBM as well, represented by Stefan. It's always a pleasure to come here. Again, congratulations, Mike, for winning this event. I think it was uh, one of the most difficult fields, so well done. Now, the next TPT event will be in Barcelona in August. We hope to see many of you there. And in the meantime, enjoy your evening. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Cedric. And now, besting a field of nearly 1,100 entries to take the title and 749,000 euros for first place. Please give it up 
for Mike Mad Dog Watson. That draws a line under this festival in Monaco. A reminder that Scoop starts tomorrow. The Spring Championship of Online Poker kicks off. More on that and on the EPT on the PokerStars blog and live streams from Scoop coming your way from the 15th of May. But the next EPT, as Cedric mentioned, won't be until the summer. And we will bring you eight days of live coverage from EPT Barcelona. And that starts August 27th. We will see you then. Thank you for watching over the last few days. I hope you've enjoyed the action. From Joe Stapleton, Maria Ho, Griffin Benjamin, Nick Walsh, Sam Grafton, and the entire EPT team, I am James Hartigan saying, good night from Monaco. Thank you for watching. I apologize if I kept you waiting Have to make a statement You know what's in my jeans, I'm always stating That I'm a different breed, half man, half amazing Break it down to a science like I'm Bill Nye Lonely bird, broken wings, but I still fly Ooh, change up, hunger never came up From open up the Philly, it's the same love Pity the fool in front, they got to call me Mr. T Funny how I run it, but I'm only chasing history Generations was to mention me. We play the win. Making sure I don't say this all again. Outside, you can never box me in. We play the win. Never follow, I came here to set the truth.